Wait, that's not right. Hang on. Okay, there we go. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver in game tier list. I'm your host, Chikorita. We'll see. <laughs> that's okay. You can't even see the whole leaf. Okay, so first thing we have to do is actually uh, adjust the audio, because uh, that's probably the most important part of this. Well, that's not true. The most important part is the list. But we do need to make sure the audio is okay. Uh, so, uh, please uh, tell me if the audio sounds alright. I'm actually going to record this locally as well, because I have to edit this afterwards. Uh, so, yeah, just, just does the audio sound okay? Uh, it's a lettuce. It's actually a cabbage leaf, okay? So, audio sounds good? Okay. Great. Because uh, this is like the, uh, the, the, the lower bit. Uh, so we have to make sure that the um, the higher bit is also okay. So if I say like, wow, this Pokemon is really good. Does that sound okay? Uh, so I'm just going to talk a little bit louder right now. Does that sound okay? Wow, this Pokemon is really good. Wow, this Pokemon is really bad. Wow. Okay, all right, great. Okay, I think we're almost ready to start. Uh, th welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Uh... What do I have to say? Well, I have to drink this uh, terrible coffee first, but uh, while you're here, if for uh, some reason you're not subscribed to the Imported Cheese Fresh channel, please do, because we are almost to a thousand subscribers, which means we get to return uh, custom emotes. Hooray! <laughs> uh, 
uh, which uh, we, we really missed, because in the meantime, all we can do is use budget Onyx. Uh, so we're almost there, so please subscribe. Uh, and then once we reach 1,000, I can stop shilling for that and start shilling for the channel membership. So uh, please do that. Uh, but yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, I'll, I'll be starting in like just one or two minutes. Uh, I just have to drink this. Only 24 hours late? The other one was 24 hours early. How about that? It was always supposed to be this time. Okay. I don't think I've forgotten anything. I think we can go ahead and get started because this is going to take a very long time. <laughs> uh, there is actually a time limit on this stream. Because I have a dentist appointment at 2.30. Which is not a joke. It is actually at 2.30. And you know it's not a joke because I scheduled it in Japanese, which it's not a joke, right? Because the time 2.30 in Japanese sounds nothing like 2.30. But that still gives us seven and a half hours. I don't think it's going to take that long. It'll probably take five or six. All right, so the first thing we have to do is we have to talk about, we have to do the intro for the premium. So uh, if, if this is your first time joining one of the uh, live streams and you've only seen the premiums, the live stream does drag a little bit because I have to do retakes <laughs> for the premium. <laughs> and I also have to do like some uh, specific lines for the premium that I don't really have to do with the, uh, the live stream. So, sorry, you'll have to just bear with me for that. Sorry about that. But I am still reading all your messages. There's nothing I see that I have to respond to yet. Okay, so here we go. So, hello there. You are watching the premium edit of the Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver in-game tier list. Uh, if for some reason you would like to see the full live stream with the chat enabled, you'll find a link to that and the imported cheese fresh channel in the description below. Please subscribe because we are almost to a thousand subscribers, which means uh, that I get paid pennies for the live stream. And also more importantly, we get custom emotes back. Right now, the only one we can use is budget Onyx, which is really underwhelming. Much like Onyx itself. I'm sure you didn't expect me to say that. That's probably fine for the intro, right? I don't think I'm missing anything. Uh, is this going to be chicory to slander? It's true, bro. Fresh. Hello, premium viewers. Uh, okay, I think that's everything. Oh, you thought there were voiceovers? No, they're live, bro. The very first premium I did was Gen 5. Uh, and then that made me realize that I need to do usable takes in the stream itself. Sorry, guys. Okay. I think that's it for the intro. We just get started actually describing Hard Gold Soul Silver. <laughs> so the things we have to run through before we actually start ranking the Pokemon, that is probably it's probably going to take like at least 30 40 minutes to get there is we have to talk about the Gen 4 changes and we have to actually talk about the tiers themselves. Uh, so uh, while I'm talking about the Gen 4 changes, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to run a short poll because you might have noticed here there's a, uh, can you see my cursor? You should be able to see my cursor. What you might notice here is that there is a tier called Stealth Rocks. It's probably really confusing. So I'm debating whether or not to actually have this. So why this is called Stealth Rocks is, for some reason, Hard Gold Soul Silver hates Evolution Stones, just like the original games. They're basically not available until Kanto. Uh, unless you get really lucky with uh, certain trainers who will gift them to you. So, pretty much every Pokemon that requires a stone would be D tier. Unless you get really lucky. So I thought it might be a little bit more fair to them to just put them in a Stealth Rocks tier. Stealth Rocks, you can't find them. Poke Athlon? The Poke Athlon ones are locked until you get the National decks. Which is really weird. Except for Sunstone and Moonstone. Sunstone and Moonstone you can actually get. But otherwise, you have to actually get National Dex to get the Pokeathlon Stones, which is really weird. So, I'm just going to uh, run a quick poll. And we're going to see if people agree there should be a Stealth Rocks tier. Otherwise, they're pretty much all going in D. 
So should there be a Stealth Rocks tier? Yes. No. Toss him in D. All right, you should see a poll very soon. Sorry for not being... Uh, let me see if I can remember that. I'm pretty sure I got a Cloister before the Elite Four. Yeah, you can you can still get the Evolution Stones. It's possible if you get really lucky. Because you can um get a call from certain trainers who can give you Evolution Stones. But if you don't get lucky, you're stuck until you actually get the... Post-game, pretty much post-game national decks. It's really unfortunate. We can also change the name of it, but uh, first we're just trying to decide if we actually need one or not. And we are going to explain this uh, as we uh, describe all of the tiers. So that'll just be ongoing as I actually talk about the uh, Gen 4 mechanics. I just looked it up, they aren't post-game. I looked it up yesterday. They are post-game. You're talking about the Pokeathlon stones, right? Look at this. We're gonna we're gonna go to Bulbapedia right now. Bulne. Bulbapedia Pokeathlon. Pokeathlon. And we want rewards, right? Oh, by the way, I'll just say this now. So if I do say something incorrect, please do. Well, actually me, because I can just cut out all the parts where I'm wrong and make it so that I'm only right. So I, I do actually want you to tell me. Where is this? Wait, where's the rewards? I looked this up yesterday. Ring drop? Bonus points. Trivia. Wait, where's the... Where's the rewards? Hello? Oh, Pokeathlon Dome. Here we go. So here we go. You can see it right here. Firestone. National Dex. National Dex, National Dex. National Dex, National Dex. National Dex, National Dex, National Dex, National Dex. Shiny, Dusk, and Dawn Stones are locked behind post-game fire. Water, Thunder, Leaf, Moon Stones aren't. According to Cerebi, you can get them pre-National Dex. Only one type is available each day. Cerebi says before post-game. Which one is it? Look at all the days. Oh, you see? Oh, okay. I see. You can get them, but only on certain days if it's not National X. That's so weird. Okay, so we don't need a Stealth Rocks tier, but Dawnstone and Duskstone are post-game only, right? Well, good thing we checked. So Dawnstone, Duskstone, and what is it? Shiny Stone. Those were actually post-game only. And you can get Leaf, Thunder, Water, and Fire on certain days. That's so obnoxious. Alright, so we don't need Stealth Rocks. Congratulations! I love it when Stealth Rocks get removed. Can I just delete this? Great! That's still gonna hurt all the Pokemon that need stones, but not that much. Dawn, Dusk, Shiny. Okay. 
Yeah, RIP Togekiss. Togekiss is shiny stone, right? Wait, there aren't even any Dawn Stone evolutions in this game. No Dawn, Gen 4 only. Oh, this is Gen 4. I'll just change your clock. Yeah, you could just do that. We still need the tier, though? I don't think we do, because you can actually evolve them. R.I.P. Shulk? Did he die? Okay, great. Well, thanks for checking. In that case, we can just go ahead and end the poll. Uh, by the way, another one of the potential names for the Stealth Rock tier was... Uh, Sacred Stones. No Seth in this game, though. Trade from Platinum? We're not counting that. <laughs> We're not counting that. Murko is only available in post game anyway. You can get in the Safari Zone. Uh, and Ported Cheese Fresh, will we make a new intro without Stealth Rocks? Huh? I didn't even make an intro with Stealth Rocks. I mean, you'll see Stealth Rocks, like, in the screen, but, I mean, like, I don't think it matters that much. People will just wonder where it went. It's too stealthy. Okay. So, great. We solved Stealth Rocks. All right. Uh, we can start talking about the Gen 4 mechanics, then. How will Safari Mons be ranked, considering that some of the requirements to get them at all? I mean, I'm it, the Safari Zone is so weird, right? You you don't actually get blocks until post game, right? It's just really obnoxious to set things up. But I'm pretty sure you can get Larvitar without blocks. Like I checked this as well. It's just a default encounter. And then all of the special, like, Pokemon outside of Johto require blocks. So you don't have to do all of that crazy Safari Zone stuff until post-game, which we're, like, not counting anyway. Are we going to count Pokewalker stuff? No, but I am going to explain why not. Okay. Okay. We gotta get started, otherwise we're never gonna finish. You do need the right biome, that's true. But I think the biomes are just unlocked, right? It's the blocks that you have to do all the crazy stuff for, and that's all post-game. All right, so here we go. Okay. So let me just uh, make a list here. No, I'm not going to make a list. I'm just going to talk about them. What's the first thing I should talk about? It should be physical special split. Yeah, okay. All right. <clears throat> mm, okay, okay. We've added some heart and some soul. It's the Gen 4 remakes. Uh, it's really hot here in Japan, so to save on air conditioning, I'm gonna hit you with a really cold take. Heart Gold and Soul Silver, pretty good games. <laughs> They're probably my favorites, but I am biased, so I live in Kanto, uh, but my family is literally from Johto, uh, we're from Osaka, so that would be Goldenrod City, and I did a study abroad in Kyoto, which would be Ecrotique City, so I'm, I'm real familiar with the Johto region. What's changed in the two... What's changed in the two generations uh, since the original GSC? Quite a few things, and we're gonna talk about all of them. Probably the most major one would be the physical special split. So previously, 
Whether a move was physical or special was determined entirely by the type. So all fire moves were special. All ghost moves were physical. Yeah, figure that one out. Now, whether a move is physical or special is determined by, like, what the move actually does. So fire punch is physical and flamethrower is special. For the most part, it's intuitive, although sometimes it's not. Like, for example, sacred fire is physical, which is actually good. <laughs> but I don't know why it's physical. For the most part, this is a buff, because it means that you can use your stab or same type attack bonus moves with whatever your higher attack stat is. This is mostly a buff. Not always. We'll be taking a look at that in detail as we talk about each Pokemon. Okay, anything I forgot to say about physical special split? I think that's fine, right? It's mostly a buff, but there are some Pokemon who get worst <laughs> maybe the Japanese name for sacred fire is different I don't think so I don't think Entei gets sacred fire in this game let me see if I missed anything I think that's fine for physical special split right okay How long does the cabbage leaf stay fresh? Hopefully a few hours. Okay, next. Uh, we talked about physical special, so next is got to be uh, abilities, I guess. Now, we're going to go in order of how much they matter, so. Uh, the stat XP system has been reworked into EVs, or effort values. Effort values is probably the system you guys are most familiar with, because it's been used since Generation 3. Basically, you have a set amount of bonus stat points that are hidden from you, thanks Game Freak, uh, that give you bonuses to your stats based on the Pokemon you defeat. So if you defeat fast Pokemon, you yourself get a little bit faster. But the thing is, you have to sort of allocate these points by being careful about which Pokemon you defeat, which you're not going to do in an in-game playthrough. So it ends up just being like minor bonuses to all of your stats. Unfortunately, unless you plan this out. In Generation 2, with stat experience... Nah, I have to redo this. That's not going to work. Uh, but, I mean, this is a nerf to everybody, basically. I'll say this again. The stat experience system has been reworked into EVs, or effort values. This is probably the system most of you guys are familiar with, since it's what's been used since Generation 3. Basically, you can get bonuses to your stats based on which Pokemon you defeat. So if you defeat fast Pokemon, uh, you yourself get a little bit faster, and the game doesn't show you any of this. Thanks, Game Freak. Uh, the thing is, you have to be really careful about which Pokemon you defeat, because you can only get a certain amount of these EVs before they stop mattering. Uh, and probably in an in-game playthrough, you're not going to care about this, you're just going to fight whatever you have to. So you end up getting a bunch of minor bonuses to all of your stats, Whereas in the old XP, stat XP system, which is what Gen 2 and Gen 1 used, you could basically get max EVs in all of your stats. So the EV system ends up being a nerf to all of your Pokemon. And it doesn't affect enemies at all because they never had these bonuses to begin with. This really, really hurts one Pokemon that are slow. Uh, because now they've lost an edge that allows them to outspeed Pokemon they wouldn't otherwise. And it really hurts Pokemon that have bad attack. <laughs> because if you have good attack, it doesn't really matter if you get the bonus or not, you're still going to beat things. And if you have bad attack, well, now you've lost this bonus that was allowing you to maybe hit some breakpoints you aren't able to without the bonuses. So, nerf to slow Pokemon. All right, so, nerf to all your Pokemon, but a big nerf to slow Pokemon and weaker Pokemon. Okay, I think I got everything. I think it's fair to say that it mostly hurts slow and weak Pokemon. So the weak get weaker, unfortunately. Badge boosts? Oh, those have been removed, right? Yeah, Gen 2 had badge boosts and Gen 4 does not. We'll mention that. 
Badge boosts. Also gone. <laughs> you used to get passive stat bonuses for your badges. You just don't anymore, so that's another way that you, the player, have been nerfed. Don't worry, game's still pretty easy. Okay, that's fine. Alright, so we talked about stat XP, we talked about physical special splits. Uh, what other changes? Oh, abilities. Abilities now exist and you can use them. So all Pokemon now have passives called abilities uh, that improve... Uh, well, let's see. Uh, abilities have been added uh, and now exist. So all Pokemon now have passives called abilities uh, that simply give them a bonus most of the time. And most of them don't really matter at all. Uh, but if they do, we'll mention it. Yeah, most abilities are like... Run away. Blaze. Ah, oh, natures. Yeah, we'll mention natures. Natures have been added. So certain stats will be either increased or decreased by 10%, depending on what RNG nature your Pokemon happens to have. You're probably not going to care about this. Uh, I don't even think I checked natures the first time I played the game. Obviously, a 10% decrease or increase does matter a lot. Uh, but unless it's... Well, let's see. Experience groups? Experience groups uh, experience, uh, existed before. Um, what do we say here? Oh, okay. Natures have been added. So natures are 10% increases or decreases to certain stats based on whatever RNG nature your Pokemon happens to have. You're probably not going to care about this too much during your in-game game playthrough. 10%... Well, let's see. Is it? Would it be worth talking about the huge influx of new berries? No. Uh, what else? Okay, so... Natures exist! So... <clears throat> natures now exist! So natures uh, will either increase or decrease certain stats by 10% based on whatever nature your Pokemon has by RNG. So for example, the adamant nature increases your attack by 10%, decreases your special attack by 10%. You're probably not going to care about your nature too much during your in-game playthrough. 10% boosts or uh, penalties do really matter, but, I mean, you probably don't care, right? You're just trying to finish the game. Honestly, unless the nature is a disaster for your Pokemon, you don't really have to worry that much. I think that's fine for natures, right? It just sort of exists. Alright, next. Uh, we have to talk about the, uh, the punch removal, so... The Gen 2 in-game meta was largely defined by the Elemental Punch-Out League. Uh, if you had arms, you were eligible to enter. Uh, the league has been deemed to be too powerful, and it's been banned. Uh, you can no longer buy the Elemental Punch TMs from the Goldenrod City Department Store. Instead, they're now tutor moves from the Battle Frontier, so they're now locked away. Like, these Elemental Punches are super hidden techniques that you need this master to teach you. Honestly, that's probably more fair, but it ends up being a massive nerf to a lot of Pokemon. I think that's it for Elemental Punches. If you're wondering why I pause at the end of that, it's just so that it's easier for me to cut. I don't think we have to mention anything else for that. More held item options? Oh, I didn't really prepare for that. Is it just the choice specs at Rage? Lake of Rage? Voltorb flip equals garbage? T How dare you? What's wrong with Voltorb flip? Uh, is there anything... No, you haven't missed anything. We've just been explaining things. What was I thinking? Is Are there any notable held items except for the choice specs? Pokerus? Uh, I don't think that matters. 
Welcome, uh, McCordy. Scarf? I don't think Scarf helps that much either, because then you're locked into a move. Focus Sash is one-time use. There's no way you'd use it in-game. Uh, same for whoever, I, I think, uh, Nacho, somebody about Nachos keeps talking about Natural Gift. We're not going to talk about Natural Gift. Berries are, Natural Gift berries are one-time use. There's no way you would do that. We'll mention, we'll mention Choice Scarf and Choice Specs, but I don't think it's going to factor into the ratings. But I'll mention that right now. Uh, there's a couple new held item options, uh, most notably uh, Choice Specs you can get at the Lake of Rage, and your mom, if you send her some money, uh, might buy you a fashionable new Choice Scarf. I don't think it's going to affect the rankings too much, but I guess it should be mentioned that slower Pokemon can potentially put on that scarf, and special attack attackers can potentially put on those specs. There you go. I think that's uh, that's going to be the new ones. Oh yeah, mentioned Pokewalker. We'll mention Pokewalker when we talk about the criteria. Right now we're just going over all of the changes. So I think the last change we have to talk about is the new evolutions. Are there any other changes I forgot to talk about? We're going to talk about new evolutions now, and that's it, I think. Because we talked about... We talked about... Physical Special Split, we talked about the new EVs, we talked about natures, we talked about abilities, uh, movesets. I think that's part of... I don't think I mentioned new moves with Physical Special Split, but... Hmm. Better movesets? Yeah, I'll just, like, say that, I guess. Reusable TMs were Gen 5, so no reusable TMs yet. Do we get to talk about the apricot pokeballs working? That doesn't really affect anything, though. Alright, I'll mention better movesets, I'll mention the Gen 4 Evos, and then I think we can talk about the tiering criteria, right? I didn't talk about Ampharos and how it's so good. That's because it's not. Alright, so here we go. Movesets have been updated. Most of them are better. Most of them. It's probably it for movesets. Uh, and then we'll talk about Gen 4 Evolutions. Perhaps most exciting. Many Pokemon... Uh, perhaps most exciting. A lot of the absolute garbage <laughs> that was added in Generation 2 can now say they have an evolution. Uh, and I think the Gen 4 Evolution really showcases how Pokemon designs have changed. Uh, I will say, you can call me a Gen 1-er, uh, I, I do not like most of these Gen 4 evolutions. I like some of them. I really like Honchkrow. Let's see. Uh, I like some of them. Uh, I really like Honchkrow. But for most of these, uh, I don't know why... Oh, okay. Um, I really like some of them. Uh, for example, Honchkrow, probably one of my favorites. Hold on, let's see. I really like some of them. Uh, Honchkrow, probably my favorite. Uh, but for a lot of these... I wonder how Leftovers is still an item in the game, because you know that these Pokemon weren't leaving any Leftovers. Why are they so wide? <laughs> like, Rhyperior, why is it so fat? Like, Magmortar and Electivire, why are they so fat? Licky Licky. I mean, yeah, that one makes sense. And, uh, I mean, you'll see the images on screen uh, in the premium. But, yeah, I mean, the... The Gen 4 Pokemon are all, like, really fat. I don't- I don't get it. Why? And they all, like, lose speed. The leftovers joke kinda flopped for me? Well, I'm not cutting it. I think it was good.
Do other people hate the leftovers joke? We got one detractor. You're allowed to not like it. Why is this stream presented by Chikorita? Maybe people will finally believe me if Chikorita itself is the one telling them that grass is bad. Keep the joke or we ride. Okay, we'll keep it. Well, not every joke has to be a winner. We'll see. You can see my leaf, right? Okay. I think that's all the changes. Yes. It'll probably make more sense uh, with visual stuff. Why are you on an alternate channel? Because previously, when I would do live streams on the main channel, I would uh, get, lose a bunch of subscribers. That's why. <laughs> that's why. Okay. I think we talk about the uh, tiering criteria. People really criticizing a streamer's jokes in chat. That's fine because uh, they are going to be put into a an edited video later. So it's fine that they're criticized. I don't mind. I lose subs when I live stream. Yep. I'd lose like 20 to 30 each time. So I, I, I wanted to stop that. Okay. Let's talk about the criteria. Okay. <clears throat> so what criteria am I actually using? This is an in-game tier list, which means that I'm going to be ranking these Pokemon based on how well they help you get from your house to the Hall of Fame uh, and eventually to this game's ultimate challenge, which is red atop Mount Silver. So that means that I prioritize Pokemon who are fast... <laughs> Uh, knock out the enemy in as few hits as possible, preferably one, uh, and perhaps most contentiously, Pokemon that are available. So, a Pokemon that is available at the very start of the game, as in, like, these three, they're gonna rank a lot higher than Pokemon that are, like, really powerful, but just aren't in the game and able to help you out. So that's why you'll see Pokemon like Rattata, who's, like, not very exciting, uh, ranked a lot higher than a Pokemon like, say... Say who? <laughs> What's the late game Pokemon that's mostly held back by its availability? Oh no, I'll do this. I'll do this. Larvitar? No, Larvitar's Safari Zone in this game. I'm gonna do um I'm gonna do Spiro and Doduo. That's what I'm gonna do. Cause I think Spiro and Doduo is a good contrast because Doduo is literally just better Spiro. <laughs> But it's available way later. So I'll just redo that. So what criteria am I actually using? Uh, this is an in-game tier list, which means I'm going to be evaluating these Pokemon based on how they help you get from your house uh, to the Hall of Fame and eventually to this game's ultimate challenge, which is red atop Mount Silver. So anything that's post-game, I'm just not going to rank. I'm going to throw them in the un unknown dungeon. Uh, what criteria do I actually care about? Basically, I'm going to be uh, favoring Pokemon that are fast, uh, so they go first, that are strong, uh, so they knock out the opponent in as few hits as possible, preferably one... Uh, and Pokemon that are available, which is kind of contentious. What do I mean by available? I simply mean that they're in the game, right? That you can obtain them early, and that they can contribute uh, to your entire adventure. Uh, so that's why a Pokemon like uh, Spiro is going to be ranked higher than a Pokemon like Doduo. Because even though Doduo is... Honestly, it's just strictly better than Spiro. Uh, Spiro is available right at the beginning of the game. Uh, and Doduo is much, much later. Sorry, Doduo. I think that's everything, right, for the criteria? Did I miss anything? Pre-post-game? 
the gen that made Byte dark? Byte was dark in Gen 2, but it made it physical. Anything else I'm missing? I'm just reading through everything here. I bought the game off of Amazon. Isn't Doe Duo before Jasmine? I don't think so. Oh, we gotta talk about the Poke Walker. Byte was normal in Gen 1. Yeah, they changed it to Dark in Gen 2. We're talking about this is the Gen 4 remix, bro. Best Chikorita cosplay I ever saw. I'm glad you get that it's a Chikorita cosplay. Is Kanto post-game? Uh, yes. So pretty much every Kanto Pokemon were tossing in the Unknown Dungeon. I think I said that, though. Did they fix the awful Kanto Gym leveling? They did. Alright, so what else to say? I gotta talk about the leveling. Uh, like, wild Pokemon levels. So, what do I say here? Yeah, I have to say about that. Okay. So, here we go. Uh, one thing you're gonna hear me say a whole lot is, this Pokemon is underleveled. <laughs> so, uh, the Johto games are infamous for the completely whack leveling curve. Basically, as soon as you hit the route split in Ecritique, Stuff starts getting critically underleveled. Pretty much anything <laughs> to the east of Ecritique is going to end up being way too low level to actually be used without significant investment. So a lot of those Pokemon, sadly, are going to have to be penalized for that. I think that's it for... I think that's it for uh, leveling, right? Uh, and pretty much every Pokemon in Kanto is uh, unusable, sadly. Uh, for the same reason that wild Pokemon levels in Kanto, for some reason, have not been scaled. Although they did fix gym leader levels, so the gym leaders actually fight you <laughs> with real teams. Uh, but unfortunately, the, the wildlife is still uh, kind of pitiful. Alright, let's see if I missed any uh, any important messages. Do I play Pokemon Go? Same question, but no answer. Are you blind, dude? I'm not blind. I have glasses. Uh, also, why are you? So, why so rude, man? Uh, Poke Walker. We should talk about the Poke Walker. Uh, anything else? Uh, I will talk about the Poke Walker. Put Lapras in S tier. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about that. So I'm not going to rank the Poke Walker. Is one thing. I think we have to talk, I think the other things we have to talk about for criteria are Pokewalker, and we have to talk about uh, trade evolutions and how we're doing those. Because there's a lot of trade evolutions, and a lot of the trade evolutions are really good. <laughs> Can you get Sneasel before Lance? Sneasel is now Mount Silver only. Used to be able to get it in Ice Path and Crystal, but now it's Mount Silver. Rip. Is it worth discussing Pokeathlon and getting stones? Uh, we talked about it earlier, but I don't think we have a, an edit of it. We'll, we'll talk about that. Then why am I not replying? I can't reply to everyone, bro. And, like... Pokemon Go has nothing to do with this. Uh, you are being really rude. In fact, well, no, I'm not going to say ban him, but. Uh, let's see. Trade evolutions are in front of humanity. Stupid question, but gift Pokemon are counted for availability, right? Yeah. Uh, but what gift Pokemon are there? It's basically Togepi, right? Why are Growlithe and Mankey highlighted in yellow? Because I, <laughs> I took these images from my Gen 2 uh, list where they're, they're gold exclusive. Dratini, Eevee, Rocky. Oh, yeah. Rocky's not a gift. That's a trade, though. Also, I wouldn't consider that a gift. It's a curse. Are event Pokemon counted? Ah, uh, no. Nah, not event Pokemon, though. I guess Dratini is a gift Pokemon. Is Kenya the XP boosted Spear also an HGSS? Yes. Oh, yeah. Shuckle. Wow, the gift Pokemon really suck in this game. <laughs> You 
You can get a Slugma, Wooper, and Mareep egg in Violet City. Can you get a Slugma egg? Because that's the only one that matters. You can get Mareep and Slugma as a gift? Okay, so we get to talk about Slugma as a gift. Okay. We'll talk about that when we get to Slugma. Oh, it's a gift code. I don't know if we... Do we count that? Because that's, like, kind of outside the game. I don't think we're going to count that. When I say gift, I literally mean, like, it's in the game and they give it to you. We'll mention it, but I don't think we'll count it. But we'll mention it. Okay, so we gotta talk about the Poke Walker and trade evolutions. Uh, and stones, I guess. It's actually in game, but yeah. The code is in game? No, I know that it's like in the game if you have a code, but you don't have the code yet. Have we not started yet? We're doing the criteria, bro. There's a lot to do. Like, you don't see this in the premium, but I have to, like, make sure that I ha I've i talked about everything. And even if I talk about everything, people are not going to watch the explanation and they're going to say, why didn't you do this? The code is technically in the game? Where can you get the code? The password needs to be looked up online, but it's really easy to do. I see. There's... Okay, so you, you basically have to look it up. Wow, this is the most attention Slugma's ever getting. We'll talk about this with Slugma. I don't think we need to mention it in the criteria. Get all this for a Slugma? <laughs> okay, so now we're going to talk about... Uh, what was it? What are the two things I had to do? Trade Evos? What's the other one? It was more important than Trade Evos. I can't remember. Oh, Poke Walker, right. Poke Walker. Okay. Um, so, Hard Gold Soul Silver came with an accessory. The best thing ever. The Poke Walker. I remember getting that in high school. And it actually motivating me to stop being such a munchlax. So, the Poke Walker, it's basically a pedometer that interacts with your game. You can send Pokemon to it. Uh, and then, like, level them up. It doesn't really work that efficiently for that. Uh, but more importantly, you could actually catch certain Pokemon earlier through Pokewalker than you would be able to in-game. Because there's, like, a rudimentary catching minigame you can do through that. I'm not going to count this. Uh, and I thought a while about this. I don't think we should count it because it is a physical periphery, a peripheral, that you have to actually purchase. I mean, it does come with the game, but have you seen how much this game costs? I, if you're not Mr. Moneybags, you're not getting this thing. It is outrageous. 120 base power. I don't think it's really fair to count it. Like, maybe if you can afford to buy a bike in-game, you could maybe buy this Pokewalker. I don't think you're getting it. I think that's fair. I, that's my main reason for not counting it, because most people cannot actually get one. Most people play on emulator. Yeah. Uh, and even if you pay to win by getting a Pokewalker, 
it's kind of RNG with how you encounter this, these Pokemon. It takes a while, and they're all really low level, so I don't think it's going to matter much anyway. There you go. That's everything for Pokewalker. Uh, trade evolutions. Um... <clears throat> A big topic is trade evolutions, because they're really annoying. So if you're playing on a physical cut, So if you're playing on a physical game, you gotta find someone else to trade with. Are you playing on a physical game, though? I mean, like, pro 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 probably not, right? For reasons we might have just gone over. Ho oh, ho, big, big bucks. So if you're not playing on a physical game, there's ways to manipulate how your Pokemon evolve. So technically... Trade evolutions can be gotten immediately. But then that makes those Pokemon really, really strong. So what certain um, fixes to your game can do is they can change trade evolutions to evolutions at certain levels. And I think that's sort of the most fair way to evaluate these. To assume that these Pokemon evolve at these certain levels, which they very legitimately do in normal gameplay. And that's how I think I'm going to evaluate the trade evos. Do people have major objections to that? Yeah, don't tell Masada. Sounds good? No. I don't know what that knows in response to. No, I don't know what that's in response to. I think that's it for that. Trade Evo items are post-game. We'll talk about that when we actually talk about each Pokemon that has a Trade Evo. I just arrived. How far in are we? We're still doing Criteria. If you've never seen one of the lives, this this normally is how it goes. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, because we have to do, like, retakes. We have to make sure we cover everything. I don't, I don't know why I do this, because nobody watches this part anyway. Based on the comments, right? Honestly, this live experience is way more interesting. I'm glad you think so. So I think the last thing we have to do is talk about Evo Stones. Then we can talk about the uh, tiers. How is the leaf attached? It's a rubber band. And then we can talk about the tiers themselves, which is going to take like two minutes. And then we can start. Okay, so... <clears throat> and what about stone evolutions? So, there are a ton of Pokemon that require an... Ele <clears throat> and what about stone evolutions? So there are a ton of evolutions that actually require elemental stones. And Johto is weirdly stingy about... Evolution stones, it, it appears there was just a mass geological extinction in the three years between Gen 1 and Gen 2. They're so hard to get. Uh, one way to get them is certain trainers will sometimes uh, challenge you to a Telefang, and if you're lucky, they'll just give you a stone. That's nice. Uh, the more reliable way to do it is through the Pokeathlon minigame, on certain days, you can get certain elemental stones. Uh, it's really annoying to manipulate the time. I mean, you can either, like, wait... Or you can go ahead and uh, use Chaos Control and set the time yourself. Really obnoxious to do that. I don't know if I'm going to actively penalize Pokemon that require Evolution Stones that way. But, I mean, it's going to be in the back of my mind. And I'm going to be kind of irritated uh, on these Pokemon's behalf. Because why are these stones so rare? You could just buy them in Gen 1 and it didn't make those Pokemon that good. Ugh! Uh, but previously, we were going to have a, uh, a Stealth Rocks or a Sacred Stones tier... For these Pokemon that required stones, because most of them are just complete garbage, unless they can actually reach their final evolution. We're gonna assume you can get the stones. It's annoying, though. Alright, I think that's everything for the stones, right? And we will mention that uh, Sunstone and Moonstone you can actually just pick up. 
and that Shiny Stone, Dusk Stone, and Dawn Stone are post game, unfortunately. Maybe we should vote on the topic of trade evos. I think most people are okay with assuming you can get the trade evos. Aren't the Evo Stones by Pokathlon post-game locked anyway? I thought that, but we looked it up. On certain days, you can get certain stones before post-game. It's been one hour. I see we've made a lot of progress. You must be... F first time? <laughs> we're setting up the criteria. It always takes this long. Because we gotta, we gotta make sure that we're doing it right before we start. Otherwise, the whole list is gonna be a mess. First... You can also get stones from the bug catching contest. I think those are also post game locked, except for Sunstone. All of them are available? I guess we can check that. Hey, it's Shiny Celebi. That's not an obtainable Pokemon. I think they're posted. We'll just check that. Pokemon bug catching. Bug catching contest. And I want to go to the Soul Silver one, right? I think it'll just tell me here. Rewards, competitors, generation two, prizes. This is what we want. Uh, looks like rant. Uh, is this right? Oh no! Well, that actually just brings us to hard gold. <laughs> Yeah, the Sunstone is the only one you can get pre-National Pokedex. So I don't think we even need to mention this. I've been back three times he has yet to place a single Pokemon. Are, are people just going to keep complaining about <laughs> how we have to do the criteria? I'm sorry, guys. We have to go through all of this. It's either people complain that we didn't start yet, or people complain that we didn't explain everything. I'd rather have people complain we didn't start yet. There we go. There's 200 people? What? Oh my god. Hey, welcome everybody. Yeah, uh, if this is your first time, welcome. Sorry I was so aggressive there. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe using the, uh, the button below. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you're used to the edited version... Um, that's obviously a lot faster, but that's because you only see the good takes that we get through taking our time in the live. Yeah, I, I would rather have the live be slower than have the premium be worse. Sorry. I'm not sorry. Yeah, why did I apologize? Are we almost ready? I think we just talk about the, the tiers, right? Okay. <laughs> we should do a second take of the entire explanation? No. <laughs> no. Alright, I think we're ready. Okay. Here we go. I never explained why I'm Chikorita. I'm going to do that as we start. Uh, Alright, here we go. So what are the actual tiers? Well, let's go through them really quickly. So at the tippy top, we've got... The S, the S tier. I mean, maybe this this should be SS for Soul Silver, right? Although I actually played Hard Cold. Oh, this is a disaster. We're not gonna do that. Okay. <laughs> uh, first time here, my mind is blown. Didn't know how I put this much effort in. We we don't take shortcuts here, okay? <laughs> but that's also why it takes a while for the premium because I have to actually like scan through all of this. Don't, you're a bit late, don't worry, you didn't miss anything. <laughs> As many chatters have pointed out. Okay, I w we'll do the SS thing, but uh... I'll say that maybe it should be SS for Soul Silver. Okay, here we go. Alright, so what are the actual tiers? Well, at the very tippy top, we've got S. Maybe this should be SS for Soul Silver, huh? So these are for the very best Pokemon in the game that I would recommend you use. You don't have to use them, right? I mean, it's a kid's game. You can beat the game with anything, but you should use these Pokemon, right? 
Uh, they're going to be available for pretty much all of the game, and if not, they're here because they're super duper strong. <laughs> Under that we have A tier, I would consider these highly recommended. Uh, they maybe have like a couple minor flaws holding them back from total domination, but they're no slouches, they're very good. Then we have B tier. I would consider these Pokemon, yeah, above average. I'll give them a, a lukewarm recommendation. Not quite a fire type recommendation. I don't want to hurt myself here. But you can go ahead and use these Pokemon with, without feeling too embarrassed about it. And then the long awaited return of SEAC tier. It's back, baby. <laughs> so this is a special tier. Pretty much for water types that are like indistinguishable from each other. Like there's so many random water types that are like very whatever. But hey, they're water types and water is ridiculously good. So they get to sort of float above the actual letter C tier. These Pokemon I would consider to be like average to slightly below average. They're okay. I mean, I guess you can use them. I think I would say they have critical flaws that prevent me from... Like, outright recommending them, but, like, you can use them. Like, sure. Yeah. This is colder than lukewarm. What temperature is that? Then we've got the D tier, uh, D for don't bother. These Pokemon just suck. <laughs> That's pretty much all I have to say about them. They're uh, horrifically flawed. Uh, use them for your challenge runs, basically. And then we have the Unknown Dungeon. These Pokemon aren't actually bad. Uh, mostly, this is going to be Kanto-exclusive Pokemon that sort of come too late to really contribute to your, your adventure. Some of them would be really good if they were available earlier, uh, and some of them uh, would be crap if they were available earlier. So they kind of get saved by being in the Unknown Dungeon. I think we're going to talk about where these Pokemon would be uh, if they weren't Kanto-exclusive. Uh, but for the most part, we're just going to kind of fling them in the Unknown Dungeon and leave them there. I, and just a note, like, I know how to spell unknown. It's a joke, okay, right? This is like the Pokemon unknown. I think that's everything. Uh, let me just see if I missed anything in the chat. I think it's Surf and Waterfall. I missed C tier. It's back. C for Chikorita. We're not putting Chikorita in C, don't worry. Tepid? Oh. that That's, I guess, uh... I think Tepid and Lukewarm are the same thing, though. Unknown isn't good enough for Unknown Dungeon. That's true. Uh, okay, I think we are ready. Okay. Have we covered everything? I think we've covered everything. Yeah. Alright, well thank you all for your patience. I think we can go ahead and get started. Uh, so for everybody uh, just joining us, I will say, there, obviously there's a ton of factors for every Pokemon to consider, and I spent a couple hours like looking up where stuff is, uh, what moves Pokemon get, but I probably did not get everything. So, if I make a mistake, uh, please do well actually me, like I'm asking you to, uh, because the ultimate goal is to make an accurate tier list. If I say something incorrect, please correct me and we'll do another take and put that into the premium. So, I'm inviting you to do so, but I mean, you don't have to be mean about it. <laughs> We're starting. It's been 74 years. Okay. Alright, let's get started. I Yeah, we, we talked about everything. Yeah. Great. Okay. Alright. I think it's time to begin our Johto adventure. Just kidding. Did you skip here using the time codes? Did you watch the explanation? I don't want to hear any comments about... Alright, well, I, I am gonna... I, I need this because uh, I'm gonna put a uh, time code here so people can skip here. And I know people are gonna skip here. I'm just gonna make people uh, watch the criteria. Alright. <clears throat> I think it's about time to start our Johto adventure. Just kidding, did you actually watch the criteria or did you skip here with a time code? Oh. 
I, I forgot a prop. All right, here we go. We're leading off. We're leading off with the very first Pokemon in the Johto decks, and the first one in many trainers' hearts. It's Chikorita, all right? And I've decided... Oh no, how do I do this? Cheese's breaking key fabe? I don't know what that means. Uh, let's see how to do this. It's going to be really dumb, but I'm doing it anyway. Uh, Chick Reed is also going to be probably the longest entry because there's just a lot to talk about, uh, but uh, we'll see. And I'm probably not going to be able to see chat during this, but I mean, like, keep typing. <laughs> uh, okay, how do we do this? Okay, okay. We're starting with number one in the Johto decks, and possibly number one in your heart, Chikorita. And as you can see, uh, I myself have become a Chikorita to hopefully make my arguments more convincing. I've also got this can of Chick Peas, so like, I'm just a real Chick Magnet today. So Chikorita, uh, it is one of your starter options, and it is the Grass type starter option. You may remember Chikorita as uh, the worst starter ever in the original games, but I mean, have things gotten better? They can only go up, right? They haven't gotten better. They've got worse. Oh, I messed up. They haven't gotten better. They've gotten worse. Game Freak, have some goddamn mercy, why don't you? Yeah, they nerfed Chikorita. I, I, uh, To be clear, they buffed Chikorita itself. It's a little bit better. But all of the mechanics of the game around Chikorita <laughs> have made it even worse. Uh, enemy teams are, like, less crap, uh, which is bad news when you're struggling. And the big thing is, the stat XP system means that your attacks are even weaker. And they were barely <laughs> getting there in the original games. Honestly, the problem really is the typing. Because you get Razor Leaf at level 6. A 55 base power stab move with upside high crit rate at level 6 is insane, except that it's a grass type move. If it was any type other than grass, uh, or bug, uh, or poison, it would be, like, crazy. It would be busted. But instead of busted, it's just bad, <laughs> because everything resists it. Why is this type so bad? Ah, oh, justice for Chikorita. Honestly, I'm a Chikorita ally. I think Game Freak should buff grass, but... Oh... Pure defensive grass type. Sad. And we're going to talk about defensive gameplay now, because, like, half of the comments on the Gen 2 starter video are defending Chikorita on what I think are just all the wrong grounds. So they're saying, like, I mean, Chikorita is such a tank. You can set up Reflect. You can set up Light Screen. You can use Synthesis. You can take hits. As if that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, you should never be getting hit, ever. <laughs> You have a massive advantage over your opponents. Why aren't you just knocking them out? And the answer why you're not is because your type sucks. And you're forced into this, like, defensive gameplay. If you are taking damage, you are already losing. <laughs> and you're just making excuses to try and argue for your viability. If you're not one-shotting, you're just wasting your time. Listen to me, okay? I, Chikorita myself, am going to tell you. There's a lot of things out there in this world, okay? You can go outside, use your Poke Walker, talk to your friends, experience all the things this wonderful world we live in have to has to offer. Why are you sitting there, dealing 12.5% damage to your opponent a turn with a 75% accuracy poison powder? You don't even get Leech Seed! There's better things to be doing with your life than trying to stall your way through an in-game Pokemon playthrough. B tier. It's okay. But as a starter, it's horrendous. That's the HGSS evaluation of Chikorita. Okay, I think that's everything for Chikorita. Any, any, uh, complaints or things to add? <laughs> We're gonna add some inspirational music to that speech there. I think B tier is actually, like, where it goes. Like, I mean, it, it really doesn't get worse than this for a starter, but 
it's fine. Like, its base stat total is honestly, like, fine. And, I mean, yeah, like, level 6 Razor Leaf, really good. You can get Miracle Seed really early? I mean, 20% better bad. <laughs> Say if you want to play defensive with it, there's Colosseum. We'll mention something about Colosseum, but I think that's it for Chikorita then. Okay. If you want to see a game where Chikorita shines, maybe step into the Coliseum. I'm using the word shine very generously there, by the way. Okay, I think that's it. Alright. Next! Cyndaquil. Adorable. So Cyndaquil has also been nerfed since Gen 2. Uh, the major nerf is that Thunder Punch is now a tutor move, and it's also physical, so you maybe wouldn't want to use it anyway. But its move pool has gotten a little bit better other than that. Flame Wheel is now much earlier. I think it's like level 20 or 21, when it used to be like 31. I don't know why. And notably, Flamethrower is much earlier. It used to be like level 60, and now it's a much more reasonable level 42-ish. So Ripper only Thunder Punch, but... I mean, fire is a pretty good type. You start with it, and it's got those Charizard stats. You can't go wrong with that, right? So, I mean, this is going to be an S-tier pick. The vast majority of starters, sorry, Chikorita, are going to be S-tier, so that's sort of the default placement for them. It's fast, it's strong, and it's a good offensive type with okay moves. I think we've also... I think Dig also got a little bit buffed. It's now 20 base power more. It's 80 base power. And you can also get Rock Tomb, which... I mean, it's not great, but it's, it's okay, and it's an option you might use. You can also get Focus Blast at the Goldenrod Department Store. 120 base power, that's pretty good. 70 accuracy. <laughs> I mean, people call it Focus Miss for a reason, right? I wouldn't use it. Oh, you can get, uh, you can get fire, can you really buy fire blast in the goldenrod department store? Yes, oh, okay. And if you don't want to wait for flamethrower, you can start blasting! Just head into the department store, pick up a Fire Blast TM. We got Focus Blast, we got Fire Blast. I'd rather use the Fire one. Uh, but 85 accuracy is, uh, is, is a little, little shaky. I'd rather just use Flamethrower once it's available. You generally don't need the power of Fire Blast, but it's an option. Flame Wheel is 19 for Cinda? Yeah, but you're probably going to evolve to Quilava, right? So that makes it 21. Anything else for Cyndaquil? Better than Ember and Flame Wheel, at least. I think we've done everything, right? Oh, Choice Specs. We'll mention Choice Specs. Yeah. And because Cyndaquil is primarily a special attacker, you can get those Lake of Rage Choice Specs and do 50% more damage. Wow, if, if you want to. You can get hidden power on it. We're not going to mention hidden power for everyone. Okay. I think that's it for Cyndaquil. Next. CEO of Bethesda, Totodial Howard. Uh, the only starter that's actually been buffed, because thanks to the physical special split, it can actually use Water Stab off of its physical attack. Although that's not until you get... Waterfall, which is pretty much at the end of Johto, right? It's uh, around when you get the Rising Badge. 
but even without physical stab until the very end, you still get that 95 base power surf at the fourth gym, which is really strong, and your special attack is not a horrible, you can do that. Uh, you've lost Ice Punch, but uh, you get Ice Fang, which, which is a little bit worse. I'd rather have the extra power than, like, the flinch chance, but, I mean, it's still good, and it's, like, a nice early level up move. Uh, you also get Crunch, whereas you did not in Gen 2, and both Bite and Crunch are physical. So overall, Totodile Howard returns at Bethesda looking even better than they were in Gen 2. It's actually very good. Uh, I think on its own, it's actually better than Cyndaquil. However, I am going to put it below. Why? Uh, this is definitely an exception. I wouldn't normally do this, but you have a story encounter with a certain Chad <laughs> who's just better than Totodile. <laughs> So I think that by picking Cyndaquil, you are actually giving yourself an advantage over picking Totodile. Because these are both fine in the early game. And even though I think Totodile is a little bit better overall, it's not better than this guy. So I think you should just pick Cyndaquil. But Totodile is not a bad choice at all. It's great. Uh, they did nerf Rage, by the way. So you can't quite just rage your way through the beginning of the game. But it's still, like, fine. It's, it's still great. I would say it just works. You still earn Ice Punch via Tutor, but Ice Punch, it's post-game. Totodile is B-tier at most because it's physical and can't get past Cotton Guard boosted Ampharos? Is this... What unit? What game are you playing, bro? <laughs> Mention Avalanche TM. Avalanche sucks, man. It's negative priority. No way. Can Chikorita at least be low A? No. It gets agility through level up. Why would you ever use that? You can get Blizzard and Goldenrod? 70 accuracy, though. No way. I'd rather just Ice Fang. But we will mention that because of Bethesda. Yeah, apparently, you can get Blizzard in Goldenrod, but I mean 70% accuracy. I'd rather go with Bethesda than Blizzard. Or I guess, um... I'd rather go with Bethesda than modern-day Blizzard. Uh-oh. That's, uh... Pretty, uh... That's pretty worrying. There we go. Big, big jokes. We, we mentioned Blizzard just for the jokes. I think that's everything, right? We'll mention this as well. And this applies to all water types. We'll mention it here because it's the first water type we're talking about. But water and normal together... Uh, hit every single thing in the game for at least neutral damage. So if you have a water attack and you have a normal attack, say return, uh, you're never going to have an opponent that you can't actually hit for at least okay damage. So, good news for water types. Okay. I think that's it for Totodile. How are we an hour in with only three mons reviewed? I think somebody should, like, keep a log of every comment about how slow we are. Uh, but the answer, uh, the, sorry, the, uh, the non-mean answer is that uh, we have to do all the criteria. Alright, Pidgey. Okay. Pidgey! The early game bird. So boring. Is it bad? Eh. It's just very meh. It's a normal flying type. It has very mediocre stats. Very mediocre typing. And for some reason, the evolution to Pidgeot is, I would consider it fairly late. It's like mid-30s. As if it's some powerhouse that you're not allowed to use until that stage of the game. You can use it. It's not horrible. But I personally wouldn't recommend it. 
Faulkner talks about his dad's cherished Pidgeotto. If your dad has given you a Pidgeotto you to use, I got bad news for you, Faulkner. He might not like you very much. I think that's everything for Pidgey. There's really not that much to say about it. You think Pidgey should be C? Its move pool is very bad. I think it's going to be it's going to be a very low B by the end of this. What's its best flying move? Is it fly? Okay. Pidgey doesn't learn wing attack until level 38? Hang on. We're gonna check this. I think that's true, but... Pidgey. Uh, we want Gen 4, right? Gen 4. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, until, upon further review, not getting wing attack until level 33. As a Pidgey, not even as a Pidgeotto. Uh, yeah, goodbye. Uh, <laughs> you can fly, but you're not soaring high on this list. Down to sea with you. <laughs> goodbye. There you go. That's Pidgey. We're done with that. Why use Pidgey when you could use cooler Pidgey? Spiro. Spiro is basically better than Pidgey in every single way that you actually care about. It has better offenses, it evolves faster, and it gets better moves. Is it amazing? No, but it's way better than Pidgey. <laughs> Uh, they're available at the same time, too, so there's really no advantage to picking Pidgey unless, like, you like it. Who are you, by the way? <laughs> nice try, Faulkner. And, of course, if you want to unlock the true power of Spiro, you've got to go to Kenya. So there is a gatekeeper near Goldenrod City who will trade you Kenya the Spiro. Well, not even trade, he gives it to you because he wants you to deliver it. Uh, and then, because it's a gift oh no, it is a trade, right? What about Kenya's special anyway? It's, uh, it gets an XP boost. It's just a gift, right? Yeah, it's just a gift. And it gets the XP boost? Yeah, okay. But if we want to unlock the true power of Spiro, we've got to go to Kenya. So there's a gatekeeper near Goldenrod City who gives you a gift Spiro named Kenya. Not really sure why it's named that, but it's level 20, which is very reasonable for that point in the game. And because it's a gift Pokemon, it gets 1.5x uh, XP. So it's going to grow a lot faster than it would normally. Uh, and even though its stats are like kind of mediocre, when you get 1.5 times the power... Uh, it's actually not that bad at all. Uh, and it evolves pretty much immediately into Firo. So... Kenya, pretty good Pokemon. Uh, random Spearows that you can catch early in the game, also okay. Uh, but I think you should go ahead and uh, go to Kenya. I think you're actually supposed to give Kenya away. That's why you were given Kenya, but it's a sovereign nation, right? You can't just trade it away to someone else. How was it traded to you in the first place? Th don't worry about it. Anything else to say about Spiro? I 
need to see it from Britain's perspective to understand? Oh, well, I'm American. What did, well, actually, Americans have also taken stuff over. Uh-oh. Kenya. De facto better than Dodrio. Kenya is the best mod in the game for a playthrough because of XP. The fact that it gets never miss aerial ace so early is awesome. Although the never miss part of aerial ace doesn't really matter. People are saying Pidgey not getting wing attack earlier isn't an issue because aerial ace TM exists. Who's saying that? All right, I think that's that's enough, right? We can just keep going. We'll say that. Okay. All right. Hoot hoot. What if Pidgey was even more defensive? No thanks. He's not going on my team, but he got a new job at Duolingo and just painted himself green, and now he's harassing you to do your Japanese drills. Stop playing the game and go do your drills so Hoot Hoot will leave you alone. It's not very good. It's Pidgey, but it evolves a little bit earlier, and it has even more defensive leaning stats. It gets hypnosis. I guess that's something. I love using a 60 base power move. I love using a 60 accuracy sleep move. It's, it feels great. Gets access to psychic? Let, let's look at these Noctowl stats. Oh, we gotta look at the Gen 4 moves as well. Wow, level 22 confusion. No, this is awful. <laughs> I mean, some people in the chat have been blackmailed by the Duolingo Owl to stand for Hoot Hoot and Noctowl. Like, look at these stats. Disgusting. Oh, but you get confusion at level 22. Wow, non stab confusion off of 76 special attack. Ooh, so spooky. I'm not spooked. You want to be better than Pidgey? Yeah, sure. Fine. What an accomplishment. There you go. If only it was later gens and got tinted lens hurricane, why would this thing have tinted lens? Okay. Looks like everybody's okay with this for Hoot Hoot. Oh, I guess so it works at Duolingo instead of Hooters, right? Yeah. Family stream. Yeah, the one in the the one in the premium is gonna be Duolingo. Okay, great. Hypnosis Dream Eater exists. That's really bad. You're gonna use a turn, probably miss, so use two turns to then use an attack. How about you attack once and win? How about that? Keep dreaming, bro. All right. Radita. Is it a top percentage Pokemon? Yeah, I think so, but 
it's really unexciting. This is probably going to end up being near, like, the top of B. So, Radita is a normal type. That's bad, but you start with it, and it's very offensively leaning, right? It's decently fast, it's decently strong, I'm using those terms very generously. But for the point in the game where you get it, and for how early it evolves, and for getting, like, an early Hyperfang, Hyperfang's pretty good, it's okay. Uh, it's pretty much the definition of usable early game filler, and then once you get actual Pokémon that are better than it, you can go ahead and just stuff a bunch of HMs on it and like just keep it at the back of your party and make it do your chores. In that sense, it's a, it's a decent contributor. It's okay. And the ability that it gets is alright. It gets guts. Although I think people really, really, really overestimate how good guts is for the type of playthrough I'm talking about. I get a ton of comments on, like, random videos about Guts, and people are like, Jeez, you're underrating Guts, because you can just get into a wild encounter with a Pokemon that can status you, stall for three turns while they, like, poison sting you, and then, after the battle, you can go ahead and heal the damage up and deal with the constant poison damage, all for a 1.5 attack boost. Like, I gotta redo that. Um, like, people really, really, really overrate how good Guts is in an in-game playthrough. Like, I get a bunch of comments on random videos telling me how I need to take Guts seriously because you can get into an encounter with a wild Pokemon that status you, and then all you have to do is stall with items until they inflict the status, and then you get a 1.5 attack boost. Like, okay, but then you're taking damage from the status. You still take overworld damage from the status, right? The screen flickers, you hear the annoying noise, and you lose HP. And if you ever go to a Pokemon Center, you have to do all of it again. For 1.5 attack boost. No, I don't think I will. You're wrong. But if you happen to get status, it's a nice boost. That's only poison, though. Burn is way... It's literally happening in the stream. It's only poison, though. Burn is better. How are you getting burned in your in-game playthrough? Tell me right now. You. Tell me. How are you doing it? You can't. When is Flame Orb available? It's post-game. Flame Body, Magmar, and Burn Tower. Alright, so... Whenever we want to activate Guts, we're going to fly to Ecritique. And we're going to hunt Magmars and attack them until we burn ourselves for a 1.5 attack boost on our Radita. No. And Flame Orb is not available until post-game. Like, if Guts was some game-changing ability that lets you overcome obstacles you couldn't otherwise, then yeah, sure, but like, just, just use these other Pokémon that don't need to do all this. Like, what? I think Joey would be perfectly fine with this percentage of Radita. It's near the top. I think that's enough for Radita, right? People are talking about facade. Okay, well, I'll just do this to prevent the facade comments. So facade is not a level up move, right? You need a TM. Radita. Shum. It's probably a faster way to scroll. Gen 4. Yeah, it's a TM, so where is Facade? In HGSS. Uh, we have to go here, right? 
TM42. Okay, yeah. And and just we're gonna we're gonna defeat all of the guts related comments right now. What about facade and guts? How do you get facade in HGSS? Goldenrod Department Store Lottery. No. We're done here. All right, time to talk about Centret. I'm just checking if Centred, uh, what are the, I don't think, is Centred a pickup Pokemon? No, it's not, yeah. That's unfortunate. All right, Centred. S tier walking animation. We don't count those though. Very, very, very boring. Very good at uh, being employed as your HM user, our HM employee. It could be Centred. Are you actually going to fight things with this thing? I, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I would much rather use Radita because Radita has far better offenses. And, I mean, although I, I just spent a bunch of time dunking on Guts, but it's way better than Runaway or Keen Eye. So what do we do with Centred? I think we're going to go ahead and put it actually below Pidgey or Hoot Hoot because at least they have dual stab. And Centred is just kind of, kind of walking along. Anything else to say about Centred and Furret? Cheese, didn't you give Beedoo a good tier just because of the HM utility? That's true. But I also think Bidoof is, like, exceptional. <laughs> like, it is the HM user. And also, HMs were completely out of control in... Dipa. And just for... So Furret does have a very good move pool, as most uh, normal types do, but it does not have the stats to use it. It's basically going to be using... Basic, physical, normal moves. You don't need that. I think that's everything for Furred and Centred. Furred's stats are pretty similar to Raticate. Time, time to dispel some fake news. No, they're not. <laughs> no. Raticate. Slam is so good, though. I think that's actually bannable. Can you mute people temporarily? That's mutable, at least. Unless you meant Body Slam. Alright, so here's Furret. I hope you'll agree this is disgusting. Here's Raticate. I think it's better. Look at that. F five more attack. Seven more speed. Definitely better. It's the same picture. And they're both pretty bad, but Raticate's way better. He's mad because Furred is taller than he is. Oh! Ohio! Dare daro! Otachi ga suki desu? Alright, fine. Yoko sue. Alright, so one of my friends who I invited is actually in the stream. It's a little bit uh, conspicuous because you can see the text is in a different language. They're saying that they like Center It. Oh, also, if you can type Japanese in the chat, please do. So, my coworker is saying that they like Centred.
。おたちをあげましょう。All right. You're so lucky, Centret. You are so lucky. My coworker is telling me that Centret is cute and should be promoted. Fine. Congratulations, Centret. You get to be better than these guys, but I still want there to be a tier separation between Centret and Radita. Great compromise. All right. Jagaimo. I, I do like potatoes. All right. Arigato, konnichiwa. All right. All right.、Uh, all right. So we've got the. Uh, uh, all right. Otachi o e n d a no o k a g e s a m a dane. Congratulations, Centred. Alright, you know what? We'll put Centret next to Radita. But Radita is still better. Wow, actual. A real. WWWWWWW. What on there? Are people using Google Translate? <laughs> まあ、来てくれてありがとうございました。感謝します。Okay. I, I, alright. So that's it for Fur It. Alright. Pichu! So what is this? I'm just trying to see if I missed anything. Alright, we've got some kusas in the chat. Excellent. Sa, what do you need? Hongo, okay. Next. Pichu. So the Pikachu line is actually post game.、Uh, you can only get Pikachu in Verdian Forest. So, unknown dungeon. But, if you could get it in Kanto, say if you get it around the same time as these, I, I mean, I guess I'd put it in like B. I mean, Pikachu's bad, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's very, very bad. And you know what? I don't even think Pikachu is that cute. I mean, it's a little bit cute. But, I, like, I wouldn't say it's one of the cutest. And its stats are very bad. <laughs> very, 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 very bad、uh, without the Thunderstone evolution. And Thunderstone is really annoying to get, unfortunately. So, it'll languish in the unknown dungeon. But if you could get it earlier, it would probably be a B because, I mean, electric types are pretty good. Even with bad stats. There you go. That's it. Ijo des. Oh, I said if you can get it in Kanto. Oh, whoops. It's a baby Pokemon. What did you expect? Oh, so I'm just using the base forms of everything, but I'm considering as if it's like a Raichu. Asakara, o t s u k a r e s a m a d e s t a Nido, ah, are? Nido, ne shimas. o t s u k a r e s a m a d e s o y a s m i n a s a i Co workers out of here. But they were able to promote Otachi to be. Yeah, okay, so final comments on the Pikachu line Pikachu has good stats if you double all of them. And if you evolve it with a Thunderstone, of course, it stops learning level up moves. So that's just another strike、uh, to add to all the negatives. Bad. But kind of cute, but not cute enough. Alright. l Okay, hopefully. So there's construction next to me. Sorry about that, but there's gonna be some noise. I can't really do anything about that. <laughs> Now that my friend left, I can put s e n t r i c back down. No. Which den did they. Crimson Fury! Otashi ni senpai ni chui shite kudasai. 
私あなたの注意を希望。Is that supposed to be 希望します ?I don't know what that means. <笑>おたちナンバーワン。I think、uh, somebody with a furret profile pick might be a little bit biased towards おたち。All right. Wow, Kenya is actually in the chat. That's a, good, that's a good Pokemon. Do I like Japanese swords or European swords? What? I mean. All right, let's move on. Caterpie! Available as an illustration on Irastoya. So apparently, there's a real animal that basically is Caterpie. So, Caterpie. Uh, I think a lot of people really like Caterpie, probably because of the Bye Bye Butterfree episode. Caterpie's pretty good. It's pretty good.、Uh, it does a really good job at fulfilling the role of early game Power Spike. Evolves up to Butterfree by level 10. You get confusion off of. I, I don't know if I'd call it okay special attack, but like, not unacceptable special attack. You can powder some stuff. And of course, it got a huge buff in Generation. Three, and this is Gen 4 game, because the, it is one of the Pokemon that actually has a very powerful ability.、Uh, those really creepy compound eyes giving you a pseudo spore,、uh, almost spore accuracy,、uh, is really, really useful. Because、uh, being able to just disable Pokemon that you can't actually beat、uh, is really useful.、Uh, especially because in game, we do consider catching utility like a little bit. And、uh, Butterfree is kind of the king of that. Really nice. Really nice. I think definitely a solid top of B Pokemon. It's not bad. Oh, and、uh, it finally actually gets to use its special stab moves. Yeah, that's true. Nice. Butterfree's attack stat is no joke. It's just as much of a powerhouse as Onyx! Sure. I think Otachi is still better biased. Butterfree is m e c h a I don't know if I'd put the mecha in there, but I mean, yeah, it's not bad. Everybody okay with high B for Butterfree? <laughs> Level 28 Silver Wind. <laughs> Just gotta get to level 28 for that Silver Wind. Verdant Wind? Silver Snow? Silver Wind? Level 30 Tailwind, no. Is Butterfree good at the time you get it? It's like the third gym? What? It's before the first gym. <laughs> It's like right at the start of the game. Oh, the cabbage is folding over? Let me fix that. I think that's everything, right? Golden Wind, that's not one of the roots. Okay, next. Weedle. Oh, what are you? Caterpie is like the second. Yeah, okay. People are just talking about availability of Caterpie. It's fine, right? In Soul Silver, it's only Weedle until bug catching contest. Oh, yeah, we're not talking about. It depends on your version, right? Oh, okay. Okay, next. Weedle. People think bug types are bad. In Weedle's case, they're right.、Uh, it is way, way, way worse than Caterpie. So, Weedle is sort of the more、uh, offensively minded one.、Uh, offensive as in, this thing offends me. It's real bad. <laughs> so, you'd think that that same power spike would occur, because it has the same final evolution level of 10, right? But the typing is just complete garbo. It's just awful. You're using really weak bug and poison moves forever. Sounds bad to me. Oh, but you can beat the game with Beedrill. You can beat the game with anything, bro. That is not a defense. This thing also has no defense, by the way.
Any defenders of Beedrill? Did this stream really start two hours ago and only 10 Pokemon are done? Should we, should we just start banning people? Maybe we should. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. Twin Needle is a cool move. You could name it after B-movie characters. We'll do something about B-movie, I guess. Because of Megas. Get Sword Dance if you want to. Beedrill can solo entire game. Kane easy? Nah. Alright. Weedle Twin Needle. That's a good channel. We're going to swap these because of something I have in mind. I'm late to the stream. Is the leaf a cheese salad joke or what? It's, it's Chikorita, bro. This list is presented to you by Chikorita. Oh, hang on. The, the rubber band is like slipping. All right, here we go. I, if, if you're such a big B fan, rather than play this game, I, I've got a movie you can watch. I'd recommend that instead. Aridos is slower. Shouldn't you have gotten a bay leaf for the bit? You wouldn't be able to see it, bro. Like, actual bay leaves are really small. All right, next. <laughs> Not the piece. <laughs> okay. Final word on Weedle. Should you use this? No. Not the bees. Not the bees. <laughs> What do I say instead of all over my eyes? It's not all over the tears, right? All over my lists? All over what? All over my team. It's, it's got to be like a eyes, right? All over my what? All over my compound eyes. Okay, I, okay. that's what we got to do. All right. Final thoughts on Weedle. Not the bees. Not the bees! All over my eyes. My compound eyes. Uh, bad. Okay, <laughs> that's it. All over my eyes. My compound eyes. There we go. <laughs> that's really dumb. Okay. Does it get worse than Weedle? Uh, it does. Spinarak and Ariados. More like Audios. Be gone! Oh, I, I don't feel so good. Too bad. Should have had better stats. Horrible stats. Horrible typing. Horrible moves. Just awful. And you know what's the worst part of it all? It's not even the best at being the worst. Because that would be Lediba. Horrible stats, horrible typing, horrible move, but at least it's so bad that it gets the meme factor, right? Everyone knows that Letty Bun Ledian are complete unmitigated ass. We're not talking about half ass, we're not talking about quarter ass, we're getting some really, really small fractions. Maybe we've got a 30 second of an ass. Horrible! But at least it gets Iron Fist? I think, that might not even be true. Ridiculous. Let me see if I missed anything during that tirade. <laughs> yep.
Yeah. Is Iron Fist even a hidden ability? Yeah, Iron Fist is a hidden ability. Yeah. Iron Fist is actually a hidden ability, so I'm sorry if you wanted to use that 35 base attack with a 20% boost. What a joke. It's so bad. It's completely useless. It... Ladian gets early bird despite being a bug. Oh, we talked about it in the Gen 3 tier list, but uh, the Japanese uh, name for early bird is Hayaoki. It just means wake up early. It's, uh, my coworker literally said uh, <laughs> wake up early earlier, um, but th that's why uh, it can get early bird. It has nothing to do with bugs or birds. I cannot accept this Arido slander. At least put it in the C tier. No way. Absolutely not. There's no chance. I think that's it for these guys, right? They're done. I think everybody agrees that, like, they're all horrible, but that the order should be Weedle, Spinarak, Ledibo. Ledian needs its own tier. Did I see the false web video about it's anything goes right? I did see that video. Yeah. So, like, the main role of Ledibo is that it's so bad that you can use it for satire when you say that it's good. That That's about it. Okay, I think we're next. We're able to go to the next one. All right. You caught it, Gia, dude, right? The boulder has entered the ring. Unfortunately, I think his glory days are a bit behind him. This is the first Pokemon that has been massively nerfed by the EV system change. So Golem, it's really slow. And that was barely okay in Gen 2 because of the stat XP system. You got a little bit of a, a speed boost. Uh, you rolled a little bit faster because you were able to max out your speed. That's not going to be happening in this game. Uh, so that means you are going to be taking hits, which you can take, uh, but ideally, you should be taking none. So previously an S-tier Pokemon, now I think just a top of A Pokemon. So how do we, uh, we have to demote him from the boulder, right? So he's not the boulder, he's not the pebble, what's, what's in between? What's his new title? The rock? Just the rock? That might be an upgrade. The gravel? The rock? It's, it looks like the rock, right? The rock? Yeah, okay, it's gotta be the rock, right? Okay. A single gravel? Just stone. The rock, the stone. I think it's the rock, right? Rock polish at level 8? Is it level 8 in Gen 4? It's also, like, not good, though, because it's a stone Luigi. Okay. We'll, we'll put that in. Um... Uh, where is this, uh, Geodude? Geodude! We want Gen 4 moves, right? Boop. Oh yeah, it is level 8. Cool. I don't think it really matters, though, but we will mention it. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah. You actually do get the rock polish option at level 8. Uh, so you can go fast, but at the price of a move slot and a turn every battle, I, I don't think that's worth it. It's still a major nerf. So not quite the boulder, uh, but also not quite the pebble. I, I think we can compromise the rock. Uh, that, that might actually be an upgrade, I guess. 
Alternatively, it's a stone Luigi. <laughs> Still really, really good. Uh, and of course, it has amazing matchups against uh, a lot of the early region. It's great overall. Uh, just not quite the King of the Ring as it used to be. I think that's everything for Geodude. It's a stone, Luigi. You didn't make it. Now that's pretty funny. Oh uh, yeah, you can still use Rock Polish even if you don't speak the language, yeah. I think that's everything? Everybody okay with a uh, very high A tier placement for Geodude? It's a football! I chiseled it! Low S tier. Oh, we. Yeah, I think it's good to mention that um, the Gengar line now now levitates. That that's actually important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another nerf to Geodude, indirect nerf, is that uh, Ghastly now levitates, so you can no longer beat Morty. I mean, you can, right? You can still chuck rocks at it, but you've lost the far more reliable Magnitude. Imagine Magnitude being the more reliable option. I didn't say how Judo is my mom's favorite. Should I say that again this time? Are we counting trades? You must have missed that part. Um, but yeah, we are counting trades. I'm assuming that trade evolutions evolve at a certain level, which is what you can do in certain, like, ROM stuff. Okay. Alright, so we've been going for just over two hours? I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> Uh, I'll be right back. So I'll see you in like a minute. And we're back. Thanks for waiting. You didn't have to wait that long, right? Uh, let's see if I missed anything. I'm assuming people are evangelizing for Onyx. Yeah, how did I know? It always happens. Okay. Oh, what song is this? I think somebody did mention it. It's the uh, Nook's Cranny theme from... It's Tom Nook's shop from Animal Crossing. Did I wash my hands? I did. The bathroom's right there, bro. Uh, my leaf fixed? Here you go. All right. Okay, we'll, we'll kind of tilt it that way. Okay, here you go. Okay. Anything else to mention? Who, who are we talking about? The boulder? It was pretty good. Okay, we're done with that. Did I wash the leaf? I did not wash the leaf. Okay. Uh, who's next? Zubat, right? 
All right. What the? It had the Crobat evolution in Generation 2. Crobat is really, really fast, so it goes first. And then what? It just doesn't have the moves. That's the main weakness. Its move pool is, like, real... Real lacking. You get to go first, and then, like... What do you actually select, right? Uh, wing attack, I, I, I guess? Fly, eventually, it's two-turn move, not very good. Sludge bomb, it's a special attack, I mean, that's okay. Anything else? Bite? Uh, 60 base power with, like, mediocre attack? Leech life not yet buffed? Uh, very unfortunate. I think this is actually gonna be... Uh, here-ish. Maybe here. Unfortunate. Uh, well, one thing is that if we're talking about availability, this thing is so available, you can't stop running into it. They just toss themselves at you. Poison Fang? Sucks. Confuse Ray? Sucks. Nah. And you can't even be a Brave Bat, because that's not one of its level-up moves. Honestly, I'm going to put this below these early game Pokemon because Zubat itself is atrocious. It is horrible. But uh, Golbat, well, Golbat's also really bad. But probably by the time you get Golbat, you have high enough friendship that you can just immediately go to Crobat. People are talking about Poison Fang? Okay, like the only status I care about inflicting is Fainted, okay? Poison Fang is really bad at that. Another win for Otachi. It, it can't stop winning. Poison Fang? Poison Fang, I think, is 50 base power? It's pretty weak. You can use the Move Reminder to get Cross Poison, which is better than Poison Fang. That's like the 8th gym, right? That's where the Move Reminder is. And then you're using Cross Poison, which is very whatever as well. Crobat is a stronger Hoot Hoot, pro prove me wrong. I think Hoot Hoot's better. I mean, I think Crobat is, Crobat is better than Hoot Hoot. Wait, yeah, wait, it's ranked better than Hoot Hoot. What? Okay, wait, so we agree. Alright, no problem then. I'm okay with it as long as you acknowledge this is a hot take. Why is this a hot take? Should it be better? I don't think it's better. It's got decent stats. On stats alone, it would be higher, but it just doesn't have the moves. Weaker than Butterfree and Furret? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, like, you don't start with Crobat, guys. You start with Zubat. Zubat sucks. <laughs> Huge dud stage. It has one of the best defensive typings out there for an early game. Why are you getting hit? It learns cross poison. Cross poison is good. I wouldn't call it good. I'd call it barely not bad. Seventy base power. Wow. Awful. Yeah, I think we're done with Zubat. This is where it's going. It's not very good, unfortunately. It's got the stats, but not the moves. Okay.
Why doesn't he learn Gunk Shot, Game Freak, please? Well, Gunk Shot didn't exist yet, so that's probably why. All right. Clefable. Available in the new Johto Safari Zone. <laughs> so the Johto Safari Zone has insane mechanics. Uh, but all of those crazy ones where you have to like wait for blocks to like evolve. Those are all post-game. And we're not going to be ranking any of those Pokemon. This is a Pokemon you can just walk into the Safari Zone and get. As long as you're in the right biome. And the biomes aren't that hard to get. There's just, like, a couple, like, basic tasks you have to do, and then you get them. It's fine. So it's not a fairy type yet. That's unfortunate. And its stats are, like, very mediocre. <laughs> the reason why Clefable is good now is basically because of everything other than its stats. Because it's fairy, which is a busted typing, and has an insane move pool and really good abilities. Its abilities being really good doesn't really affect it in-game. Like, Magic Guard and Oblivious are both... Insane for competitive, which we don't care about. In-game, they do basically nothing. So what you're left with is a normal type with a really good move pool. Oh, look, it's a normal type with a really good move pool. But you get this one earlier. So I think we're going to put probably near the bottom of B. So this is going to apply to all of the Safari Zone Pokemon, but they're all pretty under-leveled. Uh, like, they're not even level 20. At a time where most of your team... By most of your team, I mean, like, your best, po like, two Pokemon are going to be, like, almost level 30. So you have to put a little bit of extra work into them. They've got to be good. Is this good? No, not really. But if you want to invest all the TMs in it, it's okay. Barely. I wouldn't recommend it. Anything you guys would like to add about Clefable? I think, like, very low B is probably going to be where it is at the end. Isn't Magikarp OP? Not for in-game. Magikarp is definitely OP for competitive, but not in in-game. TMs and Moonstone? We did mention TM. We will mention Moonstone, though. Uh, notably, although... This is a stone evolution. It is a moonstone evolution, which is one of the ones you can actually get. I believe there's one in the ruins of Alf. You need Surf to get it, but to even reach the Safari Zone where you can catch this, you need Surf. So if you can get a uh, Clefable line, you can get the moonstone. Okay, I think that's everything for Clefable. Oh, your mom can sometimes buy you a Moonstone as well, but that's just an RNG Fiesta, right? Zubat too low? I'm guessing you just joined and missed the whole explanation. Uh, but the Spark Notes version, uh, watch out, because Zubat is weak to Spark, is that uh, it has good stats, has good availability, but it just doesn't have the moves. Oh, getting the Moonstone from Mom is a money threshold? Oh, okay. So your mom will apparently buy you a Moonstone after a specific amount of money that she gets sent? That's nice. But there's the reliable one in the Ruins of Alf anyway. Okay, I think that's it. Shouldn't these be ranked on late game two? No. Did you miss the explanation? You might have. Okay, next. Jigglypuff line. Pretty much everything we said about Clefable applies to Jigglypuff, except Jigglypuff is way, way, way worse because they stuffed a bunch of its stats into HP. Who cares about HP? I don't really bad 
Actually, it's really bad. It's really bad. And you know what? It's not even that cute. At least the Clefable line is very cute. What is this thing? Horrific. If you stuff all your useful TMs into it, yeah, you could maybe say it's a C Pokemon. Don't do that. I'm telling you now, don't do it, bro. I'm warning you. Pull up the stats? Sure. Tremble and despair. Horrible. Awful. Pull up Igly buff stats? Well, Igly buff stats don't matter. We were, we're counting final evolutions. Will Alakazam's viability be ranked too, or just Kadabra? Uh, Alakazam too, but uh, the image is Kadabra, because I already made this thing. Yeah, this this is wig this is wiggly tough. This is wiggly tough. The final evolution, horrible. We need to move Aridos up for toxic spikes. No. Toxic Spikes is useless. The Pokeathlon stats are better than Clefable. We'll mention Pokeathlon when we do Sunkern. That's about it. I think that's enough for these two, right? It's pretty easy. Okay. Next. Togepi. Our very first Pokemon with a new Gen 4 evolution. Now, if you look at the stats between Togetic and Togekiss, it's like night and day. Togetic is bollocks, and Togekiss is actually amazing. So, I'm happy to say that finally, Togepi gets its day in the sun with... Oh, Shiny Stone is post-game? Oh my god, this thing's horrible! Ugh! Ugh! Awful! Awful! So here's the thing, this thing got nerfed. Because the e eggs now hatch at level 1. So you got nerfed by 4 levels, which isn't that big of a deal, it's like 2 battles. But yeah, you get the mystery egg from the dude in Violet City. It probably hatches by about the time you walk to Goldenrod, and then you get a level 1 Togepi. No. Honestly, don't even wait for it to hatch. Just crack it early and get a head start on your breakfast. That's my recommendation. Uh, the one saving grace, not quite serene grace, but saving grace, is that, like, the cap for... Togepi is way higher. In the post game, with finally with the evolution, yeah, Toga Toga Kiss is really good. But the game's over by that point. You need Rock Climb to actually get the stone, which is like right before Mount Silver. And by that point, like it's basically as if this Pokemon didn't exist until Kanto, because Toga Tick is just horrific. I'm sorry, Toga Tick, and Togepi. Anything to say in defense of Togepi? Can't you win the stone in Pokeathlon? That's post-game only.
Togepi is cute, though. Sadly, doesn't count. Extra sensory bumps it up to C. We'll put it above Iglybuff. Because at least you don't have to go out of, out of your way to get this. It's just given to you. And it is a normal type that starts with extra sensory. So it's okay against Morty if you leveled it up. That's about it. It's not getting out of D. Sad. Also, what's up with the name? So... Toge Toge is how you say spiky in Japanese. Should we give it a different English name? Do English speakers know what Toge Toge means? No? Whatever, just leave it how it is. We don't we don't we need to translate it, it's fine. And yeah, it's not even a fairy yet, sadly. And yeah, it's not even a fairy yet. Uh no, Shiny Stone is post game. Yeah, like Toge de Maru. Yeah, Toge de Maru is Toge Toge for spiky and Marui for round. And they just don't translate it. Whatever. Sounds cute. It's fine. Just leave it. It's not even that spiky. A little spiky. Yeah, top of D for Togepi. Sad. I don't get why the Gen 4 stones are post-game. I don't know either. I guess we'll talk about Serene Grey so people stop mentioning it. We'll, we'll see Togetic. You also have to get lucky. Make sure that... All right, so you also have to be skilled enough that you actually get the Serene Grace one. Because if you're 50-50 the hustle, well, it's even worse. Serene Grace is obviously a good ability, but with Togetic stats, no. Bad. Pikachu isn't translated either. No, it's not. Because Pikachu is Pika Pika for like spark, and Choo Choo is the sound that uh, mice make. It's basically like squeak. So it's like spark squeak. I mean, if you get Hustle, I mean, I guess you win at Hustle Culture, right? Eligible to become a Slugma male, but no, I don't think you want to do that. Okay. We got a while to go. Okay. Sand Shrew. Very solid physical stats. Okay, let me just make... I think this thing does not actually learn dig. <laughs> no luck, only hustle. Okay, that's actually pretty funny. Uh, I think we're, gonna, we're actually going to redo that for that. Um, so here we go. <clears throat> now, you might notice with these ability choices... Okay. So, for your abilities, you can either get Hustle or Serene Grace. Now, you might think that Serene Grace is the better choice, but that's only if you want to rely on luck. A true Slugma male knows that it's all about the hustle, right? It's up to you. Get on that Slugma male grind set and you can make your dreams happen. It's a lie, by the way. Serene Grace is way better. And if you get unlucky and get Hustle, this thing's even worse. Sad. Alright, that's it for that. Uh, I think Sandshrew is... I, I think Sandshrew doesn't actually learn Dig. I remember, like, being shocked by it. I think, like, its best level up ground move is, like, Sandthoom. Yup. What the hell is this? <laughs> Absurd. Sandshrew. Very solid physical stats, which you can use for dig. 
which you don't learn by level up. What? Your first stab ground move is a level 27 sand tomb. So good for your Gara cosplay, right? Desert Coffin! But uh, if your actual playthrough, I don't know, man. Good typing, decent physical stats, decent availability, but kind of slow. Eh, well, I'm thinking like top of C, maybe. Stab ground moves are pretty good. Why doesn't it learn dig? I think if it actually like started with dig, I'd probably put this at low B. But given that you have to actually use your dig TM on this, I don't know. Yeah, you can get the dig TM early. You 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 can have the dig TM by the time you get Sandshrew, but I don't know. Cheese doesn't know about TMs. What do you mean? It's in National Park, bro. I'm saying that it's not worth using it on this. Yeah, C for crap moveset, basically. Wait, where is Sandshrew in HGSS? I think it's, uh... You get in the Goldenrod Game Corner? In one of the versions, you can catch it in the wild. In the other one, you can get it in the Game Corner. So it's not... It's not version exclusive. It, like, kind of is. Oh, Union Cave. Okay. So, yeah, that's way before... That's way before the Dig TM. So what are you going to be doing until then? Scratching? Level 9 rollout. Wow, Fury Cutter. Look at that. Wait, this is Gen 8. Scratch. Yeah, you're going to be scratching. Sad. Nah. I think top of C. <laughs> Good use for that mud slap TM. I think... Did they remove it? I think they removed Mud Slap. Yeah. And you can't even use Mud Slap because one, it's special, and two, it doesn't even exist. Uh, they removed the Mud Slap TM. So, by the way. That's another nerf to Chikorita. Say goodbye to your coverage moves. No mercy. I think that's enough for Sandshrew. Okay. Ekans. Complete garbage. Horrible typing. Horrible moves. Horrible stats. What else is there to say? Good ability. Intimidate's okay. Uh, not good enough, though. It's unacceptable. W why would you ever use this? I guess if you're doing a Jesse cosplay. That's about it. Next. At least it evolves into Seviper. Good joke. Okay. Let's talk about the better snake, Dunsparce. D for Dunsparce. I do actually think it's better. <laughs> That's not true. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, it is. Tsuchinoko real. So Dunsparce. Maybe one of the most beloved Pokemon ever? I think everybody loves Dunsparce. It's really, really bad, though. Yeah, it's actually worse than Ekans. So it's super rare. You gotta go into Dark Cave, walk around for the 1% encounter. What's your reward? Dunsparce. 
I, there's a reason why it was my choice for small normal. Wow. I mean, it may have lost the battle. I, I mean, it may have also lost the war. But at least it won the hearts and minds of the people. Everybody loves Dunsparce. Uh, except for Game Freak, apparently. When will they buff this thing? Awful. But very, very cute. Anything else to say about John Sparks? <laughs> Dunn Sparks isn't bad at all with glare plus Serene Gray's headbutt. Sounds pretty bad to me, bro. Yeah, for everybody saying, like, what about power flinching with Dunsparce? What about one-shotting with an actual move? How about that? Pretty much any time a Pokemon has a, a combo, so that would be, like, Defense Curl Rollout, uh, Sleep Move Dream Eater, people will point out and be like, what about the combo? It's bad. Combos are not good. <laughs> because they're taking twice as long to do something you could be doing in one turn with an actual move. Stop talking about combos. Unless you're talking about the snack. Those are pretty good. Jeez, the stats are pretty good for a mon you get before the first gym. Dunsparce looks huge on Vigun because it's 411? Okay. I mentioned it, but keep in mind, this is a 1% encounter. You're going to be spending forever to actually find this thing. I think it's worse. Hi, Cheese. I like your Chikorita cosplay. Thank you. Okay. It has a 90% encounter rate on Rock Smash, but then you need Rock Smash. And by then, that's like way past the first gym. Like, people saying you can get this through Rock Smash? Sure, but then you need Rock Smash, so that's way, way later. You gonna be using Dunsparce then? The only argument for Dunsparce not being in the dumpster is that you can use it for the first gym, but to do that, it's gonna be the 1% encounter. No. Rock Smash is after the first gym? Yeah, the dude on the route gives it to you, right? You can get by. S oh, you can get it if Hiker Anthony calls you? Rock Smash team is after Sudowoodo. I have a question. I wasn't here for the beginning part of the stream and was curious which starter is better, Cyndaquil or Totodile? I think Totodile is actually better. But because this game basically forces you to get, or at least encounter, Red Gyarados, I think Cyndaquil is actually better. Because you can just use Red Gyarados. I, no I normally wouldn't do that, but it's like a story encounter, so you're guaranteed to meet this thing. Oh, 
All right, we'll just do one more take here so we can be done with Dunsparce. So there's, there's a raging war about Dunsparce not being that bad because you get to use these stats, wow, by the first gym. If you want to use it by the first gym, you have to get the 1% encounter. It's a much higher encounter with Rock Smash, but to get Rock Smash, you have to beat the first gym. Sad. Okay, we're done with Dunsparce. Mareep, fan favorite. People love this thing. I love this thing, which is why it pains me to put it at like the top of B. Mareep, unfortunately, has been massively, massively nerfed by Gen 4. It's too slow, which is a problem because there's no more stat XP, and the Boxing League has been cancelled. Very sad. This used to be able to fire punch. It used to be able to get Thunder Punch immediately as soon as it got its flipper arms at its evolution. The only thing this is, is a slow electric attacker. It's not that good, guys. It's not that good in Gen 4. It was much better in Gen 2. It got a huge nerf. They sheared off all of its stats. Very sad. It's not slow. Have you guys played this game? Look at this. Fifty-five. Very slow. Like, this is literally just a Thundershock. Up until you can get Discharge. Massively nerfed. Like, for, th for the Mareep fans rioting, look at this level up move pool. It's awful. It's awful. You get electric moves? N no stronger electric move than Thundershock until you evolve to Ampharos, by the way. And then you get Discard, which is pretty good. And then eventually you get Signal Beam. Okay. What TMs can we get? Eventually, you can get the Thunderbolt TM. That's way later. Focus Blasts. That's an option. 70% of the time, it works every time. That's about it. Oh, and you get Power Gem. A level 59. Thunderbolt TM is right after Morty. Is it not Surge in this game? We can check here. That's really obnoxious. It's TM20... Uh, TM24 this is what we want, right? HGSS. Goldenrod Game Corner for 10,000 coins. Nah. Or Cerulean Cave. Well. So it's basically buyable with a lot of money. Yeah, Charge Beam is what you get. That sounds closer to what it should be. Does it even learn Charge Beam? Oh, it does. 50 base power. Ugh. Static might help? No. 
Is everybody okay with high B for Mareep? Honestly, high B is kind of generous. You don't need Thunderbolt. Discharge is enough, but you don't get Discharge until level 34. If this were still Gen 2, I would put it top of A. But unfortunately, a, a big victim of the changes to the game. Thirty four is like mid game, yeah. Thirty four is basically Olivine City, about where you'd get there if you go to Olivine first. Oh, and apparently you can you can delay your evolution one level with Flaffy to get discharge at level thirty one. Then you miss Thunder Punch, but I mean you'd rather have discharge anyway. So much Mareep cope. I think people have accepted that it's not going to make it to A this time. Okay, I think we're done with Mareep. Uh, although last thing, uh, we'll mention it here. So if you're ever wondering why in the world Mega Ampharos is a dragon type, uh, it's because the Japanese name of Ampharos is Dendu, which means electric current, uh, but it might also mean electric dragon, so that's why it suddenly regains its luscious locks and becomes a dragon. There is actually a reason, but it doesn't make any sense to us, and they never explained it, but that's why. Claire should have had an Ampharos? <laughs> oh, I I mean, Megas weren't a thing yet, right? Why no Tail Glow? I don't know. It would make sense, but probably... Uh, yeah, actually, I don't know. Alright. Whooper! Another fan favorite. People love Wooper and Quagsire. And you know what? It's got some feet. So I think it's actually able to waddle out of the C tier. And we're going to put it about here. Go ahead and riot. So Wooper and Quagsire. Insane typing. One of the best in the game. Amazing stabs. The stats are horrible. The stats are so bad. So why is Wooper and Quagsire, why are they, so why are Wooper and Quagsire in B despite having amazing typing and stab? Look at it. I zoomed in too much. I guess I'll just zoom in in editing. So why are Wooper and Quagsire in B despite having amazing typing and good stabs? Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. I want all of you to look at it. 35 base speed. Not even 100 attack. Sad. You don't get physical water moves until the end of the game anyway. There you go. That's the the Quagsire analysis. Is that Qua Yeah, this this is this is Quagsire. This is not Wooper. This is Quagsire. But I think 
I have a feeling that Quagsire doesn't really mind that it placed so poorly. I didn't even place poorly. But I have a feeling that Quagsire is going to be just fine. Look, look at that face. He doesn't care. Anything else, anything else for the whooper line? I think low B is fine. This is way too slow. Japanese name has anything? About whooper or about Quagsire? I think that's enough for Whooper and Quagsire. Okay. Ghastly. Absurd stats for a stage 1 Pokemon. And Gengar is, of course, incredibly powerful now that it has access to both of its uh, offensive stabs as special types. Or right, that's wrong. Um, Ghastly. Uh, actually, amazing stats, even as just a Ghastly, and Gengar has even better stats, and it can finally use its stab types with special moves. Sounds like an S Pokemon to me, right? I, I, almost... <laughs> so, there's one huge, 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 huge issue with Ghastly. What the hell is this? Look at it! Look at it! I want all of you to look at it! It's so sad. You're- you're licking until level 15. And then you get Nightshade. Well, that's not much better. At level 29 you get Shadow Ball, that's pretty good. Yeah, yikes. <laughs> uh, yikes. <laughs> uh, can you be saved by TMs? I mean, not early enough. If, if it wasn't for this, uh, this would be an easy S. Easy S. But no, unfortunately. It's basically Magikarp. It's basically Magikarp. You have to invest into it. But if you do, uh, it's really good. And hey! You levitate now, which is really nice. Uh, but if you were thinking that you could maybe cheese Whitney uh, because you're a ghost, uh, unfortunately... Uh, that mill tank, it's scrappy, so you're still getting the stomp, getting the hoof. Uh, you, you can't escape that. Uh, Morty still gives you the Shadow Ball TM, yeah. So, you could just go ahead and give it Shadow Ball after Morty, but by then you're going to be really underleveled, right? So, it, I would say, Ghastly, it's a good investment opportunity. Because Gengar is... Also, an excellent uh, target for all of your TMs. You can give it, like, Thunderbolt, Psychic, Sludge Bomb, uh, Shadow Ball. Really, really good. But just a huge dud stage. Until at least level 15, where you can't do anything. I mean, you can damage yourself. Wow, you don't even need a TM to do that. The utility. <laughs> And yeah, you've also been banned from the boxing circuit. No elemental punches either, unfortunately. But it's not that big of a deal. Anything else to say about Ghastly? It's probably going to be a low A Pokemon by the end of this. There's not going to be that many Pokemon in A. I think that's it for Ghastly.
All right. Unknown. We don't need words to describe this, right? We just need one letter. You guys know what letter. Go ahead. Type it now. Act actually spam it because uh, that I'm, I'm going to put the chat in the uh, in the premium. So just F. Just, just Fs. Nothing but Fs, please. Gaze upon the unknown analysis. Here it is for you right here. One letter, that's all you need. This is how good unknown is. F! 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 Crocker's favorite Pokemon. F! Yeah. I mean, it's the worst Pokemon in the game, right? That's, it's the worst Pokemon in the game. There's nothing else to say. Awful. Uh, only hidden power. Uh, even in the best case scenario where your hidden power happens to be max power and it happens to be super effective against the enemy, look at these stats. What are you going to do? Nothing. That's it. F. Beyond redemption. Unsalvageable. But hey, it still has better stats than Curlia. Okay, thank you. That, that's enough, enough effing. But yeah, I mean, this is the worst Pokemon in the game. <laughs> it's... No, it's 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 honestly it's not better than Ladyba. It's not even better than Ladyba. Hey, she's back on the PC to watch this along and give opinions. I fell asleep during the beginning of the stream, but I'll watch the edit. Welcome back. I th you're in Europe, right? So yeah, it's very late for you. I guess we'll we'll mention even if this even if this even if this thing had super even if this thing had the Legends Arceus super hidden power that's always super effective, that means you do two damn. That means you double damage, right? One times two? I'm not impressed. Alright. Alright, it's time. He's, he's even on camera. Onyx! I mean, it's, it's really bad. But... Despite our turbulent history with Onyx, we are impartial, okay? It's not the worst Pokemon in the game. It's not even close. I mean, it's D, right? It's, it's awful, but... Honestly, I think it's better than these Pokemon, so... There is the scam Rocky trade in Ecruteek. You should definitely just use a Geodude. I mean, you caught a Geodude, right? But you can use Onyx. It's not the worst thing ever. It does beat Faulkner. And, like, 45 attack, I mean, it's a joke, right? But for the first gym in the game, it's a less funny joke. And you can get Steelix, who is still really bad, but it's not, like, meme bad. It's just not good. So that is my impartial review of Onyx and Steelix. I think it's, like, a top of D Pokemon. Uh, Metal Coat isn't until post-Elite 4. You could actually steal a uh, Metal Coat from uh, enemy Wild... Uh, you can actually steal a Metal Coat from Wild Magnemite, and if you caught a Caterpie, and you have those creepy compound eyes, it actually increases the held item rate of Wild Pokemon. So you can do that, catch the Magnemites, or just steal it from them with Thief. So it is possible to get a Steelix earlier than post-game. It's not good, though. Uh, you can also get Metal Coat from the Pokeathlon. You can catch Steelix in the wild? It's really late, though.
You can catch Steelix in the Cliff Cave? That's the new area, right? Steelix! We're looking it up. Are we? Hey, computer, please. The computer doesn't even want to look up Steelix. Here we go. Uh, we want HGSS, right? Cliff Cave. Two percent encounter. Oh. Well, look at this in Cliff Cave, uh, one of the new areas leading to the Safari Zone. There's a two percent encounter for a wild Steelix. Uh, it doesn't change anything, but I mean, it's neat. Oh, you can repel trick? Oh, yeah. And it's the highest level thing in the cave at 23. So if you have a level 23 Pokemon, you can use repel. And then the only Pokemon you'll encounter will be Steelix. What a find. No. Like, I think people are, like, people are being a little delusional, right? Steelix is better, but it's still a defensive Pokemon that will always go second and has 70 base attack. No. Like, we're already being pretty generous with this, okay? Is it really worse than Pidgey? Yeah, I think so. Pidgey has a speed stat. <laughs> Jasmine Gift Steelix? That's like post-game, right? That doesn't count. I'm keeping- I'm- uh, I'm reading everything right now. Isn't it like an insane side quest to actually get Jasmine Steelix? Guys, I'm not promoting Steelix because you can get the Jasmine Steelix that beats Red's Pikachu. I'm not scared of Red's Pikachu. This is ridiculous Onyx lobbying. We're done, okay? It's a top of D Pokemon. That's it. Honestly, I think you should put Pidgey to D or Steelix to C. I don't think Pidgey, who uses Gust until 30s, is better than Steelix. I think it is. What is, what is, what is, what is this? There's so many better options this thing. I will not stand for this Onyx propaganda. All right, yeah, enough with Steelix. Okay. Bell Sprout eventually evolves into Victory Bell. More like Defeat Bell, right? It's okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a grass type. Needs a Leaf Stone, which is really annoying, but you can get one. It is possible. Just gotta use Chaos Control and go to the Pokeathlon on the right day. And your reward is eventually a Victory Bell. 
I mean, it's a grass poison type. I don't have that much to say. At least you get it early. Apparently they like this thing enough that they built a whole tower for it. I don't know why. But yeah, for all the reasons we went into great depth about in another video, grass types are just balls in Johto. And this is a grass type, so there you go. Bad. But it is offensively minded, so it's not bad bad. A single bad. Put it in C. Any objections to Bellsprout here? No, okay. Hopip! Very cute. Unholy. This thing is horrendous. It's like grass type condensed into the most annoying orb of all time. This thing is useless. That is, I think, the best description of it. It's useless. So, to begin with, it can only hop, splash, that's it. It does not even attack. And then once it actually learns moves, it still doesn't attack. The only thing this thing ever does is flit around, spread in powders, wasting time. So, you can use it to stall your opponent. Your opponent is a computer, okay? Is your opponent going to get annoyed? No. You are. The player. Why would you use a Pokemon that annoys yourself? Horrific. Horrific. Like, the only thing you can do with this thing is Leech Seed Powders. It takes forever! It takes forever for worse results than just attacking. I don't think so. If you enjoy it, if that's how you want to play the game, go ahead. For my criteria, to the depths. Awful. Very cute, though. Bad. Bump it past Ladybug? No, I think Ladybug is better. Like, you know things are dire? Like, you know things are dire when an advantage that Ladybug has over you is that it tackles earlier. Horrible. Hopip's not going anywhere. Jump Pluff's utility is better than Ledian's inability to do anything? What utility is this? You gotta, you gotta level up for these powders. And then what? You, you do nothing. This is useless. You have to wait until level 43 before you can even defeat yourself and bring in a better Pokemon. And this is on Hoppit, by the way, so it'll be even later for Jump Pluff. Sad.
What is this hop-hip lobby? No, it's terrible. Jump Bluff is fast? Fast sleep? Who cares? <laughs> like, you have to invest in it to actually evolve it. And then get the fast sleep. Worthless. Yeah, Butterfree does fast sleep better than Jump Bluff. It's not even that fast, but it's definitely better. Hop Up's not moving. Good idea, make a lower tier only for Hoppet? I mean, it's better than Unknown. Alright, we're done with Hoppip. So Hoppip can put things to sleep and it's kind of fast. Paris S tier. Alright, Paris! How do they say it? It has like a certain way to say it, right? Paras! It gets Spore. It's really slow. Its stats are really bad. Its typing is really bad. Sounds bad to me. It's better than these guys. Yeah, I think it's better than Weedle. These stats are so bad. So, the thing is, you're always gonna get hit because you're super slow. And your typing sucks, so you're gonna die. But if you don't die, maybe you can use Spore. That's about it. Horrible. Good suggestion. Parasect, give it Spore, give it False Swipe, then catch a better Pokemon. Shouldn't be too hard. I'm gonna get an angry missive from Mr. Macron for slandering his capital city. You know what? It deserves it. You should be ashamed. Dry skin Parasect in this game? I think so. It doesn't help, though. Yeah, it gets dry skin. 5x weakness to fire because of dry skin? It's 8x, right? Because it doubles each time. Hopip should be above Ladybug and Par- What is this Hopip lobby? Hopip is horrible. It, it literally cannot do anything until at least level 10. At which point it starts tackling. No. It's just 5x, it doesn't double fire damage, this is dry skin, right? Oh, it's 25% more damage. You're right. I can't believe I have to defend Ledian against Hopip. Here we go. We'll look at Letty Buzz well.
So people are saying Hopip should be above Lediba because Hopip can eventually be a kind of fast sleeper. So Hopip does literally nothing until level 10, right? It can only splash. What can Lediba do? You can tackle from the very start. Is this the right move set? Oh, here we go. So Hopip completely useless until level 10. It can only splash until then. What can Lediba do? It starts with tackle. Wow. You can supersonic. It's horrible. You get Comet Punch at level 9. So average three hits, that's like a 50 base power move. A little bit more than that. Off of like 20 base attack. Obviously, this is all atrocious. But it's something. Hopip can get Bullet Seed and have a slightly better multi-hit. Bullet Seed is still 10 base power. It's worse. It's 25 now, but it used to be 10 per shot. We're done with Hopip. Are the outlines of yellow for HD exclusives? Yeah. Well, we'll we'll do a poll now. Listen to that. That's it, and we're not going to talk about it anymore. Uh, I have to, I have to actually set it up. So while I'm typing it. Please consider joining the Discord. Link in the description. Uh, and if you're, for some reason, not subscribed to this uh, secondary channel, I don't even know how you found this, uh, but if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing because we're almost to uh, a thousand subscribers, at which point we can get back custom emotes. Uh, so how do I phrase I'll say, should Hopip be above Lediba? So pay attention to the phrasing and make sure you don't uh, vote for the wrong thing. There we go. Okay. And we're just going to leave that for like a couple entries and we'll come back to it. Enough. All right. Who's ready to take a swim? It's time to dive into the C tier. I, I really can't think of a Pokemon more C tierish than <laughs> Poliwrath and Politoed. Well, there you go. They're water types, so I mean, that counts for something. It counts for more than C. You get to be SEAC. And Polyrath has two types, so I guess it's a, li a little bit better. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna head off these defenses right now. Oh, but they've got balanced stats. Balanced means bad, okay? I don't want balanced. I want specialized. Specialized in attacking. Are they specialized in attacking? No. So they're bad, but they're not that bad because they're water types. That's about it. Anything to add to these guys? Are we covering the Gen 4 evolutions? We will, yeah, when we get to them. Wouldn't Politoed be good with Drizzle? It doesn't get Drizzle until Gen 5. There's no Drizzle. Uh, Polyrath move pool kind of sucks, though. We'll check what it gets. Gen 4, right? 
four. Boop. Oh, it's a stone ev. Oh, right, it's a stone. It's a stone, Luigi. It's a stone evolution. Wow, level up dynamic punch. What TMs? Brick break, but that's frontier. Wow, rock smash. Submission. <laughs> Focus punch, you're never doing that in game. Brick break is way too late. I guess you can rock smash. Toad greater than Wrath for stronger surfs. Let's look at their stats. So this is before the stat buffs. So we're going to be looking at this. And Poly Toad. Got to make sure to spell this right because it's like uh, the feet. Like the toes on your feet. So Poly Toad has 20 more special attack. All right, so this might be an imported cheese first. We're going to put Politoed above Polyrath, even though it's a monotype versus a dual type, because Polyrath has only 70 special attack. Politoed has 90. I mean, they're both pretty bad. Why does that actually matter? What about the fighting stab moves from Polyrath? He doesn't get any. He, he doesn't get any, except for Rock Smash. <laughs> 40 base power uh, until the battle frontier at which point you can get brick break and then you can use that meaty 85 base attack c to the max <laughs> low tide i don't like these guys but it's kind of cute i don't know i'm not impressed also Polyrath is a stone evolution, so that's really annoying. And Polytoad is a trade evolution with King's Rock, so that's really annoying. Just annoying all around. Submission. 90 of a stat being bad? Yeah, it's not very good. It's very whatever. I wouldn't call it good. It's okay. Anything else to say about these two? Okay with this ordering and in C? Okay, well how many how many viewers do we have? 140, wow. Uh, and I think... How many is it now? It, like, doesn't update correctly. 143? Okay. Uh, and we have 89 votes. It's probably enough, right? Because I imagine not everybody's going to vote. So I can go ahead and end the poll. I don't think I can actually see the results yet. Uh, end poll. Okay, so 58% say Hopip is worse than Lediba, and 41% say it's better. So, Ripperoni Hopip. You might be able to fly, but you're still at the bottom. It's over. Is water fighting a good combo? It would be if it actually got any fighting moves.
All right. Finally. Time for some Chad gameplay. Red Gyarados. The, the pieces have all come together. It's Gen 4. We've got physical water moves. Eventually, we have to get to the actual Waterfall HM. We've got Ice Fang. We've got Intimidate. And what's the worst part about Magikarp? The fact that you have to raise, raise it through the Magikarp stage, right? And what's the worst part about Gyarados? The fact that it starts as a Magikarp, right? And you have to go through the babysitting effort of raising it up? What if the game just gave you a free Gyarados? What if it was level 30? Perfectly appropriate for that point in the game. It's mandatory. You have to meet this thing. You better catch it. Why? Because it is in contention for the best Pokemon in the game. This thing is outrageous. It's so good. Is it better than Cyndaquil? Uh, maybe not, but it, it's really, really good. I, why aren't you catching this thing? You should. Look at this. It, it, can you say no to this face? Just look beneath the filter. It's Chad. I even put Chad's teeth in there. You have to really look, but uh, they're there. The worst part about it is that the shiny animation takes a bit of time. It's, it's a little annoying. But yeah, amazing. Amazing. I wish you got this earlier. But it's still fine. <laughs> Incredible Pokemon. What other kind things can I say about it? I don't know. Anything bad to say about it? No, right? Gyarados may be great, but Unknown is still better. I don't know about that one. Red Gyarados worse than the level 50 carp? It doesn't get Waterfall until post-game. A Waterfall is late, but I mean, you can still surf. Like, it's okay. The worst part about Gyarados is that you don't get to catch it in Cherry Grove. Top one, no question. I don't think it's the best, but it's up there. What's this level? If I don't mention the level 50 Magikarp, somebody's going to in the comments, right? So we should probably mention the level 50 Magikarp. So where is this Magikarp? If you surf on Route 43. Oh wow, it actually goes to Johto. And we look at the surf encounter table. Not fishing, surfing. 15 to 24. Oh, this is GSC. Uh, Gen 4. Oh, you get the, the chance encounter for a level 50? Oh, and then you miss the level up moves? You should tear Magikarp too. Heart scales exist. There's one heart scale you can get before post game. And you can repel for a guaranteed encounter? Yeah, that's true. We'll mention it. I left for a bit. Can anyone in chat tell me why Gyarados is ranked less than Cyndaquil? Because you start the game with Cyndaquil, that's why. Alright, so we'll do this. If using repels to encounter level 50, it means you have a level 50, alright? No, you just have to out-level the other Pokemon on the route that aren't level 50. You don't need a level 50.
But let's say it's not chat enough. You, you don't want level 30. You want level 50. They say that levels in Johto are too low. Well, what about this? Go to Route 43. Slap on a repel with a Pokemon that's higher than level, like, 26. And then the only thing you can encounter... Where is it? <laughs> is a level 50 Magikarp. And then you can rare candy it. And then you've got a level 51 Gyarados. The chat is out of control. Give it some TMs. Is Kanto being counted as post-game for HGSS? Yes. There's a remove reminder in Gen 4? Yeah, it's in Blackthorn City. Any reason it's below Syndical? Because you start with Syndical. Didn't I just say that? I just said that, right? Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, once you catch Gyarados, it's better than Cyndaquil, but you don't start with Gyarados, guys. I imagine most people are not even going to try this, but you can. Uh, getting to level 51 Gyarados. You think level fi you think level 51 Gyarados should be number 1? Fine, with level 51 Gyarados, we'll put it above Cyndaquil. Blue level 51 Gyarados? I can't actually add things to the list. Is that enough for Gyarados? <laughs> What's better than a level 51 Gyarados? A level 52 Gyarados! Why strength? Why not return? The GB Zard. You have to leave, but you're because your friends want to hang out. Well, thanks for joining us. Do we have return? Yeah, you get return in Goldenrod City. Has to be Sunday, though. Oh, because you have to raise its friendship? Oh, okay. I guess you can just delete strength. Okay, we'll mention that. So for moves for the level 51 Gyarados, because you miss all the level up moves for Gyarados, you can just give it Surf and you can have Choice Specs. And then you can give it Strength. I, I, both those moves aren't that good, but you can't quite use Return yet because you don't have the Friendship. And then you can just delete the HMs later once you get Return and uh, Waterfall, which is coming up kind of soon. You just got to go a little bit 
uh, to Blackthorn. And then you can move Reminder Ice Fang. And then you can give it an Earthquake. Seems like a pretty good Pokemon. And don't worry about obedience, because if you catch the Pokemon yourself, uh, it'll always obey you. And you, you have like seven badges by this point anyway, or potentially, so you don't have to worry about that at all. Okay, that's everything for Gyarados. We're moving on. Move Reminder Dragon Dance? You don't need it. Why do you need to boost your stats? You, you already kill everything. <laughs> Alright. Slow Bro and Slow King. People are going to be really upset at this. They're stuck in the sea. Pretty good typing. Well, not pretty good. Really good typing. Really good move pools. Why are they in the sea? It's in their name, right? Slow. They're so slow. You are never, ever moving first. And maybe we should have talked about this earlier, but we're going to talk now about why being slow is so bad, right? It's not just that it takes longer. There are so many disadvantages to being slow. So let, let's have a hypothetical scenario, okay? Your opponent has three Pokemon. And, and you have these guys. They're, you're moving second. Let's say that you're actually invincible and you one-shot them. That's not going to happen. Well, let's, let's set this up again. We maybe should have talked about this earlier, but we're going to talk about why being slow is so bad. So, let's say that you're against an opponent that has three Pokemon. And you have a fast Pokemon that one-shots them. So, the battle takes three turns, right? You one-shot them, you one-shot them, you one-shot them. You win! Now, let's say that you're slow, like you're using these guys. And let's say that you're completely invincible and you one-shot them, which is not the case, right? But let's say that it is. That same battle now takes six turns because your opponent then gets to take three actions. And of course, you're not actually invincible, right? You take damage that has to be healed. Maybe you get sand attacked and now you missed. Maybe you get status, do you have to heal that later? So many things can go wrong just because your opponents get turns. Don't give them turns. Just kill them. Being slow, very huge disadvantage, right? You don't need to spend all of these extra turns dealing with these rocket grunts. Just use these Pokemon. Huge disadvantage. But, great typing and really good move pools. Why is Slow King better than Slow Bro? Uh, I guess because Slow Bro is actually a fairly high level evolution. It's like late 30s, I think. And Slow King is like a trade evolution with uh, the King's Rocks. You can potentially get it earlier. Stats-wise, I think they're the same, except they have defense and special defense flipped. A slow king has higher special defense, and slow bro has higher defense. Uh, who cares? Uh, it's inconsequential. does not matter. But you get them nice and early. You get them in slow poke well. Alright, what did I miss? Slow poke tails. Don't worry, I already have the intro, th uh, I already have the intro planned. We'll be talking about slow poke tails. Don't worry! Where'd you get King's Rock? You can get a King's Rock in the well or from the Pokeathlon. I'm guessing Regilecki is Cheese's favorite. Mine's a little too fast. This is a bottom heavy list. It's a Johto, man. Oh, you thought Slowbro evolved into Slow King? That's what it seems like. You miss out on moves by evolving it early into Slow King. I'm pretty sure that trade evolutions don't actually affect your learn set. Honestly, just catch them, lop off the tails, and sell them for huge profits. Oh, how do we how do we do this? Honestly, you should just ca catch it. So honestly, pick up a slow poke. Just just lop off the tail. That's all you need. I hear they're worth a lot. Maybe slow king would be better 
if it could actually equip those legendary pants it's been seeking. Speaking of seeking, it's Goldeen and Sea King. Imagine being named a Sea King and not even being top of the C tier. I mean, what is there to say? It's Goldeen and Sea King. Pure, pure C tier. That was easy. All right. Belossum and Vileplume. Well, they're both stone evolutions, but Belossum is slightly less annoying to get because you can actually get the Sunstone through the bug catching contest, which is an upside. Whereas Vileplume, you need the Leaf Stone. So I think Vileplume is actually better than Belossum because, I mean, it's a dual type and I guess you can use poison moves and it's a bit more offensively minded in its stats, but I mean, they're both grass to the max, right? I think they're both worse than Bellsprout. We'll put Blossom a little bit higher just because it's easier to get. But I think if you can get the Leafstone, Vileplume is actually better. But honestly, you shouldn't use any of these. The grass type hates con the grass type hates conti the grass type hate continues. And you know I'm not biased, right? I'm I'm saying these things about my own brothers. Uh, let me see if I'm missing something. Megahorn? I don't know. Oh, Megahorn is about Goldeen, right? Seeking is a despicable Pokemon? Okay. Goldeen might be D tier. It's a water type, though. Isn't it Moonstone? It's Sunstone. Move Bellsprout down, it's worse than these. I think you get Bellsprout earlier. It also has better stats. <laughs> Lightning Rod Seeking makes it have no weaknesses, because grass is a joke. Lightning Rod doesn't uh, absorb electric yet. So it just draws super effective moves to you. It also does nothing in singles. But the lightning rod buff was gen 5. Victor Bell only has 70 base speed and no bulk. Yeah, and it's still better than these two. These guys are even slower. Do I have a spare leaf? I have a whole cabbage. But I don't think I'm going to make a new one. Uh, we're just going to dunk on uh, Goldine a little bit more. So I'm just going to move these down just for a second. I think they were in this order, right? Uh, Goldine, Goldine and Seeking now have the Lightning Rod ability. But it didn't actually absorb electric until Gen 5. So you can go ahead and draw super effective attacks right to you. What utility. Sad. Okay. I'm struggling to think of a single good grass type in Johto. There aren't any. You can stop thinking. It's over. Seeking can save Gara during doubles. Why don't I just use Rhydon, bro? I'm back? Well, I thought you were gone. Alright. Next. I was about to make a joke about Lightning Rod. Cell Battery Seeking, but Cell Battery isn't even until Gen 5. Yeah, it, Lightning Rod is just... It does nothing. There's Arceus Grass if you have an action replay, so that's a good grass type, I guess. Oh, Lightning Rod is a hidden ability? No? 
I'm pretty sure it had Lightning Rod, right? It just didn't get buffed. Well, let's see if that's true. If it doesn't have Lightning Rod, I'll just cut that from the premium. Gold Dean. And we can see if it's, uh... Oh yeah, it is hidden. It is hidden ability. Okay, you're right. So we we have to cut that from the, from the premium. But if you were here live, there you go. All right. So I need your help for this next one. So basically, uh, I I have the spoons. I'm gonna talk about how, uh, you know, I think I'm thinking of giving up. Uh, but you guys, uh, you guys need to encourage me. Okay, not yet. In in a little bit. Um. But uh, as I'm talking about how sad I am and how, uh, how I don't think I can do it anymore, you guys need to encourage me. Say, say that I, I, don't need, uh, I don't need the punches because it's true, I don't. So give it, give it, a, give it a little bit. So uh, don't talk about Alakazam yet. But uh, after I, after I start, uh, start being sad, then go ahead. And I, I do need you to be encouraging, okay? So I'm going to be defeatist, bad ability, but you guys need to be encouraging. You can go ahead and spam Onyx now, I guess. Just, uh, like, clear the chat of Alakazam stuff. I'm back. What's good? We're about to talk about Alakazam in a little bit. I, I, need, I need your energy. All right, here we go. So think about the encouraging stuff you're going to say. Basically stuff like, we still love you, you've still got it. Um, or like, you don't need your fists. Something about that. Okay, here we go. I got to make sure the spoons are in the uh, in the shot. Okay. It's been two generations since I stepped into the ring. I don't know, these... These fists aren't what they used to be. I used, I used to be able to play the mind games, but now... I don't know. I think it might be time... To hang up these old spoons for good. I don't think I've got it anymore. What's this? The people. I hear their voices, the the cheering crowds. You're right. I can do it. Ah, S tier. We can still do it, man. We we never needed the fists. It was all about the spoons all along. Here's the here's the scoop with Alakazam. Nerfed by Gen 4, it's true. That's undeniable. Alexam used to be the best Pokemon in the game. It, it was the best. Uh, and it got massively nerfed. Pretty much the only thing you can do now is stab psychic moves and Shadow Ball. And you know what? That's enough. <laughs> That's enough. There's still a zillion poison types that you just delete. And you get stopped by dark types? What dark types? There's like a rocket executive with a Houndoom and... Karen Town Doom. That's about it. Also, you learn Focus Blast. <laughs> That's... So, 70% chance to not lose anyway. You just gotta focus. You can even Charge Beam. <laughs> so, you have undeniably been nerfed, right? You're way worse. No longer the best, but you know what? These spoons have still got it. Tablespoons. Uh, teaspoons. Uh, what, what's in between those? <laughs> we can do it. Don't worry. Get back into the ring. Somebody commented that Alakazam only has two spoons. I, yeah, okay, alright, I know. But I wanted to maximize the spoons for the, the shot, okay? Thank you all for your, your messages of encouragement. I think we did it. Yeah, I think Alakazam is still uh, definitely a top-tier Pokemon. Like, the stats are just undeniable. You don't actually need the coverage punches, but they were nice. 
Not half the spoon I used to be. Spoon em! You can use wide lens for focus blast? That's only a 7% boost, right? Not very good. Miracle eye. No. Just focus blast them, bro. Alright. Oh yeah, also specs are in this game, so you can you can go spoons and specs. I'm doing that right now. Oh, wonderful. Oh, good line. You're right. Excellent line by Silky Train. Trust your wits, not your fists. Okay, I think that's enough. All right. Drowsy. It's not the worst thing ever, but it, it's very underwhelming. So it is a psychic type in a game with a bunch of random poison types. Because remember, we still have a lot of Gen 1 Pokemon, which are like mostly poison type. And the villainous team is Team Rocket, which has a bunch of Zubats and like Grimers and Coughings and stuff. So if you've got stab psychic moves, that's something. But man... This guy has no spoons. Uh, the stats are like defensive and slow. It's it's not that slow. It's not that defensive. It's just very underwhelming. Why would you ever use this when you could go with Chadabra? Got owned by the special split? Yeah, although it already suffered from that in actual Gen 2. Zubat has bite. Slow psychic types aren't as good as you might think. People, alright, I really have to make this super effective video because getting hit super effectively doesn't mean you die. It means you take double damage, but if you didn't take any damage in the first place, it doesn't matter. Zubat sucks. <laughs> Anyone writing about drowsy at the bottom of B? No, okay. All right, next. Ditto. So Johto is known for having really weak enemies. Ditto transforms into your enemies. And it takes a turn. So in the end you become a bad version of your enemies. Congratulations Hoppip fans. I think Hoppip is better than Ditto. Horrible. Good lord. You become a bad version of your enemy minus one turn that you spent to transform. But maybe you can transform into a good Pokemon. Disgusting. It is cute, though. It has a very cute Japanese name. Metamon! Honestly, Imposter can't come fast enough. Like, we gotta be sus. Right now... They can see right through our disguise. We're just a ditto. <laughs> what if they lead with T-Wave? What? What does that mean? Ditto can tran- Okay, whoa. Alright, well, it's true. Ditto can trans- Well, Ditto retains its HP. So it can transform into Shuckle, and then becomes better Shuckle, because it has more HP. That might make it better than Hoppip. I think it is actually better than Hoppip, but not for that reason.
All right. Pinaco. Slow defensive Pokemon. Well, how do you do this? Pinaco. Slow defensive Pokemon. We'll put it about here. It's better than these guys. Fortress has a surprisingly good attack stat. It's like 90. But what are you actually attacking with? Earthquake? You're gonna use Earthquake on this? No. No. Uh, it does learn Explosion, so it's very good at getting itself out of the way. Incredible. No. You don't need defense. You don't need this thing. Uh, also, shoutouts to being absolutely horrific in Pokemon Conquest. That, like, doesn't factor into this, but... Imagine giving a Pokemon that uses Gyro Ball to a Warlord that is, like, the fastest in the game. What? Why? And I guess since this is the sequel, you, you could say this is Team Fortress 2. I hear that's a good game. Welcome to Team Fortress 2. After nine years in development, hopefully it'll have been worth the wait. Yeah, the best thing you can do with this thing is stab Gyro Ball, moving second. No thanks. But wow, you can absolutely wreck gym leaders with citrus berries if you bug bite it and steal it from them. Ha! You can rapid spin away Koga's Toxic Spikes? How about you kill him before he uses Toxic Spikes? How about that? Okay, next. The Nido Twins. Is Johto part of the Nido Kingdom? Nah, I don't think so. But they're both pretty good. Yeah, I think they're both better than Chikorita. <laughs> so, despite these being stone evolutions, uh, they do actually evolve with the Moonstone. Uh, which you can go ahead, I think we mentioned earlier, you can get it from the Ruins of Alf. So you need Surf. But Surf is pretty early in this game, it's the fourth gym. You catch these around Goldenrod, so you can go to Goldenrod. Get these guys, and then the moment you Moonstone them up into their final forms, they get really good stats for the point in the game where you get them. They have Stab Earthquake, and they have absolutely absurd move pools, right? They can learn pretty much anything that you'd want. So if you decide to invest in them, yeah, I think they are very solid upper B Pokemon. But yeah, this is not the Nido Kingdom. The monarchy has been deposed, unfortunately. But you know what? They weren't completely ousted, right? They're still, like, among the nobility. Not bad at all. Uh, and obviously, Nido King is better than Queen because it has better offenses, which is all I care about. Moonstone is in a waterfall cave between Johto and Kanto, right? Toho Falls? Yeah, there's one there as well. But the earliest one is Ruins of Alf once you have Surf. And we'll mention this here. So if you're wondering why these things are named Nido King and, like, Nido Queen. So Nido just means, like... Twice, or like double, or pair. That's why. And they just didn't translate it. Great, thanks. I assume people thought it had to do with like needle, but no. It's just Japanese words. Is that why it gets Double Kick? So, um, Double Kick actually does use Nido as well. It's uh, Nido Getty. So, yeah, that might actually be why it gets Double Kick. Yeah, nice. Alright. Yanma. One of the worst Pokemon in Generation 2. 
gets an evolution to Yan Mega. And Yan Mega's stats are big. And you don't even need a stone. All you have to do is reach level 30. Oh, okay. How do we do this? Okay. Yanma, one of the worst Pokemon from Generation 2, gets an evolution to Yan Mega, who has amazing stats. You don't even need a stone. It's just a level up move. You just have to level up knowing Ancient Power. What level do you learn Ancient Power? Le level 33? Uh, what are Yanma's stats? Oh my god, this thing's horrible! Ah! You're stuck with Yanma stats until level 33? You can't be serious. Oh, it's awful. Once you get Yan Mega, it's pretty good. Are you gonna get Yan Mega? I don't know, man. I don't know. Yanma's really bad. <laughs> Yanma's really bad, but Yan Mega's pretty good. Speed boost is cool, but you don't really need it, right? You're already fast enough? Like, speed boost is an absurd ability for competitive. In-game, like, it doesn't really do anything. You'd rather use Tinted Lens. And Tinted Lens, it's basically as if Bug wasn't horrible. <laughs> it just lets you use your stab attacks as if you had an actually good type. Yanma itself is also really rare unless you're actually, like, in a swarm. So it's quite a lot of work. And your reward is Yan yeah, Mega, which is okay. Unfortunate. Uh, if Ancient Power was like level 22, like low 20s, I'd probably put this maybe even at the bottom of B, but uh, yeah, it's not. <laughs> You're stuck with complete garbage for quite a while. It's, it, the reason it doesn't go in D is because the ceiling of Yan Mega is actually pretty good. So, saved. Also, we'll go ahead and dispel this now. So, I always see, like, well, why isn't Yan Mega... Um, I guess we'll do this. Uh, we'll, we'll dispel this right now, so people... And we'll dispel this right now, so people talk about when are we gonna get Mega Yan Mega, that's a dragon type. Never. Uh, for the same reason that Mega Ampharos is a dragon type. So Dragonfly, in Japanese, has nothing to do with dragons. It's a completely different word. So the only case where we would be getting a dragon type Mega Yan Mega is the same Bizarro Reverse Universe, where Domestic Cheese is telling a Japanese audience about English names. And I guess we'll film that now. Mega Yan Mega wa nande dragon type ninatte iru no ka? Setsume sasete itadakimasu. E tombo wa ego de ieba dragon fly. Sono dragon wa dragon type no yurai ninatte masu. Go shichou shite kurete arigatou gozaimasu. Go shichou ご視聴してくれてありがとうございます。イウォークに栄光あれ。And you'll know what I said uh, in the premium. But pretty much just what I told you. I'm just explaining why it's called dragon. Why it's a dragon type. Uh, in the reverse world where uh, the English names actually matter. How are Megas called in Japanese? Yeah, it's still Mega. So, like, for example, Mega Charizard would be Mega Rizadon. Sunkern. <laughs> is it better than Hoppip? Yeah, it is. So Sunkern, previously, the literal worst stats in the franchise, but it's since been 
overtaken uh, by base form Wishiwashi, who actually has worse stats, slightly. Yeah, Sunkern is atrocious. Completely unusable, unless you invest the time to go ahead and get that Sunstone by winning the bug catching contest, at which point you can Sunstone it right up into a Sunfloor, who also sucks, but I mean, you can. Sunfloor is better than Hoppit for sure. It's not worth it though. It's bad. But, I guess as a joke, Sunkern has the literal best Pokeathlon stats? I don't know why they did that, but if you want to do the Pokeathlon, which you might want to do for these Evolution Stones, use a Sunkern. So, I mean, that's actually a use. Wow. Congratulations, Sunkern. Sunflora better than Lediba? No. <laughs> Gets Earth Power. Any any Sunkern defenders? I don't think so. Sunkern is Pokeathlon Michael Phelps. Whoever's saying hop about a Yen Mega, you're out of your mind. Who's saying that? I don't think anyone is. Did I mention the Drowsy Machop trade on Drowsy? No. Yanma's worse than Pinaka? No, I think Yanma's better. Well, Yanma's not, but Yanmega is. Sunflora worse than Ditto? You're right, it's better than Ditto. Sunkern Michael Phelps at it? That's a lot of work. Yen Mega has no moves. It's got Bug Buzz and Air Slash, right? That's all you need. All right. Eggs. It's Execute. Uh, it's a stone evolution. That's really annoying. And after doing the egg... And after doing the egg move only run, I never want to see this thing again. So, interestingly, Execute's best stat is defense? Okay. Uh, and then once it evolves into Executor, it actually gets a massive buff. Uh, to its uh, special attack. It's like 125 special attack. Insane. Uh, but how do you actually get the psychic moves, right? You, you pretty much need the TMs. Very unfortunate. But, I mean, 125 special attack is pretty good. It's really slow, though. I think if you can actually leave stone it, it's, uh, it's actually the best of these, like, grass-type Pokemon, but that's because it's really, it's a psychic type. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> and it's really slow. Excruciating Pokemon to train. Sure, I agree. How do we actually get this psychic moves? Hang on here. We're going to check this. Uh-oh. Oh. Psychic TM is... Post game, yeah. Psychic isn't saffron from Mister Psychic, right? So how do we actually get it psychic? So let's see. Execute. Like, like look at these stats. What is this? Uh, Gen four. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right. Upon further review, you don't get confusion until level twenty-seven and psychic until level forty-seven. As an execute, you can't actually evolve up to executor because uh, stone evolutions cancel all of your level up moves, and you don't get psychic until Mister Psychic. So what do you actually do with this thing? 
Nothing, right? It's really bad. It's really bad. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yikes, these eggs have been cracked. Bad, bad eggs. Yanma is worse than Execute? Please look up the moveset. Why is Golding up? Yanma. Four. This is pretty bad. Why air slash and bug buzz? 54 and 57. Wow. Oh, you can get silver win though. Air lace is physical. Oh, you can get shadow ball. That's okay. That's pretty bad. Let's see if it's any different for Yen Mega. Yen Mega. Look at these stats. Pretty good. Gen 4. Eh. I think with Silverwind and Shadow Ball, you're okay. And eventually, once you get Air Slash and Bug Buzz, Bug Buzz, that's pretty good. I think, like, bottom of C is fine for Yanma. Oh, Silverwind is post-game? Oh, never mind. Yeah, it's pretty bad. What moves do you actually use? Bug Buzz should be a 130 base power bug move with no drawback. I think Fire Scizor might be a bit biased. So you're pretty much stuck using Shadow Ball. And there's nothing else you can use. Yikes. Gotta go take out the dogs and sleep. Goodbye, thanks for coming by. Justice for Bug Bluzz. <laughs> Just use Fury Cutter. <laughs> Should we move Yanma lower? It has no moves. It's really bad. And you turn off a sad 76 attack stat? No. Silverwind isn't post game, it's lottery. C is fine for ceiling potential. Yeah, we won't move it. Yeah, and Mega still has a usable attack stat? Okay. I'll probably. I'll just edit in that the moves are really bad then. Okay. Alright. Venonat! People really like this thing. And Venomoth is a really cool psychic bug that is, is not a psychic type for some reason. Uh, it's cool. People like Venonat, and Venonat actually has a better ability than Venomoth, because it actually has compound eyes, which lets it powder much better. Loses that when it evolves to Venomoth. Very underwhelming. Very, very underwhelming. Uh, Caterpie's way better. Uh, even though Venomoth has better stats, uh, Caterpie accesses those stats earlier in the game and at an earlier level. And Venonat has to wait quite a while. Like, the Venomoth evolution is, I think, much later than it should be? Venomoth itself is okay. Nah. If this thing evolved earlier, like level 20, I'd probably actually put it at, like, the top of C. It's like... Yeah, let's see what level Venonat evolves into Venom Venomoth. It's it's quite late. Yeah, 31. Yeah. 
A level 31 evolution is just not cutting it. No thanks. I think that's it for Venonat. Everybody okay with this? Everybody's fine with Venomoth. You can get the Sludge Bomb TM. The Sludge Bomb TM is... Uh, it's on the way to Lake of Rage, right? I think Yanma's better. No, I think Venomoth is better. Has better moves. Okay. Wah, Buffett! People love this thing. I love this thing. It's hilarious. It's literally a punching bag. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> it's awful. So, you can kill things with Wabafet. You can, right? Wabafet deals damage. But to deal damage, you have to take damage. You don't want to take damage. No thanks. No. But it is really cute, and it, it is a very fun mechanic, right, to have a Pokemon that's all about countering. And one thing about Wobbuffet that gets definitely lost in translation, so in English, it's just a punching bag. Uh, but the whole reason, there's like interaction between Why Not and Wobbuffet. So it's actually based on a style of Japanese slapstick duo comedy called Manzai. So it's basically you have two people... And one of them is, like, the straight man, and the other one uh, basically just, like, beats the other guy up. And, like, that's where the comedy comes from. So that's why Wobbuffet always gets beat up. It's, it's part of a Japanese comedy routine that just, like, doesn't exist in the West. And I guess they just gave up on trying to translate that, and they're like, alright, whatever. It's, just, it's, a it's a punching bag. It's fine. So in Japanese, like, the names of Why Not and Wobbuffet are a call and response. It's like, is that so? That's how it is. And in English, only half of that is translated, the Why Not. And Wobbuffet is just a wobbling punching bag. Sad. Hey, cheese, I heard that Wobbuffet was based on a famous Japanese comedian named Truth That. Yeah. It is about Japanese manzai comedy. We'll we'll put there'll be an image in the premium, uh, but we'll uh, we'll go ahead and look it up here. I'll sh I'll show you what it looks like. Not a video, but I'll show you an image. I have to switch my keyboard. Hang on. So it's like this: you have two comedians, and it's basically just like a slapstick duo routine. And very often, like, there is physical contact, so that's why Wobbuffet has to get hit to deal damage back. I think that's neat. Bokken Tsukomi? Yeah, that's what the rolls are called. All right, we are we are going. Uh, by the way, a lot of these down here are basically just going to be stuffed into the unknown dungeon. So it's it's not. It, it looks like we have a ton left, but it's not that many. All right, pseudo Wudo. I guess I should start like that. Pseudo Wudo. It's me. I, I'm a grass type, right? H have I have I fooled you? I've got a leaf, right? So Sudowoodo has surprisingly solid stats, uh, very solid physical stats. It's really slow, though. <laughs> it's really slow. Uh, you should definitely just be using a Geodude, but, I mean, Sudowoodo is not that bad. You're gonna be moving second, but, I mean, you hit pretty hard on the way back. It's okay, and it's available, like, okay, kinda early. In this gen, it actually gets Woodhammer, and no recoil, because you've got that Rockhead. Cool. <laughs> it's okay.
Sudowoodo's move pull is way better than Geodude? It doesn't get stabbed ground, bro. Also, Sudowoodo's Japanese name is hilarious. It might actually be my favorite. So, its Japanese name is Usotsuki, which means fake tree, and it also means liar. Hilarious. Amazing. A+. Plus. But not in the actual tier. I'll give, it, I'll give it a low B. Should have been faster, kid. But I guess trees don't move very fast. <laughs> it's the best grass type in Johto. That chikorita is better. And you get moves, okay, and apparently you get moves like hammer arm, speed drop doesn't matter because you're going second anyway. Sucker punch, okay. Although enemies do tend to use status moves, so you can't always get the sucker punch off. Rock slide is good, and wood hammer is nice, although it is a grass move. Cool moves. You should still use Geodude though. There's a Sudowoodo in a later game that accidentally got dialogue localized. If you talk to it, it shouts lies. It's pretty funny. Frosty Flakes, thanks for coming by. Now you need to TM Rock Slide on Gyarados. That's unfortunate. Or, um, gee, dude, that's unfortunate. He said something nice about Chikorita. I'm going to tear up. But Chikorita's not that bad. For a Pokemon. I mean, look look at the Johto Pokemon. They're horrible. Grass Rock is not that bad typing, though. It's not a grass type. You've been fooled. You can get Rock Blast on Geodude? I don't know. I don't know if you can. But even if you could, it's not that good without Skill Link. And this is before the Rock Blast buff, I think. Learn Sleep Powder? Sudowoodo? No, it doesn't. I don't know if you're talking about Chikorita. But Sudowoodo doesn't. Snivy and Johto, better or worse than Chikorita? Probably worse, honestly. Oh, Geodude gets Rock Blast? Okay. I'd rather use Rock Slide. Is everybody okay with this for Sudowoodo? A rock blast is always 25 BP? Oh, okay. You're gonna do the dub Scyther voice? Yeah, you, you know it. I think we're gonna do that. Okay. Alright. Deep breath. Scyther! Oh, it never works, but... Scyther. We're gonna be... Reaping some souls. This thing is great. <laughs> so, Scyther. Uh, you can get it, unfortunately, only during the bug catching contest, but the base stat total for the point in the game where you get it is insane, right? They just hand you a Scyther. 500 BST. Fast. Strong. And you get Technician in this gen. I like it. I like it. Slice them up. Get them. Hack them. Really good. Uh, and actually, I, I actually think you should not evolve into Scizor, because even though Scizor has better attack, it is way slower, and you can't actually get bullet punch during your normal playthrough, so just leave it as Scyther. Technician wing attack. Scyther gets squashed by Whitney? You catch Scyther after Whitney. So Scizor obviously is way better in competitive because it has a better typing overall. Uh, but Scyther is definitely what you want to stay with for in-game. And you don't even get a stat buff for going to Scizor. Uh, it just rearranges your stats, which is very weird. It's basically Game Freak saying, hey, yeah, we know that uh, Steel is really overpowered. So the main buff from your evolution is that your type gets better.
Oh, you can do the oh, you can do the bug catching contest before Whitney. Oh, I guess so, but you wouldn't fight Whitney with Scyther. Scyther has aerial ace technician. Yeah, it does. I'm just going to look something up for Heracross real quick. That's wrong. <laughs> Hang on. Technician Air Slash and Bug Bite is nuts. Uh, Air Slash is special. And, and a higher base power than 60, so it doesn't work. Bug Bite's good, though. Although it is... You can get Bullet Punch on the move reminder. Oh, okay. It's still not good, though. You should still stay a Scyther. Uh, I wanted to know about Brick Break, not the Mega Horn thing. Gen 4. Oh, beautiful. Okay, yeah. That's all we need. Beautiful. Okay, well, Heracross is uh, after Pinsir. Aerolace has a cool Japanese name, I think. Yeah, Tsubame Gaishi, Reversing Swallow. It's a sword technique. Yeah, it gets, it gets Aerolace. All right. Pincer. No justice for Pincer. Uh, it's way worse than Scyther, but it's still really good. So, Pincer, pretty much the exact same... So, Pincer you encounter in the exact same way as Scyther. It's in the bug catching contest. But, uh, I mean, this thing doesn't get first prize. It has really good stats. Insane attack. Good enough speed. Uh, but the moves suck. It's like, you get normal moves. That's about it. Okay. I mean, you have enough attack that you could just slap return on it and still do a lot of damage, but don't use this thing. I think you have better choices that you actually get earlier. Why is Red Gyarados higher than Cyndaquil? Cyndaquil gets eruption? What? It doesn't need eruption. That Like, Flamethrower already kills everything, and Gyarados is much stronger. All right. Respect, man. How do you know so much about the Japanese origins for these Pokemon? Because I live in Japan, bro. That's why. <laughs> and I look up some of this stuff before I do these. All right. Heracross! I think I said in the Gen 2 list that Heracross would be the best Pokemon in the game if it got fighting moves. It gets fighting moves. I don't quite think it's the best, but it's almost there. This thing is insane. And I'm not just saying that because I've been headbutting trees and I'm feeling a little woozy. The stats that you get on this thing for the point in the game that you get them, it's unfair. There's no other word. It's unfair. 125 base attack in Ilex Forest? Say goodbye to your opponents. Level 19 stab brick break off of 125 base attack before the third gym? Whitney in shambles. That's the reason why she's crying. Annihilated. Annihilated. This thing is absurd. It's time to take bug type seriously. Look at these moves. Level 37 close combat? Level 37 to delete any enemy. That's not a ghost type. Wow. Level 55 Megahorn. Alright, that's kind of late. But you don't need it. <laughs> this is all you need. Disgusting. You can throw pretty much any physical move on this thing and just win the game. Ridiculous. The only reason this is not better than Gyarados is because of the level 50 Gyarados. Otherwise, this would be the best Pokemon in the game. Absurd.
Yeah, it's basically a fighting type that looks like a bug. <laughs> I guess it's also a bug type, but really, it's just a ridiculous fighting type. You get U-turn right after Bugsy? I don't think uh, Heracross can U-turn. Heracross can only learn False Swipe by breeding with Scyther, despite False Swipe being a TM. That's really weird. Well, you don't need it, though, but that is weird. Would the Gyarados disobey, disobey the player? No. Um, no matter what level a Pokemon is, if you catch it, it'll never disobey you. Disobedience is only for traded Pokemon. Okay. I think that's it for Heracross, right? Everyone in agreement? One of the best Pokemon in the game. I don't see any complaints. How far in are we? We are... I'm gonna say about... We're probably two-thirds done. Because the first hour was setting everything up, and a lot of these are just going to be Kanto tier. So we're more... we're more... the list is more complete than it looks like. Alright. It is 11.25 here, so I still have three hours before I have to go to the dentist, so we can definitely finish in that time. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that. Isn't the shiny Gyarados level 30 when you counter at the Lake of Rage? Yes, but there's a way to catch a level 50 Magikarp right before that. Alright. Coughing! And wheezing! <coughs> Bad. Bad. <coughs> it's better than Ekans. Hey, it gets levitating in this generation. That's cool. Uh, what does it actually do to opponents? Uh, nothing. D. Uh, any, anything else to say? D for Dogas. It's the Japanese name. Not S for Smogon, sadly, which is the German name. Weezing is better than this. It's got good special moves. It's got uh, interesting... It, it has a good special move pool. I guess we'll mention that. I, it's got a surprisingly good special move pool, but like, you're not using your special TMs on this thing. No. Uh, the Weezing evolution is also kind of late. Alright, coughing fans. Alright, well, we'll put it bottom of C. Sorry, there's a car alarm outside. <laughs> Dogars! Isn't he from Fire Emblem 1? I gotta wait for this car alarm to stop. It's the big grass police. I'm innocent. Real grading on a curve here. Can't say it's unwarranted. Why are you using poison types anyway? Good question. I guess you're not. Yeah, actually we're moving this back. It's not that good. All right. You can't really hear it? Okay. All right, next. Grimer! Uh, that was wrong. Well, Grimer and Mock. A uh, really late evolution. Poison type. Poison sucks. I think it's Baron Ekans. Actually, no. Ekans says Intimidate. Yikes. Team Rocket, what are you doing? What is this? Horrible. 
No good moves. Slow. Poison type. Okay. Next. All right. Magnemite! Ah, oh, another that's car alarm. <laughs> Alolan looks way better, yeah, but not in this game. All right. Magnemite and Magneton. Uh, but you actually can't get in the zone. Magnezone. Because it's not obtainable in Heart Gold Soul Silver. That's kind of weird. Yeah, you can only actually go up to Magnum, Magneton, but that might actually be better. Because Magneton is actually faster than Magnezone. And you don't really need more special attack. You're strong enough. You need more speed, which Magneton has. Really weird. Uh, anyway, I think Magnemite is, uh, yeah, bottom of B Pokemon. So it's got really, really good special attack and an amazing typing. Uh, because, I mean, I think you're only amazing typing. I think literally the most resistances of any type combo ever. You do big damage, uh, but you do big damage second. Oof. That's too bad. And Mareep is available uh, much earlier, so that's why Mareep is higher. You need the magnet to evolve? No, it's just a level evolution. Just got here. Where are we at? We just did Magnemite. And let me see if I can actually find an image for this, because that's gonna... That's gonna affect, uh... What I say next. Let's see if it actually auto-completes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I will mention this. So Magnemite, Magnemite is basically nothing but a slow, strong special attack, and you have that earlier through Mareep. But speaking of getting in the zone... Uh, there's an ad I always pass by on my way to work for something called Creepy Nuts in the Zone. I don't really know what that means, but that's not a zone I want to get into. Oh, I guess if you just joined us, then uh, we did talk about Poco Walker earlier. We're not counting it. But yes, uh, Magnemite is one you can get earlier through Poco Walker. And I guess there's a little preview. Here's Creepy Nuts in the Zone. Like, this ad I keep walking by. It's real. I have no idea what it means, but yeah, Creepy Nuts can be in the zone. It's an energy drink? I think it's a band called Creepy Zone, and the energy drink is called Zone. It says, to the Invincible Zone, is what it says here. Yeah, Creepy Nuts into the Magna Zone. Alright, I think that's it for Magna Zone. Okay. Voltorb. It's really fast, so it goes first. And then what? I mean, it's a really, really fast electric-type Pokemon that attacks with mediocre electric attacks and nothing else. Top of C, I guess? <laughs> you can Thunder Wave things! Uh, you're sort of forced to encounter those electrodes that you can then catch if they don't explode? There's that. So I guess there's no opportunity cost to getting them? Like... You encounter them for sure. But yeah, this thing has, has no moves. And Magnemite at least does damage with its electric moves. Electro does not. Where do you get Cleffa in this game? You can catch Clef Clefairy in the new Safari Zone. 
You know, by trading a crabby and olivine and get the trade experience. You can also do the. You can also trade for one. Yeah. Uh, you can also tr so you can either you can also trade a Voltorb for a crabby in Olivine City, and that way your experience is also faster. This thing is all about speed, except for when it comes to actually killing opponents quickly. Kind of weak. I think that's it for Voltorb, right? That's actually the only way you can get Voltorb pre-Elite 4 other than the Electrodes and Rocket Hideout. Okay. I think we're done with Voltorb, right? Yeah, okay. Next. Apom. It gets a usable Gen 4 evolution. Uh, and Ambipom actually has very reasonable stats. It's very fast and decently strong. It's a normal type, though. And that's all it'll ever be. Also, I'm guessing because this does take place in Johto, which is in Japan, which does have universal healthcare, uh, it really needs to get those hands checked out because they are inflamed. Whatever. We'll put it like here. Smack some trees. Huh! Catching Apom. Apom sucks, by the way, but uh, once it gets uh, double hit and becomes Ambipom, its stats skyrocket to being usable. But it's still just a normal type. You don't need this thing. Technician double hit is actually stronger than return. Like, barely? For a 10% accuracy penalty. You would use double hit because you probably want to save your return for something better. Oh, it also gets pickup, yeah. You could also use Apom not even for battle. It could be a pickup Pokemon. And pickup is pretty useful. But pickup now scales with your level, so... If you want to get better items, you would have to actually level this thing up. And if you have pickup, that means you don't have technician. And you definitely want technician if you want to actually fight with this thing. Apom is low B at worst? No. I don't like it. Well, let's see when it actually learns double hit. Thirty two. That's pretty late. If it was like level, if it was like low 20s, maybe, but no. No thanks. Oh, Gen 2 learn set? Was I not in Gen 4? Oh, it was modern, hang on. We want Gen 4. Yeah, it's still level 32. I mean, 32 is around Chuck if you are only using Apom. No way. No. I think this is fine. Recheck Voltorb's learn set. Jeez, it's only electric moves, right? Base 100 attack is decent for Johto above Voltorb. That's Ambipom, right? Yeah. Double hit is level 32.
charge him is Voltorb's best move. That's pretty sad. Electric's good, though. Above Voltorb, for sure? All right. Congratulations, Apom. You've defeated Voltorb. You proud of yourself? There we go. Okay. Snubble. Continuing to be snubbed until Generation 6 when it gets the upgrade to becoming a fairy type. So, it's got insane attack. It's, it's really high. Uh, but it's super slow and it's a normal type. So, hey, wow, look at that. I think it's actually better than Apom because you don't have to headbutt trees for it. You can just catch it. And you can just use really strong normal attacks. But you're going second. That's unfortunate. Womp womp. Just just hang in there for that fairy typing, buddy. You're almost there. It gets Intimidate. No, that's true. But Intimidate only matters because it's so slow and it's going to get hit. Sad. Turns into Granbull at level 25. Yeah, like, Granbull has really good attack, but the only thing it can do is normal attacks. You know, Gran Granbull. This thing's hideous, by the way. Evolve Snubble. I mean, that's... What, what is it? Uh, 120? 45 speed. Ugh, 45 speed. Disgusting. Gen 4. Head to butt. I'm not feeling it. Have you ever wanted a Tauros but slow? You know what? We'll, we'll go ahead. Uh, it's not best in show, but we'll put it at the very bottom of B. How about that? Because... Early evolution to a bunch of attack is not that bad. Slow, though. So many Pokemon, Johto Pokemon, just don't have a cool gimmick before abilities and later evolutions. Yep. The lower encounter puts it in C, because it's only a 2% encounter. Sure. We were considering moving it up, because you get a lot of attack at a really low level, but it's a 2% encounter, so no, it's not going anywhere. Alright. Vulpix! Shockingly poor stats? Like, they're not horrible, but they're much worse than you'd think. And you need to get a Firestone to evolve this, which is really annoying. If you didn't pick Cyndaquil, maybe. Bottom of B? So keep in mind that if you Firestone it, you will no longer learn level up moves. But you get Flamethrower naturally at level 24. That's pretty good. And you can also get the Fire Blast TM. It's okay. Cool design. People really like Ninetales. I just wish Ninetales had better stats. It should at least be faster. Yeah, we can check. Volpix. Oof. Gross. Gen 4. Yeah, level 24 natural flamethrower. That's pretty good. We'll move it above Drowsy for the level 24 natural flamethrower. That's pretty good. And then just Firestone it up. But that's all you're ever going to be doing. A flamethrower. Off of mediocre special attack and speed. Eh. It's okay.
Uh, let's check Arcanine. So Arcanine has way better stats, but I don't think it actually gets good moves yet. It gets good moves now. Look at these stats. Beautiful. Oh, this is Arcanine. We have to go to Growlithe. Ooh, better special attack than Vulpix. So you, you have Flame Wheel. You get Fire Fang. Crunch, Flamethrower level 40. This is not the right uh, generation. Level 20 Flame Wheel. Wow, Reversal? That's weird. Crunch, Heat Wave. You do get Flare Blitz, but it's uh, way higher. It's more of an investment. What are these HMs? You can get Dig. That's okay. Iron Tail's not very good. Thief is 40 base power, but it's something. Yeah, these moves suck. <laughs> Alright, so Growlithe and Arcanine. So Growlithe and Arcanine overall, it has better stats than Vulpix. Because it's got insane stats. I don't know why they're so high. I guess because it's the legendary Pokemon. You can give it a Fire Blast TM. You're probably going to want to because if you don't, you're kind of stuck as Growlithe until it actually learns its best moves. Uh, it does get Flare Blitz as Growlithe. That's like level 40. You get Crunch. You can just dig with a TM. Uh, it just really struggles with the moves. But the stats are good. I'm going to say these are comparable. And they're also in different versions, so if you're playing Soul Silver, you can get the you can get the picks. If you're playing Hard Gold, you can get the the K9 Dark. They're both okay. Decent fire type options, uh, but you definitely just want to use Cyndaquil if you picked that. And I believe Growlithe learns extreme speed as it evolves to Arcanine. Oh, and you can move Reminder Thunderfang? Put it over Vulpix for better return? You mean the move return, right? Where's Arcanine? Four. Oh, yeah. And you can't Thunder Punch. I mean, why would you be able to? But you can move Reminder Thunderfang on Arcanine once you get to Blackthorn City. That's pretty good. That's an option that Vulpix doesn't have. I think they're comparable. You could switch these. Stantler. Mediocre normal type. There's nothing exceptional about this thing at all. It's got hypnosis. Maybe it's better than Apom? I don't know. It's so boring. Can anybody think of anything fun to say about this thing? It's hideous, that's true. Doesn't affect the ranking, but yeah, it's very ugly. People are just calling it ugly. Yeah, I agree, though. Weird face. Come on by level up is cool. Alright, I, I think to spare Stantler's feelings, because people are just making fun of it, we're going to move on. It's a mediocre normal type that you can get around the mid-game. You should use Snubble. It has better attack. There we go.
All right. Meryl and Azumarill. We're getting there. We've finally got the physical special split, so we can use physical water moves, and it is possible to get huge power, which gives us a good attack stat. And we're still really, really, really slow without our fairy typing, so I think we're taking a swim. It's worth noting that this thing is also incredibly rare within Mount Mortar. It's not like you can just get this thing for free. You have to actually work to get it. And it is pretty much always going second. It is super duper slow. We're almost there. Okay, we, we two more generations and we get that OP OP dual typing. Hang in there, Meryl. Now, uh, you also can't get Waterfall. You also can't get physical water moves until basically the end of the game. So, you're not getting that physical stat for quite a while. Into the sea with you. Also, people are talking about... People talking about Belly Drum? You're gonna pay half your HP every single battle? No. That's horrible. I thought Meryl was Gen 3? How could you forget that Tracy graced us with Meryl in the anime? Tracy, everyone's favorite character. Oh, that's good. Belly drum, more like a belly flop into the C tier. I think that's it for Meryl. Okay. Diglet dig. Diglet dig. Trio, trio, trio. This used to be Kanto exclusive, but you can now catch it uh, on the route to the new Safari Zone. So you can actually get this uh, by the time you get to Sienwood City. It's really fast, so it goes first. And then what? Uh, ground moves? It's okay. Uh, I'd put it higher than Sandshrew, except you get Sandshrew significantly earlier. Uh, if this thing ever gets touched, it explodes, but, I mean, you should never be getting hit anyway, right? The issue is that you can't afford to get hit, and you're also not strong enough that you knock out things before you get hit. Kind of unfortunate. Just, just gotta make it to level 45 for Earthquake. Can you do it, Diglett? You gotta, gotta really dig in. And maybe you'll get there. Oh well. Anything else for Diglett? Diglett with Choice Band, though? Where are you getting a Choice Band? It's post-game. <laughs> but cheese, Arena Trap! <laughs> Does Sand Slash have a good move set? Nope. Its best ground move is Sand Tomb. But you get it earlier. It has okay physical stats, and you can give it the Dig TM. A uh, Diglett's also pretty underleveled. Okay, next. Is Mankey exclusive in HGSS? It might not be. But I just used the same image, that might be why it's yellow. Let's just check that. Mankey. Well, where's the locations? Ah, oh, here's the locations. Um, 
Yeah, it is. It actually is exclusive. Yes. All right. Mankey. I don't know if I'd give it a... All right. Mankey. I, I don't know if I'd call it a, a prime ape. Uh, I wouldn't... Maybe like a USDA a B rating? Not, not quite prime. Uh, it's okay. I think it's actually the fastest fighting type in the game, which is kind of sad. Fighting types are kind of slow. But you get a fast karate chop. And eventually you get cross chop. Eventually. As in, like, level 41. Okay. It's okay. Fighting is really good on offense, and offense is what you care about. It might actually be better than drowsy. It's okay. Not too exciting, though. I think I would choose to stay as a human rather than return to Mankey. Anything else for Mankey? Better to use Karate Chop than use Vine Whip like Bellsprout. Yes, I agree. Good fighting type not named Heracross. Yes. Mankey dies to Spoon. Good thing you never have to fight them. Alright. Next. Meowth, that's right. Uh, I mean, words, apom. There you go. This is Meowth. It's really fast. Pathetic attack stat. Okay. It gets technician, that's nice. Is it nice enough? No, so we'll, pu we'll put the technicians together. Fast normal type. Okay. Anything else to say about Meowth? I think only the Meowth line learned Payday by level up of all Pokemon ever existed unless Sketch from Smeargle, but maybe that can fill a niche when you need money. Ah, uh, you don't need money though. Well, I guess we'll mention that. So if you're thinking about trying to pay to win with Meowth, you're going to be paying with your time. Because Payday is incredibly slow, and also you don't need it. Like, you would be better off just completing the game and farming the Elite Four than trying to actually get money with Payday. And there you go. I think that's it. I actually do think Apom is better. That's pretty sad. Okay. Alright. Psyduck. Masada's favorite Pokemon. And you know there's no favoritism, because this thing's pretty bad. It's better than Goldeen, though. C tier to the max. Why isn't this a Psychic type, by the way? We're gonna say that every time. Why isn't this a Psychic type? Masada, I want answers. But I think he's actually stepping down as director, so we might never actually get those answers. He's taking the secrets... To his grave. He's not dead. He's just not the director anymore. It's pretty straightforward for Psyduck, right? I think that's it. Golduck has pretty good special attack. Fake news. It has okay special attack. That's pretty funny. Okay. I will read that line. Fake psychic type? What a quack. quack. Good joke. I like it.
I missed the Pichu part. Why is Pichu an unknown dungeon? Uh, because it's Kanto exclusive. Okay. Machop! Eventually, the Machamp! The pieces are in place. We've got no guards here. 100 base power. Stab dynamic punch. That always hits. You get the TM from Chuck. We are blasting. It's really slow, though. If it was faster, I'd probably put it in A. But yeah, you can just eliminate your enemy if they don't resist fighting. I wish Dynamic Punch had more PP. It's, it's kind of annoying that it only has 5. But if you can Dynamic Punch them, you can kill them. Nice. Oh, it's Focus Punch? Never mind. Fake news. It's. I think it's still going to go in B, though. I saw the red fish on the thumbnail. It's in the list, too. Fake news, focus punch is amazing. That's definitely not true. All right, we'll do this. So, all right, Machop. We finally have no guard. No guard, dynamic punch is amazing, right? 100 base power, 100 accuracy, and you get the nice upside of confusion. And Chuck gives you the dyna dynamic punch TM, right? Oh, I have to redo that. I messed up. Machop. The pieces are in place, right? Once you get up to Machamp, huge attack, and no guard dynamic punch. That's a 100 base power stab move, always hits, and it has the confusion upside if they somehow survived. Chuck no longer gives you the dynamic punch TM. Womp womp. So you're just stuck with a 130 base attack. I think you'll survive. Unfortunately, it's really slow. I wish this was faster. And I wish dynamic punch was still a TM. You gotta wait to level 51. Oof. But hey, really high attack stat and stab fighting. It's alright. Uh, you can also trade a drowsy for this, which means that you will level up faster. Which is a very nice bonus. Yeah, with this attack stat, you can just use random physical moves and probably kill your opponent. I just wish you were faster. This guy, he only cares about the arms. Maybe if he had four legs, he'd actually move first. I think that's it for Machop, right? Okay. Okay. Moving on. The Hitmon Trio. The Chan, the Top, and the Lee. So you get a Ty Ruff? Or Ty Rogue, however you say. I think it's Ty Ruff, right? Ty Ruff? In Mount Mortar. But you need Waterfall. And it's really underleveled. And you have to raise it. No. They're just way, way too late. If you didn't need Waterfall, if they just handed one of these to you, and it was like level 20, around the 4th gym, I'd probably say that Hitmonlee is maybe better than Machop. Because uh, it's a little bit faster, and it's also got a really great attack. And Hitmonchan actually gets the elemental punches by level up now. And they are physical, so you can actually use them, that's pretty good. Uh, Hitmon Top just kind of sucks. Oh well. Uh, they're down here purely because of how late you get them. If you got them earlier, they'd be way higher. But yeah, way too late, way too underleveled. No thanks.
Anything else about the Hitmons? I think we're okay, right? Okay. Giraffe rig! Very zany design. People really like this thing. I like it too. Uh, it's basically just better drowsy. Uh, you get a, a normal stab for free, I guess. Uh, and you're faster. Uh, but you're available a little bit later. I still think you're better overall. It's okay. Stab Psychic is pretty good in a game with a zillion poison types. You have okay speed. Sure. Not much else to say about this. It's Palindrome. That's cool. Beats Morty at 19? I guess we can mention that. And if you want to go out of your way to really make Morty feel bad, you can go ahead and trek through Mount Mortar and go catch Giraffe Rig. And then you have something that has Stab Psychic, but is also immune to Ghost. That's neat. Anything else for Giraffe Rig? You have to stall out Sucker Punch PP? No. More people being afraid of super effective moves. You won't die. You'll be fine. Alright. Tauros and Miltank. Are we gonna grab this playthrough by the horns, Tauros? High B Pokemon. Mill tank. Worst Tauros. <laughs> so Tauros is about as good as a normal type gets. It's fast and strong. Sounds good to me. Mill tank. Slightly slower, slightly weaker, but bulkier. I don't care about that. They're both very, very solid. Tauros worse than Pinsir? Yeah, you get Pinsir a little bit earlier. Tauros A tier? Don't put Tauros in A. We'll put Tauros in A. Fine. Bottom of A, though. And we'll just redo all that. That's true, you don't need to evolve it. Okay. Is it time to grab this playthrough by the horns? Tauros! We're on a rampage to the bottom of A. Mill tank! Slightly worse than Tauros. So Tauros is about as good as a normal type gets. Really fast and really strong. Cool. Mill tank. Slightly slower and slightly weaker than Tauros. And slightly bulkier. So, it's just worse. <laughs> but they're both pretty solid! Yeah, uh, decently fast, decently strong normal moves that you don't need to evolve. You just catch them and they're already good. Congratulations. Miltank is the same speed. Prepare to delete your YouTube channel, friend. It's slower. So Tauros has 110 speed. And Miltank I think has 100. Get wrecked. It's over. I've never been wrong. Not once. And if I have, I can just edit it out.
Yeah, Mill Tank is surprisingly fast. I think Mill Tank also has Scrappy as a base ability in this game, right? Yeah. Miltank also has Scrappy in this game, so you can still hit ghost types. That's nice. It doesn't come up very often, but it's nice. Alright. We are coming up on the end. Here we go. Magmar. Gets an evolution to Magmortar. It's on, like, Cinnabar Island, though, so for the vast majority of the game, you're stuck with Magmar. Thankfully, Magmar is not bad at all. It's okay. If you didn't pick Cyndaquil and you really want a Fire-type, you can go with Magmar. It's okay. And once you do evolve into Magmortar, uh, it gets even uglier, but significantly stronger. Notably, it's got a really good special move pool. Uh, you can give it Thunderbolt and Psychic, which are both really nice. Okay. Okay base stats. Not very exciting. No fire type favoritism here. And yes, its Japanese name is Boober. Very funny. Haha. -ha. Cannon arms? I think everybody okay with this placement for Magmar? Ember until 28? You can teach it Fire Blast. Okay. Alright, Jinx. Really good Pokemon. Really bad placement. So Jinx as a Pokemon is great. Decently fast at 95 speed, that's okay. Stab Ice and Psychic. Wow. You catch it in Ice Path, and it's underleveled. Ah! No! I'd put it in A, but it's just too late. It's an excellent investment. If you want to be icing some fools, Jinx is a pretty good choice. Unfortunately, it's a late game choice. If if you invest into the Jinx, I think you'll be happy. But it takes some investing. How fat would Jinx's Gen 4 Evo have been? Oh no. C tier, you need like the Blizzard TM? They sell the Blizzard TM at the department store. Let's look at Jinx's level up moves. For Gen 4. Ice Punch. Avalanche. Wow, really weird. Where's Ice Beam? Game Corner and Seafoam Islands? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. I think we're gonna have to drop it. So we'll redo this. Okay. Jinx. The template for a really good Pokemon, right? It's got decent stats, right? Good special attack, good enough speed at 95. The typing Ice Psychic is, is really good for offense. Does it get Ice or Psychic moves? Nope. No, we almost did it. Unfortunately, we were cursed, uh, right? That's what it's named after, right? Cursed? Uh, Jinx the reactor might be better than this thing. Uh, if 
you give it the Blizzard TM, which you can buy, and 70% of the time it does a lot of damage. It doesn't actually learn any psychic moves by level up. And Ice Beam, you either have to play a whole lot of Voltorb Flip, or you have to use the TM that you get from the Seafoam Islands, which is going to be really late. If you don't do that, you're stuck Ice Punching. Very unfortunate. And also because you catch it in the Ice Path, uh, it's going to be kind of underleveled for where you are. Things just don't line up right for Jinx, sadly. But if you invest into it, it can be good. So we'll give it the honor of top of C. Is everyone okay with this? Okay. Pretty much, yeah. Jinx would be good if Johto wasn't Johto. Yeah. Okay. Electabuzz. <laughs> or it has the anime cry, which is like... I, I tried my best. Uh, either way, it's cry is hilarious. Uh, unknown dungeon, sadly. I still have better than this guy. Kanto exclusive. Wish it wasn't. <laughs> Whoops. But hey, it gets an evolution to Electivire, and people went nuts when Electivire was first revealed, because it had insane coverage. Pretty much any move you wanted, you could get. Except for a good physical electric move, which is why Electivire was never good. So if you want to see more of Electivire, you're going to be seeing a lot of it in the upcoming uh, Super Effective Scam video, or the Super Effective Swindle. Look forward to that. Alright. Mr. Mime! Previously uh, in the Unknown Dungeon, but I think you can now actually get it in the Safari Zone. That's kind of weird, but yeah, you can get it in the Safari Zone. It's a decently fast Psychic type. A little bit underleveled when you get it, though. I think it's overall better than Drowsy. Because it's faster and stronger. There you go. But I'd rather use Giraffery. Actually, I'd rather use Alakazam. And this thing still creeps me out. Why in the world did they go with this design? Anything else to say about Mr. Mime? I think that's it. Okay. That's it for Mr. Mime. Okay. Smeargle. This thing's a worse artist than I am. That's really saying something. So Smeargle's whole gimmick is that it can learn any move, almost any move. But the opponent has to use, use the move first, and then you can use Sketch to get the move permanently. How are you setting that up? You're not. I think it's worse than Hoppit. You're never setting this up to do anything. It's worthless. And the best moves in the game probably aren't going to do anything when you have Smeargle stats. They're really bad. This thing is pretty useful and competitive because you do stuff that doesn't actually require you to use your stats. And you can just type what move you want into the simulator you're using. If you have to actually try and copy the moves in an in-game playthrough, good luck, pal. No. I think art school, it's not for you, buddy. Find a different line of work. I think that's it for Smeargle. It's really bad. This ain't a smear campaign. It, it's the truth. Bad. All right. Farfetched. Imagine being outclassed by Pidgey. It's better than Hoppip. At least it can attack. Yeah. 
Farfetch sucks. More at 11. But hey, at least it's intentionally bad, right? Because it's literally a joke Pokemon. So there you go. Better than Pidgey? What? No way. I don't think Farfetch'd is Kanto. I'm gonna close creepy nuts in the zone. I don't think it's Kanto exclusive. Uh, in side games, no. In main games, right? Here we go. 38, 39. These are Johto roots, right? I didn't get in the Safari Zone. Yeah, that's, that's not that late. It's definitely Johto. People are saying it's better than Pidgey. It's not. Okay, that's it for far fetched. I'd put far fetched beside Dunsparce? No. I wouldn't. Dunsp Dunsparce is better. Sad. Okay. Natu! Evolves into Zatu. People really like this Pokemon. Has a big role in Mystery Dungeon, I think. Uh, it's okay. You get in the Ruins uh, Alf. I think you need Surf to actually get to the area where you can get this thing. Very underwhelming stats. Maybe Top of Sea? Psychic is pretty useful. That's about it. You have way better psychic options. But if you really like it, I guess you could go with this. To get it, you need to go through Union Cave. Do you need Surf to get not to? I think you do. Level 25 evolution? Oh, that's cool. Just a worse Sigilyph? Well, Sigilyph unfortunately doesn't exist. Check the move set. Okay. Zatu, the mystic Pokemon. Gen 4. Nightshade. Wow. Upon further review, this thing's really bad. Oh my goodness. Look at Zatu's move pool. Level 6, you get Nightshade. Your next attacking move is Ominous Wind. Level 47. I guess you could use an 80 base power future side at level 42? At level 59, you get Psychic. No. Awful. Please don't demonetize this stream. I know that was scary. Honestly, worse than Steelix? You know what? I don't even think that's Onyx propaganda. I agree. What a joke. I had no idea it was that bad. That's terrible. Oh, 
All right. We are zooming. We can keep going here. Quillfish. No prices for guessing where this goes. Plop. Into the sea. At least Overquill exists, but not in this game. Go ahead and splish and splash around with some very mediocre water moves. Go ahead. Wow, the same typing as Tentacle. Where does Tentacle go? I think it's also going to go ahead and take a swim. But it's definitely better than Quillfish. Uh, Tentacruel is actually kind of fast uh, with decent special attack. We're going to put it here, actually. Tentacruel is actually not bad at all. Uh, if you just wanted to pick a Pokemon to start surfing, Tentacruel, Tentacruel, pretty good. Uh, I don't think it earns that uh, Gen 1 sprite. Back in Gen 1, it had 120 special attack. It was actually Chad, but uh, really suffered from the special split. Uh, meaning the Gen 1 special split. Big nerf from that. Pretty much unaffected by the uh, physical special split that happened in Gen 4. Floating around in the sea, where it belongs. Krabby. Very nearly escapes the sea. But all water types hear the call. I'm sorry, Krabby. So here's the thing. If this thing actually got crab hammer, crab hammer, it would be good. In fact, it would be so good, I would probably put it in, like, high B. But no. Crab hammer is, like, level 50. Sad. If it actually got it at a reasonable level and could just smash things with crab hammer early, it would be great. Nope. Have fun, have fun waddling in those shallow shores of the sea tier. This is probably one of the Pokemon that stood to benefit the most from the physical special split, and they still did it dirty. No relearner? By the time you get to the relearner, you can just get waterfall. Wonder if I attack with the old rod and cherry grove, grove is super early. Can you actually catch us with the old rod? I know you can catch tentacle with the old rod. Let's see. Cherry grove city. Oh, it doesn't even learn waterfall in gen 4? Rip. Uh, generation 2. Generation 4. Fishing with the old rod, wow. It's pretty good. So you can fish with an old rod to get a Krabby in Cherry Grove City. And Krabby itself, not even Kingler, has 105 base attack. That's pretty good. There you go. Krabby, use your vice grip. Krabby is S tier in edible Pokemon, that's true. Everybody okay with Krabby here? Okay. Might maybe a bit higher, but I'm not gonna nit nitpick. Okay. Krabby goes in A for sure. Wow. All right, next. Shuckle. So your rival robs a guy, steals some of his Pokemon, 
but he doesn't steal Shuckle. It's a reason why he didn't. Horrendous. <laughs> this thing does nothing. This thing does nothing except look pretty cute and you can convert berries into berry juice by making it hold berries. Apparently you can't actually get those into rare candies. That's a myth, but there you go. Worthless on offense, which is all I care about. But if you get to level 48, you can power trick and then die because you had five base speed and got hit. No. Rollout is surprisingly amazing with Shuckle. I mean, surprising because that would surprise me. I don't believe you. Horrible. Horrible. Pure meme. But people really like Shuckle, so people will go to any length to try and justify using Shuckle. Here's the only justification you need, if you like it. But don't pretend that it's good. <laughs> I think that's it for Shuckle, right? Okay. Star you. Yeah. Is this a C tier Pokemon? No. I'm actually going to put it up here. Superstar! So what do you do with Staryu? You catch it. It's a Water Stone evolution, so I guess I hope you got a Water Stone. You can immediately Stone Evolution it up to Starmie, who I think is the best recipient in the game for TMs. You can give it Surf, you can give it Thunderbolt, eventually. You can give it Ice Beam, eventually. And you can give it Psychic. And that's it. It defeats pretty much everything in the game except Red's Snorlax. That's about it. Uh, if you're looking for a place to invest your TMs, this is it. Right here. Do it. Uh, the only issue is a lot of those TMs are either Kanto or Voltorb Flip. So you're going to have to actually play Voltorb Flip because you can't just buy coins in this game. That's a little unfortunate. But even if all this was, was... This is basically fast stab surf that eventually gets even better. Excellent Pokemon. Anything else to say about Star You and Star Me? I think that's it. Looks like we're okay with Starmie and A. Okay. Okay. Shelter and Cloister. Hey, it's a water type. We'll put it there. Uh, you can stone evolution it immediately up to Cloister. Uh, and then stab water and stab ice. That's both pretty, like... So stab water and ice is pretty useful. Uh, but this ain't Gen 5 shell smashing Cloister that's actually running through teams. Uh, it's not actually that slow. I mean, it's pretty slow. But it's not as slow as you might think. And stab surf is not that bad, right? It's okay. One more generation, okay? We're, we're almost there. Into the sea. Anything else to say about Shelter and Cloister? K. 
Can you actually get Icicle Spear in this generation? Let's see. Uh, Cloister is what I'm looking for, right? Cloister. Uh, Gen 4. Ah, uh, it doesn't look like it. Spike Cannon, wow. Is it a level up move for... Shelter? I don't think so. Shelter! Gen 4? No. So you just can't even get... Oh, no! You do get Icicle Spear. It's 10 base power. Uh-oh. Yeah, before the buff. Bad. We're not even going to mention it. Actually, we will mention it. A Shelter actually can get Icicle Spear? And you do have Skill Link. So you'll get a guaranteed 5 hits for a total of... 50 base power! No thanks. I think that's it for Shelter and Cloister. Yeah, they more than doubled the base power of Icicle Spear. Alright. Corsola! So the C tier is for water Pokemon, right? It's just for them, because water Pokemon tend to be a step above everything else. Not you. No. No! You will sink! It's better than Spinarak. It's about it. Horrific. This thing is so bad, Game Freak literally killed it and made it better. Atrocious. Useless offensive stats. Shockingly bad typing, because you pair it with rock. It's not even cute. Look how lazy this design is. It's like a clip art piece of coral that they just drew a smiley face on and they left for the day. I guess they had something else to do. No redemption for this thing. At the bottom where coral belongs. That's it for Corsola. Alright. Remoraid and Octillery. Weirdest evolution in the series? Uh, it makes a little bit more sense if you think of it as, like, a gun to, like, a tank in terms of just, like, artillery instead of, like, a, a remora to an octopus. Where do you think this goes? Take a swim. It basically gets a bunch of, like, artillery moves. A, a bunch of beams. Uh, but its stats are just... <laughs> slow. Mediocre attacks. But yeah, pretty good move pool. That's it. A signature move, Octazuka, is bad also. Yeah, I think we talked about it then. Talk about then Gen 2 moves. Cheese in the final edited version when talking about Spinarak put a picture of a... I'm trying to get money on these things. I can't do that. No. Octurly has 105 attack and special attack, so the attacks do some damage. It's really slow, though. It's really slow. All right. Chin Chow. It's pretty dark under the sea. 
Oh, I, I should have said that differently. Chin Chow. It's pretty dark under the sea. Probably want some lighting. Yeah, we'll put it up here. So Chin Chow. People love this thing. Amazing typing. Water electric. Nice. Great stabs. Slow. Slow with bad offense. Slow with bad offense. But hey. Great type. Take a swim. Uh, if this was faster, uh, it would obviously be a high B. But no, it's, it's always moving second. So you can see, uh, floating at the very top of the sea. Uh, really good dual types. Too slow. But yes, it is very cute. Unfortunately, that does not count. All right. Seal! I'm going to put as much effort into this evaluation as Game Freak did into the naming. See it there. I'm actually going to put a little bit more effort. A water ice stab is really good. But it's, it's, it's not that slow, but it's defensively leaning, which is not what you want. Lick a tongue. Lucky enough to gain a Gen 4 evolution. All you need to do is learn rollout and then you can evolve into Licky Licky. Your stats go up a little bit and you're still a normal type. <laughs> Usable. Very good moveset, but just horrible stats to actually use them. Really slow. And mediocre offenses. Honestly, this thing peaked in the Pokemon Stadium Sushi Go Round minigame. That's about it. Also, Licky Licky is disgusting. But that doesn't count. Isn't Lickitung a Safari Zone? You don't need the Radio Tower takeover for that. You think it's better than Pidgey? No way. Pidgey's better. Because you get Pidgey earlier. Slam at 29. Awful. Can it learn Lick? Yes, it can learn Lick in this game. All right. Tangela. It's a grass type, that's not good, but hey, it gets an evolution into 10 growth, who actually has very good stats. Well, how do you do this? Okay. So Tangela received another Gen 4 evolution. It can now become uh, the Grass Caveman, Tangrowth, uh, with actually very good stats. It's still a grass type, though, and you get it kind of late, so it's going to be underleveled. I think it escapes D tier barely. It's very unexciting. Honestly, I'm going to put it like as the worst of this grass troop. It's actually the best out of them. Uh, but you get it later. And it's going to be more underleveled comparatively. But for a grass type, it's not bad. Imagine putting it in the lower half of the C tier and saying that it's comparatively not bad. Yikes. I don't even think he gets Power Whip yet. Better than Pidgey? This guy really hates Pidgey. Like, look, these stats are good. Ooh, look at this. Not bad. Slow, though.
make it. Oh, it does get power whip. And you can get energy ball. Okay. Also, it's really slow. And very weird stat distribution, so it has better special attack than attack. Even though it's got, like, this big lumbering design. I don't get it. Uh, same deal with Sceptile. I don't know why Sceptile has better special attack than physical attack. Even though its signature move is Leaf Blade. Just physical. I don't get it. Oh, Energy Ball is Frontier? Uh-oh. Alright. Eeveelutions! Vaporeon! Well, I guess we should talk about how we get Eevee. So, Eeveelutions! So, Bill gives you an Eevee in Goldenrod City. I believe it's level 20? So, it's usable for that point in the game. You need an elemental stone for these three. You can maybe get one, so we will talk about them. We won't treat them as Kanto exclusives like we did before. Vaporeon! It's thick, right? It's, it's defensively leaning, but its special attack is not bad at all. It's really slow, though. I think it's actually better than Lantern. You can get a very decent surf out of this thing. You're gonna get hit first, though. That's unfortunate. Is it level 5 or is it level 20? I think if we go to Goldenrod City, it'll tell us. I think it'll tell you gift Pokemon. Twenty. Oh wow, they nerfed it. Uh-oh. That actually makes these all a lot worse. So I was right, but I was also wrong. Okay. So we have to redo that. Evolutions. Uh, so you guys already know I don't really like evolutions. They're all pure types, which I'm not a fan of. So how you get Eevee in this game is that Bill hands you an Eevee in Goldenrod City. In Generation 2, it was level 20, which was perfectly fine for that point in the game, but you couldn't actually get the evolution stones until Kanto. In this game, you can get the evolution stones. But Eevee is level 5. Uh oh. So yeah, that makes all of these pretty close to unusable. <laughs> but uh, somebody pointed out there is slight upside to that. And that level 5 means it's, I guess, easier for you to get moves. But that's a pretty, pretty sad upside. So Vaporeon. Vaporeon itself is fine. It's uh, definitely a C tier Pokemon. It's got very good stats. Uh, it's actually got surprisingly high special attack, but it's really slow. It's really slow. So you're going to get hit first. And they're going to respond with a decently strong attack. I wish it was level 20, though. Actually, going to drop this down. Level 5 is really bad. Jolteon. Definitely the best stone evolution. It's really fast. Uh, I hope you get Thunderbolt, which you can do by giving it the Thunderbolt TM. Hope you like Voltorb Flip. Other than that, you're thunder shocking, because it doesn't actually get discharge. Uh oh. It's very fast though, so I think we're just gonna put it at the very bottom of B. If you want to invest in it, if you really like it, you can. Sure. Flareon. Physical special split has occurred. We finally get to use fire moves with our 130 base attack. And our best physical fire move is Fire Fang. You can't be serious, but I am serious. You can still use your special attack. 90 is not awful, but wow. Yeah. No Flare Blitz really, really stinks. 
And I guess in the lore, right, three evolutions died in the burned tower, and then they were resurrected by Ho-Oh and became the legendary beasts. Imagine having flash fire and still dying in a fire. Pathetic. Espeon. Definitely the best of the evolutions because you don't even need the stone. It's just friendship during the day. Uh, why aren't you using Alakazam? You should just use Alakazam. It's definitely the best of these psychic types if you can get it and if you can raise it from level 5. I don't think it's worth it. I think you should just be using Alakazam. But if you're an Eevee fan, Espeon's pretty good. I wish I had... I wish it came at a... I wish it came at a higher level. That's about it. And the move pool, like, doesn't exist. It's like, confusion. You feel like Flareon should be in low C? At level 5? No. When do you get the Grass Knot TM? It gets that. We can check. Grass Knot. Computer doesn't want to load grass moves. Uh, we have to go up here. It's really annoying to get the actual locations. Uh, this is... So we want to do this one. Uh, Route 11, so that's Kanto. Not good. Flaren gets Fire Fang at level 43? So sad. You can give it Fire Blast immediately, though. Alright. I think that I think this is fine for Espeon. It would be much higher if this was still level 20. Uh, if you still got Eevee at level 20, I would probably actually put Espeon in A. Espeon is amazing in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. I agree, but that's not the game we're talking about. Espeon at level 20 doesn't get confusion. Oh, the Johto... The Johto Espeon doesn't get confusion. Uh, not The Gen 2 one doesn't get confusion. Just use Shadow Ball. Oh, so you don't actually get Psychic moves until level 30? Okay. 36 is Psybeam, right? When does it get... We'll, we'll check that now. Espeon. Doesn't it get Confusion when it levels up? Or when it evolves? Good stats. Fifteen. So you have to you have to level up. You have to evolve by fifteen. Which you can do. Darn, Eevee is not good. It's not good. <laughs> Same applies to all the Eevees. Level 5 is better except Vaporeon. Because you can just give Vaporeon Surf, right? Yeah. 64 for Psychic.
yeah how do, what else do you say about this I think we said about everything for this. But Karen said there are no bad mons. Just cope. She's just like a vile plume. I wouldn't trust her. We're actually going to move Espeon lower. Horrible starting level. And its move pool just sucks. If you evolve it by level 15, you'll get Confusion. Which you're stuck with until level 36, and you get Psybeam, wow. And other than that, you can use Shadow Ball, and that's about it. Good stats, though. Uh, there's like a smudge on the tier list here. And we can just move it somewhere out of the way. There, I guess. Horsey! Well, it's got C in the name. There you go. Ah, you can actually evolve to Kingdra. Put it there-ish. So Kingdra has like 95 in like all of its stats. It's okay. Really annoying to get to Kingdra though, because you need the Dragon Scale Evolution. But I think you can actually get Dragon Pulse in this game, so that's a nice secondary stab option. Eh, we'll put it above Psyduck. I really don't have anything else to say about Umbreon. It's useless. Umbreon fans, just wait for Colosseum. It's actually good there. I've got bad news for you. Delabird. We've got express delivery. Horrible. Joke stats. Joke stats. Joke Pokemon. Joke signature move. Are you laughing? I don't think it's that funny. Don't waste your time with this thing. Cool name, though. I never realized that it's a pun on delivered. Delabird? Delivered? That's nice. All right. Swineub. They gave it a new evolution in Generation 4. We've got prehistoric power now that we can become Mammoth Swine. There's no way that its best physical move is Ice Fang, right? They wouldn't do that. There's no way. That's what they did. Its best physical move is Ice Fang. Ah! It's got really good stats as Mammoth Swine. Really good. And you get Stab Earthquake. Y you can't go that wrong with that. I mean, Stab Earthquake, that's pretty good. Unfortunately, it's really underleveled when you get it, because it's Ice Path. But if you invest into it, you can, you can, you can cause some chaos. Stab Earthquake off 130 base attack, that's really good. And Ice Fang isn't horrible. It's just you really wish you had Icicle Crash. And it's not that slow. I think it's faster than some people might expect. It's like base 80. It's pretty good. I wish you got this thing earlier. Oh well. But I think it's one of the winners from the Gen 4 evolution. And it's still stuck in C. That's kind of sad. I don't even think it gets Ice Shard. I think Ice Shard is a... Uh, Mammoth Swine. I think Ice Shard is like a breeding move. Look Look at this, Chad. Look at this. We're scaling the mountain. I, I really like Mammoth Swine. Look at, th look at this. Oh.
No ice shard, no. You have to learn as swine up? Yikes. Well, you're not doing that. <laughs> Everybody okay with top of C for Swinub? Really good stats. Stab Earthquake, but just too late. And too underleveled. You don't even need Ice Shard. You would just be Ice Fanging anyway. I just wanted to know if it got Ice Shard. Level 28 Ice Shard? Oh, okay. But you don't need it anyway. Just use Ice Fang. And j just a heads up, uh, this is pretty much the part of the list where everything is going to be too late to be useful. So these are probably going to speed up quite a bit. All right. Gligar. It was given a Gen 4 evolution into Gliscor, who is maybe one of the, I think, best balanced Pokemon in the game. Uh, very solid defense, and it can actually hit back. All you need to evolve it is a Razor Fang, which is... Uh... Oh, the Razor Fang is, uh, is post-game from the Battle Frontier? Oh my god, this thing's horrible! Ah! Ah! It's better than spin rack. Super late game, super under leveled, and the level up move pool is a disgrace. We're gonna look at it. Gligar. Tremble, mortals, and despair. This is what you're using if you're using Gligar. D. Just use Earthquake. Funny joke, man. Where, where's the Earthquake? You don't get it. Can you use your TM on this? No. Teddy Ursa. Ursa Luna does not exist yet. Very sad. Teddy Ursa, if you got it earlier, uh, would probably be with Granbull. It's basically Granbull, but like a little bit better. Because uh, it's a little bit stronger. But you get Granbull way, way earlier than Teddy Ursa. Sad. But hey, it's certainly usable if you want to invest in it. It's just really late. This is in D4 availability. In terms of actual power, once you get it, it's fine. But you don't have it for most of the game. That's pretty much exactly what I would say about Fanfi and the Dawn. The Dawn fan. Except I think Dawn fan's a better type. I'd rather have stab ground than stab normal. I guess if you think about super meta availability, Dawn Fan was one of the earliest available Gen 2 Pokemon because it was in the first movie uh, and it lost. So it's about what you can expect. In Crystal, you can get Teddy Ursa early, but uh, no longer in HGSS. How bad is Fampy's moveset? Fampy? Let's, let's go to the Dawn. All these stats. Slow. Oh, you got Magnitude. You get Earthquake. That's fine.
Don fan 500 BST? Yeah, not bad. Way too late, yeah. These are availability misses. Alright. Mantine. You can find this Pokemon gracefully gliding above the sea. Not on this list, though. Thanks to Worsen Remoraid. Uh, very, like, okay-ish stats? Uh, you actually get this, uh, I don't know why it's Pokedex number is so late, but you can get this near Sianwood City. I remember because I tried to catch this in Gen 2. I was really excited to find it, uh, but my box was full and I couldn't catch it. You had to actually switch your boxes manually back then. Uh, we'll, we'll pair it with Remoraid. They're, they're good friends. You can use Stab Surf, it's okay. Sure. Skarmory. I get a couple comments a week about how in the original Gen 2 list I said Skarmory was Kanto exclusive, and it's not. You can actually get it on the route south of Blackthorn. D. Way too late. Way too late, underleveled, defensively leaning. But it's really cool. I don't think there's anything else to say about Skarmory. Yeah, that's it for Skarmory. Okay. I think Steelix might be better than Skarmory since you get Steelix much earlier. The Onyx lobby wins again, you're right, I agree. Okay. Do Duo. Pretty much strictly better than Spiro? Uh, I guess two heads are better than one. <laughs> uh, and its stats get even better when it evolves to Dodrio, so I guess three heads are better than two. <laughs> I actually, I have to do this. I have an edit in mind, so I have to keep laughing. Hang on. <laughs> Uh, but of course, uh, you get Spiro super early, and you can also go to Kenya. Whereas this thing is pretty much victory road. It's like right before. So the game is already over. Of the Pokemon that are too late to actually use, this is one of the best. Really fast and really strong. I wish it was actually in the game, though. Uh, if you got these at the same time, uh, I would honestly probably put Do Duo, like, maybe even above Scyther. It's pretty good. But no, it's just not in the game. Womp womp. Can you get in Safari Zone? Oh, you might be able to get in the new Safari Zone. Ah, it's still way worse, though. But we are going to put it probably in B. I don't think we have to redo the laughing part. So this used to be... This used to be... Almost Kanto, you got it right before Victory Road. Uh, but now you can actually get it in the Safari Zone. But by that time, you've already been to a Safari in Kenya, right? You don't you don't need this. So even though it is, like, strictly better than Spiro, uh, I think the fact that it's available so much later makes it much worse. But it's a very decent uh, investment. Uh, it's fast and it's strong, which is what you want. Uh, it's just kind of late compared to Spiro. Forty-seven for drill pack, no upside over Kenya. You can just teach it fly, though. It's definitely worse than Spiro because of availability. Is Ponyta also a Safari Zone catch now? I think it is. Ponyta. Ponyta. We want HGSS. Yeah, Safari Zone.
So Ponyta used to also be uh, an, a pseudo Kanto Pokemon. You get it right before the league, but now it's also running free in the Safari. Uh, somebody said Rapid Ash more like Rapid Ass. Yeah, yeah, it's it's bad. Uh, Ponyta itself is really weak, uh, and its evolution to Pony or its evolution to Rapid Ash is like level forty. So you're stuck with this thing forever. I mean, I I guess to level forty, but yeah, that's that's pretty bad. Uh, I think it's gonna be. What's wrong with my cursor? I didn't really mean to put it there, but okay, we'll put it here. If you're really hurting for a fire type, I guess you could use this one. Why not use Vulpix though? Why not use Growlithe? Why not use Magmar? Why didn't you pick Cyndaquil? A lot of choices have to go wrong for you to actually end up with this thing. I don't know if I'd call friendship magic. Uh, good night. Thanks for coming by. We're almost done. I'd use Slugma over Ponyta. Let's not go too far. You can't get Ponyta on the Safari Zone until post game. I think it has encounter tables here. There's no duo. Oh, yeah, you're right, you can't. Uh-oh. Well, we have to redo that. Thank you for checking that. Well, that makes it way worse. So it's actually Unknown Dungeon. Oh, no, 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 it's not, because uh, you can still get it uh, before the Kanto. You still get it before the League. So we'll just redo that. Ponyta! This is a, a pseudo Kanto Pokemon. You get it right before the league. Uh, so you are in Kanto, but you still haven't fought the league yet. Really late, really underleveled, and Ponyta sucks. Uh, it takes until level 40 to evolve into Rapid Ass, who still isn't that good. Is friendship magic? No, it's D tier. But if you're really hurting for a fire type, I guess you could use this, but why aren't you using Magmar? Why aren't you using... Growlithe, why aren't you using Vulpix? Why aren't you using Tintagel? You gotta make a lot of wrong choices before you decide to pick this as your not-so-trusty steed. Not recommended. There we go. Cubone! Used to be Kanto exclusive. I think it was Rock Tunnel? But now it's in the Safari Zone. So Cubone's best stat, I think, is defense. Uh, if you want it to actually hit back, you need to give it a thick club. How are you going to get a thick club? I think you have to actually get it from Wild Cubone. So let's just uh, check that. Doesn't look that thick. Acquisition. HGSS. Wild cube on 5%. Yep. Okay. So we'll we'll redo that really quickly. So Cubone! Uh, used to be a Kanto exclusive, but now you can actually get it in the Safari Zone. Uh, Cubone without the Thick Club sucks. <laughs> uh, if you can get that Thick Club... You actually become decently good. How do you get a thick club? It's sometimes held by Wild Cubone. What does sometimes mean? 5%. Well, I mean, you can scout that with compound eyes, right? Well, no, because it's the Safari Zone. So you can't actually do that. And you can't just thief either. You have to actually catch a bunch of Cubone and hope that one of them is thick. I wouldn't hold my breath. So you're probably just going to be using base Cubone. Where's Sancho and Diglett? I think Diglett's better, because Diglett's faster. But hey, it's a ground type. Can't be that bad, right? Here you go. Dry those tears. Uh, I mean, okay, maybe cry a little bit. But, I mean, you're not in D, at least. That's nice. So 
Let me just check if Rhyhorn is also in the Safari Zone. Feels like a Safari Zone Pokemon, right? Does Compound Eyes still work in the Safari Zone? It might. If you just have it in the lead. That might be true. Yeah, Saf Savannah Default. So you can't actually get this in the Safari Zone. Okay. Next. Oh, it does work. Do I have to redo Cubone? Yeah, we'll redo Cubone because we're already here, right? Where'd I put Cubone? What does Compound Eyes do? If your lead Pokemon has Compound Eyes, uh, it helps, uh, it increases the rate at which wild Pokemon hold items. Why does it work that way? I don't know. Cubone! Used to be Kanto exclusive, but now you can find it in the Safari Zone in Johto. So Cubone itself kind of sucks, but if you cut, if you get a thick club, uh, it doubles its attack, which is really good. It makes it actually kind of okay. How do you get a thick club? So it's held by Wild Cubone sometimes. What does sometimes mean? 5% of the time. Uh, yikes. And this is in the Safari Zone, so the best thing you can do is lead with a Compound Eyes Pokemon, and that increases the rate at which Wild Cubone hold thick clubs. But you still have to actually catch them. You can't just steal them with Thief. So if you catch a bunch of Cubone, and one of them has a Thick Club, then Cubone is pretty good. But you're probably not going to do that. So if you just catch a vanilla Cubone that ain't thick, you end up with pretty much just slower Diglett or later Sandshrew. Not very impressive. I guess you could give it points for being able to use, like, Bone Meringue and, like, not having to use Earthquake on it, but maybe you could just use a Pokemon that learns Earthquake naturally, like this thing. It's because your chance to find an item is compounded? Yeah, sure. All right. We are in the home stretch. All right. Kanga, Kanga, Kangaskhan! I think there was an episode where they talked like that, right? So Kangaskhan, also previously a Kanto exclusive, but now you can find it in the Safari Zone. Surprisingly fast, and with okay stats. It's an okay normal type, but it's going to be a bit underleveled by the time you get it. Where's Snubble? Here's the normal squad. I think it's a little bit better than Stantler. Is it better than Stantler? No, it's not. I, I think it's better than Stantler once you get it, but you get Stantler quite a bit earlier. It's not going to be as underleveled. I really wish that Kangaskhan were as buff as an actual kangaroo. If you've seen actual kangaroos, uh, the name of that horrible movie should have been Kangaroo Jacked. They are insanely buff. And Kangaskhan is not, but it's not bad. It's okay. How long has it been? Six hours? Okay. We got to go to the dentist in an hour. We're definitely going to finish within an hour. I think we're almost done here. A lot of these are just going to be just post-game unobtainable. Okay. Next. Rhyhorn! It's actually better than Geodude. But you can get Geodude super duper early. Just waltz into the dark cave. They're everywhere. And Rhyhorn is in the Safari Zone. Oops. And Rhyhorn is in the Safari Zone. So it's going to be underleveled, and you have to wait way longer. But its stats are slightly better than Golems. I think the difference in availability is huge. <laughs> so huge that I'm just going to put this, I think, next to Sudowoodo. It's definitely better than Sudowoodo, but you get Sudowoodo first. That's about it. And the evolution to Rhydon is really late, level 42. 
Rhyhorn itself is basically Geodude. They're almost the exact same stats. It's kind of weird. Oh, yes, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, it does actually help, because the only subscriber... The only subscriber count that actually matters is 1,000, because that's when we get uh, both monetization and, more importantly, we get emotes. So if you happen to be watching and you're not subscribed, please actually subscribe. And consider joining the Discord, link in the description. Forty-two is way too late to be using a slightly stronger Geodude. Like, it's not a disaster. But it is significantly worse, which is why it's, it's tiered worse. Does Rhyperior factor in or is it post-game? It's post-game. It's also ugly. Anything else to say about this thing? Something we should also mention is that the later in the game you get a Pokemon, the later it's able to build up effort values. And it takes a lot of knockouts to actually max out your EVs. So that's another advantage that early Pokemon get over later Pokemon. All right, next. Justice for Murkrow. So Murkrow used to be Kanto exclusive, but now it's in the Safari Zone. Not only that, it gets an amazing evolution into Honchkrow. Uh, I love the design, and it's got amazing offensive stats, which is exactly what you want. All you need is a Duskstone, which... A Duskstone is, is Kanto exclusive? Oh my god, this thing's horrible! No! Why? Oh, it was almost good. It was almost good. It was almost good, guys. If you could Duskstone it in Johto, we're talking low A. We're talking low A, but no. You're stuck with Murkrow, who honestly, it's not that bad. It's got like, I think, 85 offenses. Actually, that is pretty bad. <laughs> it is pretty bad. <laughs> No! If only you could get a Duskstone. Honchkrow is so much better than Murkrow. It's not even close. It is not even close. Uh, but you are also not even close to getting that Duskstone, so... Whoops. Sad. Very sad. Uh, fun fact, though. Apparently the word uh, Honcho comes from Japanese, and I never realized that. But yeah, I always thought it was like Italian, but no, um, it's honcho, which means like a division head. And I guess that somehow just became an English word. Yeah, but it's actually Japanese. All right. Houndoom. I went through the effort to actually get this uh, Houndoge from the Showdown April Fool sprites. For some reason... This is Kanto exclusive. Why? If you told me that you didn't like Gen 2 games just because of the distribution of Pokemon and you cited Houndour and Houndoom as an example, I would agree with you. I would understand why you didn't like Gen 2. Why in the world is this Kanto exclusive? Sad. If it wasn't, I would honestly, I would probably put it in S. If you got this at, like, Goldenrod City, which is where I think you could get it, it would be, I think, S. Amazing offensive dual typing. Good stats. But it's not in the game. What a shame. Can you not find it in the route before the Safari Zone? No. This one I checked. Because I was so sure that they made it obtainable. They didn't. This is a crime.
Okay, we do have to speed up a little bit, because uh, I do have to actually get, like, ready for the uh, dentist appointment, so... A lot of these are going to be a bit faster. Slugma. Are you ready to become a slugma male? This thing used to be in the Unknown Dungeon, but Game Freak decided they couldn't lock such power away. Instead, if you utilize the power of the World Wide Web, you can look up a code based on your trainer ID that will allow you to become a slugma male while you're still in Johto. What benefits do slugma males get? I don't know, man. This, thing's, this thing sucks. Slow. Slow as balls. Slugma balls. Awful. And when it evolves, it gains a dual typing and actually gets worse. Imagine that. Ugh. Why? Late evolution. Why did I put this in C? I think Flareon's better. I think Natu's better. No, it's not. Congratulations, Slugma. Ah, yes, my favorite Gen 2 Hoenmon. Sounds about right. Nobody remembers this thing. That's how it should be. L let us wipe this thing from our collective memories. And maybe Game Freak will go ahead and actually delete it. Horrific. Alright. Sneasel! So it got massive upgrades. Uh, probably one of the biggest benefactors of Gen 4. Both of its types were special. Now it can actually use Stab off of its physical stats. And it got an evolution up into Weavile, who actually has amazing stats. Fast and strong, exactly what you need. So if you catch one in Ice Path, then... Oh, you could catch one in Ice Path in Crystal, but now it's post-game in Mount Silver. Okay. Well, that's a shame. Why? If you could still catch one in Ice Path, and if you could actually evolve it before the League, I would definitely be better than Swinub, but nope. Unknown Dungeon. Sad. <laughs> Very good quote by Armageddon390. Like all Johto Pokemon, it lives in Kanto. Alright. Misdravis gained a new evolution in Gen 4, and it joins Murkrow because you can also find it in the Safari Zone. No longer Mount Silver exclusive. All you need to evolve it up into a Mismagius is a Dusk Stone. Same as Murkrow. Oh my god, this thing's horrible! Why? I think Murkrow's better. Mischievous on its own is okay. Its stats aren't the worst thing ever, but it's going to be underleveled by the time you get it, and you cannot unlock its much better Mismagius form until the game's already over. Game Freak, please. Okay. Porygon! Unknown dungeon. Normal type. Who cares? I don't even know if you can get Porygon Z in this game. It doesn't matter, uh, but I don't think you can. Just because the Johto Lex- uh, Just because the Johto Dex doesn't even list Porygon Z. It's got good special attack, but it's not in the game. And it's a normal type. Sad. Fun fact, though. Uh, before we actually publish a video here, we have to run what's actually called the Pokemon Check. Because of the Pokemon episode where Porygon caused a bunch of seizures. Uh, seizures. And it wasn't even Porygon's fault, it was Pikachu's fault. Nobody punished Pikachu. Justice for Porygon. Why isn't this an electric type, by the way? Chansey! Defensive normal type. In Kanto. Pass. Why isn't this a fairy type, by the way? Lapras! I don't know why it's so late in the Pokedex, but you can get this thing pretty early, as soon as you get Surf. It's in Union Cave on Friday. 
Is this actually a C tier Pokemon? Yeah, maybe top of the C. So, Water Ice Stab, of the Pokemon that actually have Water Ice Stab, it's definitely the best. In fact, I think we can surf on out of the sea. We can, we can honestly, we can like waddle onto land on our little flippers. We're gonna take a little trip. I think it's actually pretty good. Where's Wooper? It's Baron Wooper. Water Ice Stab is not bad. I just wish it was a little faster. How's this? Oh yeah, and it also has a good TM learn set. You get like Thunderbolt, Psychic, I think it's Natural Ice Beam. It's not bad at all, it's just kind of slow. Okay. Nobody knows the mysterious ways of our lord. Unknown dungeon. Kanto exclusive. Same with Kabuto. Uh, also, what a lazy name. So, Kabuto literally means helmet. And they just didn't translate it. Okay, uh, sure. Aerodactyl. It's really fast. Not fast enough to actually be available in the game, though. Uh-oh. Snorlax. Really strong, but uh, super slow, right? You are never going first. Uh, it actually comes at a decent level. It's pretty much the only, like, normal Pokemon in Kanto that actually comes at an okay level. It's like level 50, uh, but I mean, it's a Kanto exclusive, so you don't really get to use it, and you're always going second, so. Sorry. Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. Yeah, pretty much all of these are also just post-game, and they're not gonna be doing anything. They're gonna be critically under level because you do get them in their base forms. Sorry, guys. But you get to be in the list, that's something. The Legendary Birds. Uh, well... We'll see. Okay, so... Articuno. Uh, Seafoam Islands. I mean, it's Kanto exclusive, but I mean, it's okay. You get Ice Beam stuff. Zapdos. Probably even better than Articuno, getting Power Plant. Well, not in the Power Plant. Uh, actually, where is Zapdos? The starters are only remake exclusive? Well, this is the remake. It's not in the power plant because the power plant was fixed, right? Route 10. Oh, what is the power plant? Oh, right, there's a new tunnel. Yeah, it is still the power plant. Zapdos, still at the power plant. Really strong Pokemon. Wish it was in the game. Probably better than Artu Articuno. Moltos, in Mount Silver. Well, that's really, really late. You can basically only use it for red, and you know what? You're not going to. But it's got good stats, I guess. Almost done. All right, Raikou. Entei and Suicune. The three legendary beasts. We'll do Suicune first because it's the easiest because you can't use it. <laughs> it's chilling in Cerulean Cape, being pursued by a guy who really, really, really likes Suicune. Makes me a little uncomfortable, honestly. Uh, but Raikou and Entei you can still catch uh, in Johto, like normally, right after the Burn Tower event. So, Raikou, we're actually going to put it in S... Uh, with a massive, massive asterisk. So, if you can catch it as soon as the event begins, which, I mean, if you're, like, really lucky, yeah, I guess you can, then, yeah, obviously it's insane, right? It's level 40, and it fries everything. But, I mean, you're not gonna do that, right? The average result, considering all the work you have to put in, and, like, the setups that you might do... It's probably going to end up being like a B level, like a B tier Pokemon. It all depends on when you catch it. 
The earlier you catch it, the better it is. This is the best case scenario. I don't think it's actually going to be an S tier Pokemon in your playthrough, but it can be. Average result, probably going to be a B. It's good whenever you catch it. It's just not insane. It's a ton of work. Dio! Orb! I saw that run through. Maybe the best uh, Pokemon speedrun I've actually seen. It was so much fun to watch. Uh, there was um, a Games Done Quick speedrun uh, of Crystal. And they use uh, Raikou in that. I'd suggest watching. It's like two and a half hours. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're watching this, you can probably watch a two and a half hour Pokemon stream, right? You can probably find it if you YouTube it. You just look up um, Crystal speedrun. It's probably one of the first results. It's really good. Shouldn't that work knock it down? Yes. That's why I'm saying this is like the best case scenario. It's probably not going to be this good. It's probably going to be closer to an A or a B. Can't believe I'm still going. We're almost done. I gotta go to the dentist. It is Kizaron's. Yeah, Kizaron's speedrun. Almost done, guys. Alright. Entei. One of the major characters in Fire Emblem Three Houses. <laughs> so I played Three Houses in Japanese, and there's a recurring character called the Flame Emperor. And they keep talking about Entei, Entei, Entei. Big Entei fans, uh, because Entei literally means Flame Emperor. Uh, what is this thing the Emperor of? Not the in-game run. It's okay. So I'm, st I'm giving it the same generous treatment, where assuming you catch it immediately, yeah, it's pretty strong. You're not going to, though. Best case scenario, top of B. Worst case scenario, probably like mi middling of C. Stronger the earlier you catch it. But I mean, what do you expect from improved Flareon? At least it gets its own movie. That's something. Not excelente. It's true. Entei gets Sacred Fire this gen, does it? I feel like it got that later. Let's see. Doesn't save it, though. Still better than Pidgey? I agree, it is better than Pidgey. Uh, we want moves, right? Gen 4. Not so sacred. And it, modern does get... Maybe it's an event. I think it's an event, right? Oh, no. It just learns it now, but it didn't back then. So no sacred fire. Is Suicune Kanto only now? Yes, it's Cerulean Cape. I said this, right? It's the first thing we did when we talked about the beasts. Yeah, sacred fire. It doesn't even have... Yeah. And Entei, it, it truly does carry on the spirit of Flareon, because it doesn't even get Flare Blitz. Much better in three houses. Alright. Dratini! Obtainable surprisingly early, because you can actually get it from the Goldenrod Game Corner, so I hope you like Voltorb Flip. You can also get it from the Safari Zone and uh, the Dragon's Den. And the Dragon's Den event one actually has extreme speed. That one is way too late, though. So if you're going to be do if you're going to be using this, it's going to be because you're a Voltorb Flip God. Is it worth using? It gets Dragon Rage really early. Dragon Rage, which I mean, forty set damage at that point in the game. That's pretty good. Is it like B tier good? I don't think so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it at the top of C. Obviously, Dragonite is absurd, right? It's incredibly powerful, especially with the physical special split. You don't get a Dragonite, right? You get a Dratini. And you got to work. If you work, it's ridiculous. Is it worth it? I don't think so. C tier. Pretty much everything about that also applies to Larvitar. So Larvitar used to be Mount Silver. You can now actually get it in the Safari Zone. But because it's later than Dratini, it's going to be even more underleveled. So you have to put in even more work relatively. And at the end, you get Tyranitar, who is amazing. Is it worth it? I don't think so.
sadly. Uh, and keep in mind, these Pokemon evolve into their second forms at like level 30, so you're stuck with these terrible base forms for quite a while, and also, uh, they're both in the slow experience group, so they level up more slowly than most Pokemon around their level. Uh, very, very, very difficult to raise. So, an investment opportunity, the returns are good, but you have to put in a lot of work. More than I think is worth. Centret better than Larvitar? Yeah. Wait, is this still going? It's almost over. You, you can, like, copy-paste lines from all of these live streams because they're always the same. It starts with, oh, an hour in, we haven't even ranked anything yet. And then after about four hours, you can go to, like, oh, this is still going. I did X, but it's still continuing. We're almost done. Uh, really, only two more Pokemon to actually rank. Uh, if you weren't here for why Centred is so high, uh, my coworker actually came in uh, as a member of the Centred lobby and convinced us to move it a bit higher. Cheese absolutely slamming one of his mods live. Sorry, I, I think it sounded pretty aggressive because I was saying it in response to your lot to what you specifically said, but. It wasn't really directed at you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's just yours was the... Uh, not the... Ca was it the catalyst? It's what caused it. The trigger? It was the, uh, the straw that broke the camera up's back. Gen 3 Pokemon, by the way. Uh, because those comments happen a lot. The inciting incident, yes. Let's use our big words. The inciting incident. Alright, I can still make it to the dentist. It's gonna be fine. Okay. Alright. Lugia and Ho-Oh. The cover legendaries. I mean, if they're on the front of the game, they gotta be pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. So the problem that most cover legendaries have is that you get them and then the game ends. Uh, it's probably worst in Gen 5 where you literally use them in one battle, right? You use them and then the, the main story is over. Uh, but in this game, you basically have the entire last third to use them because you have the League, which is the hardest part of the game. Then you have all of Kanto, which has buffed gym leaders. And then, of course, Red. Uh, why would you not use these Pokemon who have insane stats, right? It's unfair. As it should be, right? They are legendaries. A uh, Ho-Oh is definitely better because it's got better offensive typing, and it has physical sacred fire, so just melt anything that opposes you. Lugia, no slouch on its own, even though it does have weird kind of humanish hands that I don't really like. Why is this a psychic type, by the way? I would recommend getting them. I think they're optional in this game. You don't have to actually encounter them, so it is a side quest. But, I mean, you should do the side quest, right? It's like the point of the game. Go, go get them. <laughs> Why not? Oh, they're mandatory? You want to get the other cover legendary in post-game? Well, that's fine. Okay. It's mandatory? Yeah, okay. I think... Okay, so... In the base games, they were both side quests. But in the remakes, they are actually mandatory. So there's no opportunity cost to getting these. You will encounter them, so you should catch them. And I recommend you use them. Because they're really, really strong. <laughs> Battle mandatory, but not for catching. Yeah, but you should catch them. Like, why wouldn't you? Mill tank has good stats, strong stab, and decent availability. That's why it's an A. Were people arguing that it shouldn't be? Mm -hmm. 
Lugia is worse because it has to compete with the best Pokemon Zatu. I think it's winning the competition. Alright, last three Pokemon. Not much to say about these. Mewtwo. Has science gone too far? Maybe, but it also didn't go far fast enough because it's in the Unknown Dungeon. It's literally in the Unknown Dungeon, right? It's where you catch it. Uh, and then Mew and Celebi are just unobtainable. So, they really can't be ranked. Uh, why isn't this a fairy type, by the way? And there we go. We've done it. This is our Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver in game tier list. It only took us 6 hours and 48 minutes. <laughs> Uh, as you can see, I've got to use Synthesis, right? The, the leaf is in really bad shape here. Uh, but don't worry. Uh, not sponsored, but we have the limited edition Pepsi Zero uh, Fried Chicken Companion. Yeah, apparently this is meant to be drunk with fried chicken. It's also clear. I don't know if you can see it. It's not actually black, but it is clear Pepsi that's supposed to be for fried chicken. Not sponsored, by the way. But it's important uh, to stay hydrated as a plant. I guess I'll try this. Yep, it, I mean, it just tastes like Pepsi, but it's like slightly less sweet. It's really weird that it's clear. And I don't have any fried chicken. That's going to be in the uh, Gen 3 starter analysis, I guess. Ugh, okay. So, uh, closing thoughts? Uh, anybody have any... Any, uh, any changes they'd like to make? This is your last chance. Oh, did you really stay up all night? Sorry. I feel like Caterpie is higher than has any right to be. I don't think I would trust uh, Shield on, even if it is shiny. Compound Eye is uh, Sleep Powder, bro. Totodile is above Cyndaquil. I assume you, you probably missed where I said this. I, I think Totodile is better than Cyndaquil, but the game hands you Gyarados. So I think Cyndaquil is overall better. Dunspar should be an S for Power Flinch strats. I, should, I shouldn't have asked for changes. We're not changing anything. Mantai should go up for hard countering Chuck and being next to Sianwood. Does it hard counter Chuck? Doesn't any flying type do that? I guess uh, Polyrath is uh, there, but I mean, Chuck's not hard. Uh, Gara top one, so I'm pleased. Stantler stomps. It literally does have stomp, but I don't think it's that good. Plus one space. For centered in the top 25? Okay. Well, no, but then it would be better than Rattata. No, it's definitely worse than Rattata. I'm sorry, Centret. No. N the Centret lobby is not that powerful. Hop of Gang is dead. Hop of, Hop of Gang died a long time ago. Democracy defeated them. All right. So thank you everybody for joining and helping make the uh, list a reality. Uh, if you are uh, not subscribed to this channel, please actually do. Uh, it actually does matter because if we reach a thousand, then we get monetization and more importantly, we gain custom emotes. <laughs> so hopefully this video will take us to a thousand subs. I think it will. Uh, also be sure to join the Discord link in the description. Uh, my legs are getting really numb. <laughs> it it, it kind of hurts. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to go... I'm almost going to unequip this leaf. Uh, what do I have to do? Do I need an outro? No, I think we already did one, right? We said, we said that the list is complete. 
That's it, right? I'll record one just in case, just so I have one, because I, I won't be able to record it again once this ends, right? So... Oh. I guess we'll end with, it's time for me to leave you. That's awful. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so... Thanks again for watching... Thanks again for watching the premium. I hope you enjoyed. And now, it is time for me to make like a grass type and leaf. Horrible. Horrible! Please subscribe. Ow. This leaf is in bad shape. It is, it is down. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, that's it for everything that's being recorded. Uh, I think I've recorded this locally, so I can start editing it soon. Uh, it's probably not going to be done. Well, I mean, it's definitely not going to be done today. It, like, it physically cannot be done today, because generally it takes twice the length of the stream to actually edit. Uh, at least. So it'll maybe be done at some point during the... Uh, during the week. And what I think I'm going to do is... I might try something new. What I might do is premiere the premium on the main channel. So it'll be like live streamception. And uh, given how long this stream is, I think the premium is probably going to be at least two hours. Probably a little bit more. Playback double speed. I can't believe how long this stream was. Thanks for sticking with us. Alright. We didn't even make it to seven hours. What a casual. Very long premiere vid. I mean, the, pre the premiere vid is going to be the premium, so it's going to be like two and a half hours. Which I think will be fine. We'll see how that works. We'll try it. And we'll also make it a... We'll make it a European-friendly time. So we'll actually do it uh, at night in Japan, which I can do because I don't have to actually physically talk. That's the main reason I don't do the streams at night here, because I don't want to disturb my neighbor when I'm, like, screaming. And if I scream at, you know, 1.52 p.m., that's fine. Alright. Thanks, everybody. There's going to be uh, about 30 seconds of end screen before the stream itself actually ends. Thanks for joining. Thanks for contributing. Uh, and be sure to subscribe. Actually, please do, because it really helps for this second channel. We gotta get to a thousand. Hopefully next stream we will have premium emotes. Alright, farewell. Did I miss anything? Unfortunately you did. Except for this end screen!